teammates a good value? You should check out venue mode. When the green light is activated, you're on tab turn. So you'll get access to exclusive markets and offers just for heading to your local. Venue mode, only on your tab app. Tab, long may we play. have been tough. Here at Imparja, we want to help our customers get back to business and reconnect with their own customers. Television viewing levels are at an all-time high, so now is the time to reach out through TV. And to make it easy, we offer complete commercial production and airtime solutions tailored to your specific needs. Our advertisers have been advertising with us for years, and that says something. Whether you've used Imparja previously or are new to our station, give us a call. We'd love to help.
We're here to win. We're not here to watch you. We're traveling at speeds up to 180 kilometers per hour. That's 50 meters per second. If we hit you, we're both gone. The facts are simple. Another serious spectator injury could end the race for good. Don't stand on the outside of corners. Read and observe all safety signs. And stay at least 20 meters back from the track side at all times. Don't be the reason. Don't be the reason.
We're here to race. We're here to win. We're not here to watch you. We're traveling at speeds up to 180 kilometers per hour. That's 50 meters per second. If we hit you, we're both gone. The facts are simple. Another serious spectator injury could end the race for good. Don't stand on the outside of corners. Read and observe all safety signs. And stay at least 20 metres back from the track side at all times. Don't be the reason. Don't be the reason. Good morning and welcome to the Tats Fink Desert Race for 2022. I'm Rihanna Crean. I'll be your host for this weekend of racing and I'm joined by Kaziah Dawn and it is our very first time here at Fink. Kaziah, last night we were here for scrutineering. There were thousands of people here. What was the highlight for you? I think it was really awesome just to see everyone out and about mixing with the drivers and, and seeing a few of the local guys. I keep saying that, but just people from Alice Springs, from the NT, Getting out here, this is their race really. It's just such an important event for everyone here. So it's really exciting to see the community atmosphere and just everyone getting into it. Yeah, it is huge for Alice Springs. Of course, last year was impacted by COVID. We weren't able to have the Victorians or the West Australians take part in the race. And then of course, the year before it was cancelled for COVID. So this year really is the first time since 2019 that we've had the full complement. The whole of Australia is able to be here in the Red Centre, including people from international as well. So it is huge for Alice Springs. I actually went down to the street markets on Thursday night. There was four and a half thousand people there just wandering the streets of Alice Springs and getting in amongst this Tatsfink desert race. Now today it's prologue day. Things start to get serious and it's all about to kick off in just under 10 minutes time at eight o'clock this morning uh, buggies and cars are going to be out first but what are you most looking forward to for today I think it's just going to be interesting it's such an important day for you know setting setting paces for the whole weekend and for the whole two days uh, when they're going to think and back so it's going to be really interesting seeing where everyone comes but um, obviously first off we've got a guy you know quite well Warren Luff so that would be quite good to get started yeah a very familiar face Warren Luff he spent a lot of years racing in the V8 supercars still uh, racing as a co-driver and will be there at Bathurst his first time racing here at Fink so really excited to see how he goes and he's the first cab off the rank so we'll be uh, seeing if we can catch up with him seeing how he's feeling whether he's nervous or excited or or all of the above but uh, we're going to be down here catching all the action from right here on the start finish line but we've got a great team of commentators that are going to bring you all the action and all the details that you need to know across the weekend so we'll uh, head up to them now Josh Graveling, Dan and Josh Kieran you're going to take away all the action from up there in the commentary booth. Yeah, we are. Well, I'm in a current sandwich at the moment, Dan and Josh, and we've got two Joshes up here in the box. We're pumped, guys. We are ready for a great day of prologue. And, uh, fellas, what are we thinking? Well, I'm worried that they said great commentators, because yeah. I don't know about that. We're a bunch of dirtbags that just love our being here at these off-road races. And the Vic Desert Race, well, it doesn't get much bigger than Saturday right here. I mean, it is prologue day. As the girls said, it is really game on. It's going to be the time that they set the whole mood of their entire race really you know those top positions are going to be like gold here because yep. you know with the dust on the track even though we've had that you know great rain for the year and it's made a big difference to the track it's looking like it's a fast year this year but it's going to be a, a, a you know a key to the uh, race strategy this weekend yeah, I think you're going to see a lot of uh, race weekend. Their strategy is going to be based on where they end up finishing prologue today. Having a bit of a chat to uh, Ryan Taylor, our current Australian championship leader. He was saying that uh, they're going to get through prologue today and then evaluate, you know, whether they're going to consolidate for the points a little bit or they're going to drop the hammer and go for that Fink win, you know. And it's going to be, like you said, prologue is really going to be the 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 marker that they're going to base their weekend off. So this is the, you know, hey, we're through scrutineering, tick. The next thing is going to be where do we end up in prologue. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be a very exciting Saturday morning. 
And Josh, when you say it like that, I think that's going to be a big key for the entire, like, in your classes as well. Because remember, within this, we do have the big dogs. We got the trophy trucks, the pro yep. buggies. But everyone's racing for class champions. This is the mid-round or the, the third round of the Australian Championship. So, you know, a lot of guys at the moment are working towards that class victory. You know, we've got the class seven cars, which is our production four-wheel drive off the line first. And, I mean, that's going to be a situation too. Like, gentleman Jeff Pickering has won this race more times than I have fingers and toes. I mean, he's just such a legend. Yeah. Actually, that's not true. I've got 20. But it, you, you get my point is what I'm saying. Poon, Definitely represent. more than fingers. <laughs> but the moral of the story is that, like, you know, for, for Warren and, and Jody to put, you know, they need to put a little bit of pressure on him yes. now. But again, the man knows how to deal with pressure. He's had the likes of Clayton Chapman race yep. in that class. It's been uh, Amy, um, she was um, Parrot at Amy those Parrot, days. Yes. You know, like those guys have put pressure on that man before. And then as we look through, like we've got all those brilliant performance side by sides. We've got class two. You know, there's a lot going on there. So I think that what's going to be very interesting is it's going to be Warren Luff off the line first. It's going to be Warren Luff off the line first, but we're going to throw you to some of our safety messages for over the weekend. Warren Luff. Now, this is a fantastic opportunity because we don't often get to do this here at Fink, but how are you feeling? First cab off the rank this morning. Yeah, look, it's, uh, we've been out for a bit of a look around the prologue course and it's, uh, it's exciting. It's uh, great to be car one off the, uh, off the grid this morning. I don't know if we're still going to be P1 this afternoon once everyone's sort of gone through, but look, it's um, great to be here, excited to get out and just get this prologue course done and um, yeah, have a bit of fun. Your very first time racing here at Fink, I mean, what, what are sort of the strategy for this prologue this morning? Look, it's just really for us just to get through. It's a bit of a shakedown of the car. Uh, I haven't had a chance to drive it since the first round at St George, so it's just kind of get back in the groove of, uh, of doing off-road stuff and have fun and get the thing a bit muddy. And I can see on your gauge it's uh, seven and a half degrees and you've got 720 k's worth of fuel, so you should be right this morning for prologue. <laughs> yeah, I think we should be okay on uh, fuel consumption in this thing. Good luck, mate. Enjoy. Thanks a lot. See ya. Well, it looks like Lauren is, uh, Warren is going to have a, a nice open track this morning. He's first off the rank here at 8 o'clock. And as we look at some of these pitches down uh, along the side of the track, mm. at some of these fellas working on their bikes and stuff like that, it's it's great. It's great to see all these people. And there you see the trestles, your juices, your, your breakfast as we were talking last night. Yep. The whole family comes out here. You get out here bright and early. Yes, it is a bit cold, but you have your breakfast, get ready. Awesome entertainment for the day. Well, even down to, I'd say that those guys look like they've been trekking across the desert. They've gone on a big enduro ride. And I mean, that's one of the things that just continually happens. Like, look at those bikes. They're ready for a great day here at the Fink Desert Race. They can move around and get down the track. And I think that's one of the unique things about Fink too, as a spectator that people probably don't quite understand, is that, you know, you can sneak down that service road and go down and pick your spot, move within reason. Again, make sure that uh, we follow road rules and stay safe on that road because some people do get a little bit crazy on that service road. But, uh, you know, everyone wants to get there safe and have a look around and Obviously, prologue day, this is the spot to be. You know, we want to be in the uh, the showgrounds area and have a good look around. There's some great grandstand seating, and we've got plenty of live feed coming. We've actually got the big screens up on, which is a brilliant thing that uh, the Tats crew, the Fink Desert crew have done in the recent years. When that came in, that really changed the game for spectating on site. Could see a lot more, and I'm really excited. I think it's going to be a great day full of entertainment. Now, Joshy, you weren't up in the box with it. Sorry, I should say JC. We're going to yes. start calling yes. Josh Curran JC so that we're all on the... JC, have you got any sneaky picks for us? Because, again, we sort of had a fair chat yesterday with uh, with Josh here. But, you know, there's so many... The, the crowd, uh, the, the race competitors, it's just so deep, isn't it? Uh, huge field, mate. Absolutely huge field. And we're uh, we're looking forward to, to what this weekend brings. But I think there are a few little sneakies that uh, we're going to look forward to. I think... Glenn Owen could be a, an absolute dark horse here in the number 30. Uh, Jimco there, I think, um, you know, he's a former former Fink winner. Um, you know, he knows what it takes to win this race. And he he's just parachuted in as a bit of a Fink specialist. He doesn't have a dog in the fight with the championship. Uh, he knows how to wind the boost up on that Jimco and, uh, and let that big dog hunt. So we're, uh, we're very much so looking forward to that. I think Matt Hansen as well, he's had some, Bad luck at the first two rounds of the championship. He'll be he'll be looking to storm back with a with a vengeance as well and and get that sorted. So, 
mate, I think there's, you know, yeah, Bo actually, Robinson. Mm, I was going to say, I even saw Matty Owen in the 41 there this year as well. He's back for a bit of a run. So, you know, there is a, some guys there that have uh, been missing for a couple of years. It's going to be interesting to see how they go on this track. Again, particularly when it seems to be leaning towards being a little bit of a buggy track. You know, again, that's a big call. Like the trophy truck boys, it was a trophy truck guy that said, no trucks inside the top 10. I wonder if that's just not psyching out. Mind games. Yeah, mind, mind games. Because, yes. I mean, when you're talking about the league of Greg Gartner, Bo Robinson, yep. Toby Price, I mean, you know, those guys are going to be right there. We've got Dave Fellows in a Billy trophy truck. Billy Geddes. Billy Geddes. Yep. When you start counting them, they're just, it's numbers mm. upon numbers of yep. guys that not could only just top 10. I mean, they're going to, like, push it outright. Yep. So. It's going to be a very interesting year. I mean, obviously, Toby's in a position where he's in a good spot. He's yes. got a good truck. He's got a good motor. Things are going to go very well here. So, yeah, it's going to be very, very interesting what happens here. But, again, listen, there's plenty of competitors up and down the line. So, uh, Jody Allen is on the line. She's going to be off the line very quickly. And uh, we're going to cross to her. Thanks, boys. Yeah, I'm with Jodie Allen. She's about to head off. She's the first girl out this morning. Jodie, how are you feeling? Yeah, good. Feeling really good. What are you hoping to get out of today? Uh, just a nice, smooth, consistent and a fairly good time to set us up for tomorrow. And I saw the safety guys giving you a fair bit of a briefing just before. What, what's the real message from them? Basically, just to stay safe. Yeah, just that's it. Stay safe. Listen to your navvy. Yeah, <laughs> well, good luck. Yeah. Try to. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck. Have fun out there. All right, thank you. Bye. Well, that's going to be amazing. Again, it's great to see those Class 7s. And really, I want to say that they're the iron women in this case yes. of the sport because I tell you what, between them and the Class 2s, down there in those Bonduma whoops, those guys are doing it tough. And but remember, they are racing, and I mean racing. Again, I saw Jeff Pickering running the other day. I tell you what, the shot looks like we are getting very close to Warren Luff getting off the line. Now, this is this Volkswagen that the Wilkinshaw boys, this is actually a production four-wheel drive. And when I say production, I mean a real production four-wheel drive. So it's going to be very cool to see how this thing goes off the line. We're going to get underway very shortly here at the Tats Fink Desert Race. And again, look, the crowd's starting to sneak in. It's nice and, uh, oh gee, it is not nice and warm. It's nice and cool, let's say, but it's jumper weather in my opinion, not, not coat weather, you know, maybe a set of jeans. So if you're making your way out from Alice Springs, make sure you, that you uh, come on down and grab yourself a warm coffee and there's all the action over at the pizzeria and everything going on. Again, this is one of those things where it's just such a great event. Um, you know, it's everything about it and that's what we're excited about. The guys have been out early, team. Well, like, you know, some of these race car competitors have probably been out here since 4.30 prepping to get ready. So it would have been nice and cold there. And again, we are very close. We've got those gaggle of cars starting to line up. Again, our side-by-side -side sports guys are going to be behind. And we are off and racing for Prologue. Warren Luff gets the start, ladies and gentlemen. The first of our vehicles making their way around this 8 0.6k long prologue track. It's going to be very, very interesting. Talking to Warren about this vehicle, the Walkinshaw Racing Team have nothing to do with it. It's just the sports car side of things, which is awesome to hear. Um, and they've been wrenching on it uh, on this vehicle, and Warren's really looking forward to it as we see Jeff Pickering about to get off the line. Yeah, they're going to be action thick and fast here as these production four-wheel drives get off the line. Again, gentlemen, Jeff Pickering. He's uh, had a lot of championships under his belt, and you can hear him get that Mitsubishi up on the bopper, and he's going to be sending it straight from the start because, again, he knows no other way. Jeff Pickering out of sunny North Queensland, running the Pickering car dealership up that way. And, again, he's been racing these production four-wheel drives for a very long time. Oh, no. A little bit of a stumble there, but no issue. I oh, cleared the throat and he's away. Again, the 701. So an interesting fact for those numbers. Again, the ones, twos, and threes in each class are going to be the champions, but it's actually the champions from the year before. So because last year they, due to a few things, they, they classed it as a no contest. Jody Allen. Again, we just had a chat to the 778. They're going to be off the line very shortly here. Now, a few of these Class 7s, because we've only got three Class 7s, there's going to be a gap between the 
the uh, the classes, if that makes sense. So they'll be off the line. Again, we'll have some updated times. You'll be following along on the Tats Fink Desert Race .com .au. That's the old Fink Desert Race .com .au. All the live timing is available there. And if you're listening around the world on the YouTube live feed, welcome. And if you're here in person, welcome. If you're looking on the big screen, it's great to have you here in Alice Springs. No doubt many people have made massive tracks across the uh, the continents, really. We've got, you know, even international people here, lots of teams and builders. And as Jody Allen shoots across down that, it's funny because that used to be a start straight, but it's definitely swept up over the last couple of years. Yeah, definitely noticed early on as we got out here, a few little changes on the uh, on the Fink Prologue track as well compared to the last year we were out here. So particularly, like you said, this start straight, a bit more of a, a sweeping corner and also the uh, the finish line corner as well. well. We'll call it as they come back towards us. I tell you what, we are going to see some great action here. Even in uh, siding laps, some of the, the trucks, you know, even at a, a slower speed, they were they were getting pretty sideways and, and hanging it out a fair way on this track. So looking forward to seeing guys like, uh, I mean, the maddest potato farmer in Australia, Greg Gartner. Looking forward to that, but uh, also cool to see these uh, little 6066 cars out here. Uh, these are the side-by-side -side lights. No, sports. sports. Yeah, side-by-side sport, that's correct. Yeah, so we've got a good little field of side-by-side sports. So these are the non-turbo cars. They're running more production-style arms. There's, you know, it's a limited side-by-side -side sport. Whereas when we go to the side-by-side -side pro cars, you know, we can have adjust, you know, different suspension, longer arms. You know, they are turbocharged cars, modified motors. So at the moment, this is the sport class lining up, and it's going to be John Weiss off the line first. So it's going to be great to see how these guys go because, again, this was the standard of side-by-side -side racing back in the day, and it's a great way to get into it due to the fact that you're sort of limited. You can't spend those huge dollars on those race cars. And uh, it's go just a great way. I love these little things, these Yamahas. They've actually got a manual, sequential, and the new Yamaha, I believe they're out now, and I don't know if there's any on the starting line, but paddle shifted. You know, how Ooh. cool is that with the manual? And you'll hear them banging through the bopper as they come through the stadium. So the Gecko Racing crew, again, John Weiss, is going to be very competitive here. And I've seen these Yamahas run right up the front of side-by-side, -side, even in side-by-side -side pro, although I suppose it is worth noting with some of the new vehicles that they've got these days, that gap is widening a little bit as the horsepower comes up. Some of those turbo cars are just so fast. But this is a great class, and, you know, a lot of it's a great way to get into the racing and very competitive. These guys would all be looking at doing a full championship year. And uh, again, there's, you know, five cars in this class here at the Fink Desert Race. And it's going to be very much game on here in a second for John Weiss. So what you will notice, just for the info for our people. A little bit of info for our people watching along at home. There has been a longer gap in between the Class 7 cars and the Class 66 cars. That's just a little gap um, that we run for safety reasons. So that allows the... Uh, the class seven cars to clear the, the track as we see John off the start line. And like you said, Dan, you hear that little Yamaha just banging through the gears, a sequential gearbox with shift cut as well. But, I mean, that is some incredible technology in a, a little side by side. As we see Warren Luff make his way back down into the spectator area, those whoops there, they're not quite as vicious as years before, but I tell you what, in a class seven, that is still some absolutely, uh, that's gonna be a rough ride. That's gonna give Warren a little bit of an idea of what he's in for over the next, uh, two and a half days or, or 450 kilometers, but great driving and a great line there. He's got that Wilkinshaw performance Amarok wound up on his way back down. Yeah, definitely interesting as he comes into the stadium section. This car's looking like it is performing on song. Doesn't look like it's had any issues and is driving that thing very nicely. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I think that that's worth noting that the, the Fink crew are always doing little modifications to all of the track, but particularly the, the stadium area and little tweaks here and there. Again, the rolling whoops that they added wasn't that many years ago has been an absolute hit with the spectators. And I know the competitors love them when we get to see those big boy pro buggies and trophy trucks running through those whoops. It gives you a real feel of, uh, you know, it captures the image of what's going on out on that track. And it's, uh, it's tripped a few people up over the years too, absolutely. which is always a good thing because let's be honest we want to you know we want to set the cat amongst the pigeons so that's something that's very interesting again we've got plenty of cars off the line still with these 6601s as warren luff comes through and again 
gentlemen. Jeff Pickering now making his way in. Something else worth noting, boys, is that they, as you would imagine, they've got to water the track. So at the moment, the track's probably a little bit slippery and it's going to dry up and dust up over the course of the race day here today as Warren Fly. Love comes through for a flying finish. A great run there. And gentlemen, Jeff, again, on the bopper around these corners, again, four-wheel drive traction. You can see that that is a registered production car. Got the Queensland plates still attached. Didn't worry about dip it, dop and, uh, dropping them off for a bit of extra weight. Very rally inspired, but again, he's been racing this car for as long as I can remember, Josh. It's been, a, uh, well, at least the car that looks like this. It might have had a few bodies mm -hmm. over the years, maybe the way that he punches it through the whoops. But again, very well deserved to be running that 701. And a great ambassador for the sport too, gentlemen, Jeff. Remember watching videos back in the day of the dusted when the, the off-road promotions boys put that video out and seeing Jeff Pickering thrashing through the track. Again, a nice run here. You can see it hasn't roughed up too much. The guys, again, none of these rollers are really causing them any drama. Those are the ones that can become a bit unsettling for, you know, let's say some of the higher, uh, faster cars like the, the, the classes of the unlimited. Although in Australia, we don't run a true unlimited class but we run the pro classes. Now as the 6683 is off the line, that's Andrew Craven. Jody Allen coming back into the stadium area. No issue for Andrew off the line there. He's made a nice run down there as the 778 works its way around those berm corners. Again, production four-wheel drive, really more about keeping it neat, isn't it? Yeah. Fast is clean, yep. clean is fast. So these guys running those nice tight lines, shortening up the track, you know, apex in corners. Whereas we're going to see some of the faster pro lights, pro buggies, they're going to be right up on the berm, yep. spraying the dirt, aren't they, lads? Yeah, absolutely. But great to see that uh, we've had all three of our Class 7 competitors make their way around the Fink Prolog track. And... Uh, and it looks like I'm not hopefully not putting the commentators curse on hopefully with with no issue only a few corners left to go for Jody so this is going to be great news that we see all of our class 7 competitors through hopefully we continue to see that with our class 66 as we see it I tell you what the Yamaha is proving very popular in this class 66 that's the 6684 Matthew Laws like you said Dan a very unique sound that come out of these these Yamahas you, you hear that the, the RPM go up and, and the ship cut as we see Jody Allen on her way back through. That's a great run out of that cruise. I tell you what, she is absolutely flying as she runs it deep all the way through that finish line there. Yeah, the uh, the little V6 singing along nicely. But like you said, going back to the 6684 Matthew Lavis, you would be very interested in having a look at those Yamahas if this was a class. Again, it's a real driver's class. You can bang through those gears as we get the shot of John Weiss coming back in. Gecko Racing, they've been around a couple of years now and having a good crack at this side-by-side -side racing. And off the line very shortly is going to be the 6637 of Eden Evans. They're doing some great stuff at the moment with King Chrome, showing out plenty of action again. Eden off the line now. And one of the what interesting things that I did notice about Eden's car last night while having a look at scrutineering, no spare tyres, no spare nothing. They have got that car as lightweight as possible to make up for uh, the lack of horsepower that these 66 cars, you see that the uh, the little Yamaha side-by-side -side has that spare sitting flat on the back. That might be to do with uh, weight distribution and stuff like that, get that front end riding up over the whoops a little bit. But yeah, Eden Evans, the, the Simon Evans Motorsport King Chrome team have gone in the totally opposite direction. They're, um, they're just going for that ultimate lightweight and ultimate lightweight and uh, no spare, no spare belts, nothing. Or oh, I think they had a spare belt, sorry, but no spare CVs, no spare axles, anything like that. So the Simon Evans Motorsport team going down a little bit of a different path there for the Fink, for, for the Fink race, but great to see. Yeah, probably really a game, uh, you know, like a real point is what I was trying to get at. A point when you're running in these limited classes is that weight, isn't it? So again, we can hear Peter Bullock off the line now. And he is on the bopper, another little Yamaha. So we've got three Yamahas against the Polaris's. So here's the Gecko boys coming, flying back into the stadium. We've got plenty of action flipping all across this stadium here at the moment. But again, as uh, Peter, oh, sorry, Chambers, sorry, Chambers Rick, Rick Chambers. 
Yeah, Rick Chambers uh, locally owns Thinkwater here in Alice Springs, a, a great bloke and uh, has been supporting uh, Fink for a while now. And as we look up on the timing screens now, we actually have the first of our um, our times through. John Wise currently leading with a 6.07 to Jeff Pickering's 6.48 to Jody Allen's 7 minutes and 18 seconds. It does look like Warren Laugh has had a transponder issue, so he may be sent back out again just to get that time because he's not showing up on our screen. So we'll update you with that once we get that information. But it looks like after this, we're going into that small Super 1650 class. And I know one of the young locals uh, from Alice, I'll be rooting for in this Super 1650 class, Timothy Button. I know all the locals here in Alice will be rooting for him as well. Um, he's had some, some issues over the years with this car and I really do hope he can get it around this prologue track nice and clean. Yeah, absolutely. It's a brilliant little class. You can do so many mods to these little Super 1650s. You know, it's got A-arms and all the good gear. And then you've also got the uh, this limited 1650cc capacity. And I tell you what, again, makes it a real driver's class. You've got to look at weight. You've got to keep your line speed up. Almost like back in the day when you used to have to ride a 125cc little two-banger. To, it was almost like a rite of passage, wasn't it, to learn those corner speeds and working on all of those things. So these Super 1650s, and a lot of guys have come from this class, like the Mark Burrows and the Shannon Wrenches have all driven cars, you know, somewhat like this, where they've been that limited capacity and then gone into the pro buggy ranks and they've just pushed harder and harder. And I, I do believe it's from running that sort of speed around corners and that it was interesting. We actually talked to Bo Robinson the other day and he thought now that he'd been driving a truck for so long and knowing how to keep his corner speed up with the way that they're limited with motor capacity, he actually thought that he'd be faster getting back into a pro buggy than he was back in his heyday. So that's an interesting little side note. But again, it's also good to note with guys, uh, you know, if you're looking at getting into the sport, some of these, again, I don't like the word limited, but that's what it is. We've got a limited class where, the, you know, something's limited on them, like motor capacity or whatever. It's a great way to get racing. So because I think it teaches you all the fundamentals, you know, even down to a, like shifting a H pattern rather than a sequential or air shifted, you know, learning how to H pattern is something that's you know just a great skill set and then you come in and you can get it all together when you start going into those pro class ranks you know it, yeah it's an interesting because i suppose that's something to note too with off-road racing we really are one of the only sports where you can just roll in and you can buy a trophy truck tomorrow if you've got the money and uh have a crack at it there's no real i mean there is a licensing and a regime and all that sort of thing but honestly well, I'll tell you, my first uh, drive of a pro buggy or any off-road race car was actually on this track. We, uh, I prologued, and that's how I got my observed license test done. So wow. that's quite unique, I feel, because I don't feel like money-wise I could just buy in and then race Bathurst yep. tomorrow. <laughs> that's a reality of it, whereas where our reality is, again, you've got to do a couple of, of races now. The rules have changed slightly, but, again, uh, you can come and race. The Fink Desert Race is a bucket list item with, uh, you know, minimal training and that's something to consider and there's plenty of options there as our great 66 cars are making their way around now we've got a andrew crammon coming in and he looks like he's doing well there there was a little bit of a timing gap there so even though there has been a gap for him coming in from john weiss i don't believe that this is a true gap so again the 6683 of andrew crammon through now and look at how much suspension travel these little uh these side-by-sides have, and look how much they're working in that whoop section. I can tell you that those whoops are nowhere near as bad as they have been in previous years. Nowhere near as bad. So this is, um, it's it's going to be interesting. And once you get out on that Fink track, it's on for young and old. You don't get a second chance. That track tells you what it's going to do. Absolutely. Mate, the 6684, Matthew Lavis is through now. And I reckon he had a cracking run there because it definitely seems like he tightened the gap there a little bit to 6683. But 6637, this is Eden Evans again. One of the three Evans, mo well, actually, they've got a lot more than just three, but it's three of the Evans team. So this is the daughter of Simon Evans. Jackson is also racing as well. So we've got a, an Evans trio out there this weekend. And I tell you what, they are an absolute hoot, these guys. We were actually lucky enough to catch up with Simon on the Dirt Bags podcast the, uh, just the other day. And some of the stories, the Evans Motorsports stories, are just absolute crackers. They are uh, not just good human beings, they're truly competitive racers too. So it's very cool to see. Yeah, again, Ooh, our super. Like the yeah, I was Garrity machines not having a not having a fun time there yep. as the Chambers Engineering 
think what a sponsored uh, side by side makes its way through the stadium section as Gerrity does get that thing up and running now. But you can hear those Super 1650s. It's starting to get a little bit louder, Dan. I'm loving it. And why not? It is, uh, it's a great thing to be here, up here in the commentary box this morning. Got the lovely noise of flying side-by-sides coming past us. Yeah, that's an absolute cracker. Again, Eden Evans over the line now. Hopefully she's put uh, herself in a position where she's competitive here this weekend. I know those guys are always pushing for class wins and moving very well. Oh, again, the six Super 1650. 1650 cc's of screaming death off the line as the 220 sprays the sand. Simon Tucker off the line and having a cracking run here. Again, those shots of the 66, sorry, 66, 69, I think it is from here. Chambers is uh, making their way around. Again, this is the little Yamaha. There's a lot of sixes in that number, isn't there, once they start putting four digits in? Try saying that five times fast after being at Sporties. <laughs> <laughs> but again, the Super 1650s, Timothy Button. This is your man off the line. Yes, this is my man off the line. I'm not going to try and say too much. I don't want to put the commentator's curse on him because I have done it oh. in the past years. So, uh, Tim, mate, keep it flat. That's what yeah, you told me you do last night. Stick to the plan and you are, you'll do well, young fella. I know all the people at home and uh, the crew supporting you, especially the Alice Springs Auto Parts team. Uh, big shout out to them for getting this car ready this weekend. And Deej at Smart Off Road, that car would not be here if it wasn't for those people. So big shout out to them. Yeah, absolutely. It truly is a huge team effort. There's no question about that. And off the line with a nice clean run so far. Again, beautiful sweeping shots here of the racetrack. Beautiful. Just got that little bit of cloud cover here today. It's, it's keeping it nice and the weather's spot on as we see the Fink Ambassadors making sure that all the teams know when they're going and how to be ready with the signboards. Peter Blanche is going to be next out of this uh, Super 1650 class and you can hear that thing starting to rev up less than around about 20 seconds ago now as that green flag will drop and he'll put his foot right through the firewall. <laughs> That's the only way to do it. That's here the only way to do it. Yeah, so cool. So if you're watching along at home, you can see these front of the, these last two cars or the, the two uh, Super 1650 cars beam front ends. So they've actually got Volkswagen style front ends in them. You know, swing at sets and bits and pieces. So they are of the older style design, not running an AR. So they're doing it tough this weekend. It's going to be wild down in the roughs. But what I do say is they are an awesome class and there's so much potential for growth there. You know, again, working on the car, knowing different bits and pieces, still changing H patterns. I completely love that class between that and Sportsman, which is class three. Unfortunately, no threes running this weekend, and I can't understand why. I've got to admit 1,300 cc's and uh, swing sets would be, it'd be rough on the back. I think I'd be a couple of inches shorter by the time I got there, but um, Fink is pretty unforgiving on those swing sets. So, But next up, we're gonna have our class five cars are about to get off the line. Again, this is a crazy cool class as well. I'm gonna say that pretty much all, all race here because I love these things. These are basically our door slammer trophy trucks. The rules with performance two wheel drive is as long as it's got a tin roof. I, now, I'm paraphrasing, there is a few more rules than this, but essentially it has a chassis section. It has opening and shutting doors. Oh, the taxi, old Falcon 532. But again, tin roof, opening doors and a, a set amount of chassis. But honestly, you can run a six liter V8 auto. You can run those, you can see great shot of those massive long trailing arms, coilovers. Like it really is a cool class. And we've had some great competitors over the years. Chris Pickett is gonna be the first off the line in the 577, as we've got a few more cars coming through our stadium area. Again, our super 1650s making their way back in. That's a very beautiful car. Yeah, the Brad Garrity machine making its way into the stadium section now as he hits the first big berm in that section. Yeah, beautiful run around there. Again, clean is fast. I think you're going to see that with a lot of these Super 1650 guys. We talked about it last night, Josh. You know, the difference between 
42nd and 41st isn't worth throwing away you know your whole race over so you know whilst it might be for the top 10 guys they're going to set to kill these guys are going to try to be neat and fast and just put themselves in their class as high as they can without breaking or tearing up their machinery you know they want to have a beer at the pub before they there's no fun in having to prep your car until four o'clock in the morning so that you can race down to the track these guys have started very early or oh, a little bit of mud throwing there he cut in on that corner in the 220 which is simon tucker Again, you see those nice long A-arms doing their work. And most of these engines, if I'm not mistaken, are, are Camry engines. They're, they're a Toyota-based engine um, and are uh, running around about 90 rear-wheel kilowatts. Yeah, right. They're, they're very good motor. And that there's been a lot over the years. There, there was a bit of a period where Mitsubishi's were the go and then the, the ever faithful uh, 4AGE. Yes. was a motor that just couldn't stay away. The 16-valve Toyotas and, or 20-valve Toyotas, you know, they were very popular. This was a huge class, you know, not too many years ago, and it'd be great to see it crank along again because, as I keep saying, I know that the trophy trucks and the pro buggies get all the big glory, but what a class to be in. You've got a pro buggy that's, uh, or, you know, essentially a pro buggy with a limited motor. It makes it a real driver's class. It's a great bit of action here. Oh, oh, is he oh the it boy. Come on, Timmy Button. Young fella, I told him to keep it flat. He told me he was going to keep it flat. He's angry with this car. He, he's going to drive angry this weekend. And uh, watch out for his mate in the pro class, Shane Greening, another young Territorian, another Alice Springs local. These two boys have been on it at each other all weekend. Who's going to get down to think first? Who's going to get the faster time? It's going to be great. And these two have that banter. So come on, little Tim. Uh, you're doing really well, mate. I'm going to... Be quiet now and not give you those uh, those curses. Mate, you haven't given him the commentator's curse. He is absolutely rocketing around this big prologue track. That is really great commitment there from uh, from Tim Button. So a great little drive there. He is hooking that little Super 1650. And like Dan was saying, you can see that it is a, a beam style front end. So when we talk about A-arms or a beam style front end, this car is a, uh, is a beam style front end. You see that Volkswagen torsion arm style setup. But I tell you what, little Timmy is shouldn't call him little Timmy, he might be a big boy, he might come and want to fight me in the last a bit later on, but a great run there as he runs it deep through the finish line there. Yeah, he'll be he'll be happy with that one because he sits on top at the moment, Timothy Button, with a 5 minute 43 compared to Carl Tucker's 5 minute 43 compared to Courtney Ger wow, uh, Brad Garrity's. Uh, 545 so it is so tight right now yes yes so that's you did hear that correctly our first and second position are currently on the exact same minute and second time and only two seconds with the difference to third so those super 1650 boys have been absolutely hooking in yeah, so cool. And now we've got our class fives off the line too. Our four drive, the 577 Chris Pickett went off the line there on the bumper again. That big V8. Oh, I love the sound of a good V8 on a crisp desert morning, boys. Nothing quite like it. No, there's nothing like it, especially being here in the Red Centre for Fink. This town just gets so up and anti. It's fever pitch here and. We've still, we're still only in the smaller, the smaller categories at the moment. We're about to get a whole lot louder and a whole lot more uh, dirty, if you can say, as uh, the next of our off-road vehicles makes it through our plus five. Yeah, that's Dan Azinski. And I tell you what, that used to be silver, that car, and it's a great car. It was the one I was talking about recently, uh, or, you know, in recent years at Fink. She actually did a little pirouette and roll right at the finish line here on the last corner over, it was actually over this hump here, and uh, the boys got her back on its wheels and finished that race. But at the moment, it's Peter Bollock. He's having a good run down there. Little Hunter Rivmaster. Again, as you were saying, the, the Toyota uh, 1650. So he's just come through. He did run a 629, but got the 4AG E20 valve motor in that. I tell you what, I'm excited the to taxi. see this. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. so cool. It looks so good and sounds so good too. He heard it idling out of uh, the car park last night. And it's just something that's great about off-road racing. Like, you can build anything that your uh, mind really set to. If, 
If you've got a Falcon sitting around and you want to build a Falcon as a, a performance two-wheel drive, that's something you can do. You can see that diff bracing and bits and pieces. The boys have put a lot of work into making this work. And again, this used to be commonplace in off-road. It was very, very popular to race, you know, Valiants and, and Falcons. And it's really cool to see this car out here. Yeah, Commodore Utes, a little bit of everything over the years I've seen since I've been coming out here. And this next one is the next entry for the Walkinshaw uh, team here this weekend, the sports category. Um, this one a little bit quicker. Yes, this will be very cool to see this one go. Obviously got the V8 performance motor in it. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be interesting. They were trying to get this car ready for St. George and then I can't really remember what was said, but it was unfortunately, it wasn't available for St. George. The guy's running a two car team. And it sounds good, doesn't it? Oh, that's a manual car. Yes. There you go. Very interesting. Caught me a little bit off guard yes, there. Yes, manual V8. It's a good looking car too, isn't it? They turn out beautiful vehicles. Dave Kerman again, it's got a it's a ZR2 Colorado. Got the six litre Chev in it. Very popular choice out here, the Chev motors. Although we do see a number of Fords and well, one day they might even be a Mopar racing young Joshua, but I wouldn't count my uh eggs just yet. Jeez, mate, where to stick the knife into a bloke's yeah, back? Well, you hear it, I'm going to tell it, say it, so. But yes, the 525 off the line now, and it's a beautiful looking car. Got Ricardo Pontio in the uh, passenger seat. Probably uh, mix, it up, mix it up a bruschetta board as we speak, halfway around the track. Mate, he is going to come and punch you in the face. <laughs> <laughs> those Wilkinshaw boys don't play, I'm telling you. No, it's awesome to have those guys out here at racing, and again, bringing eyes to the sport. We've got a great lineup of class fives again. So the 508. That sounds healthy as well, young Joshua. I can just say Joshua and get both of you, can't yeah, I? Yeah, so, we don't know who. Yeah, so this is good. The 508. Mark Wakeman off the line. Corey Wakeman in the passenger seat. 5-7, one of the Alice Wans in that one. Hey, good motor. And she loves it. As we see the first of our class five competitors make their way back in, this should be Chris Pickerett. I tell you what, he has that thing. Look at the way, the uh, the aggressive attitude of that thing. That is front wheels all the way up in the air under acceleration. He gets a little bit twitchy under braking. So this is this is the tough part for these guys there. Early on in the day, as you can see, there is quite a large water puddle there that they've got to try and dodge. So they're trying to work out as they're coming down, do I dodge that water puddle? Do I get inside and hit the apex? Do I get out and um, and get on the berm? So, But you see a great line there on the way through there that... Uh, inside tire all the way up in the air as the Ooh. inside rear comes up so these boys are absolutely committed to getting this uh this number car 577 around this track as fast as they can but that's a great drive great commitment we're we're looking forward to seeing the times as we see like uh, pr oh, the idea behind it is that the times get progressively faster during the day so i'm not sure why they put the class fours behind the pro buggies uh hint hint no no but uh <laughs> But we're looking forward to seeing our, our times get faster and faster throughout the day. So this is going to be awesome. The action is just going to keep coming thick and fast all day as he is hard on the bopper over that jump. Looking for the perfect line through this corner. That is a great line. Hasn't had to lift at all as he holds it flat all the way through. Yeah, that was a great run. And that motor sounds nice and strong as it shakes through the commentator's tower. And it is. It's our fastest time so far. 5.32. So you uh, had a good run there, about 10 seconds faster than our fastest Super 1650. So again, that sort of shows you how tight it is. The 1650s, you know, the, the truck boys got the big V8 motors, but they're moving a bit of extra weight. The 1650s have really great traction. Dan Azinski working his way through now. Again, those big rollers. Interesting fact, Josh, this is actually a beam car, like an I-beam car. So they call them into equal length beams. You can see those beams hanging down under there. That was very popular. Oh, oh. That, that Falcon is yes. coming in quick. That is true. He has definitely closed up his starting gap. So they are pushing along very nicely. Yeah, I can oh, hear that can, thing out yes. the back. That Windsor motor is screaming and it's going to be pretty close, I think, when it comes down and uh, to the finish line. And as we were saying, you've got some people that are racing for classes and stuff in that uh, Australian Off-Road Championship. So some people are, are going for a leisurely drive to yep. make it just there and back. Whereas 
the 5-3-2 was absolutely sending it, trying yeah. to make it oh, boys. as far as yeah. they can up there with that Ford motor. Wait, he, he's got a taxi cab fare that he's got to pick yep. up after this, boys, so he, we're he about needs to get through yeah. the lap. We're going to see a pass here, no question, yep. in the stadium Ooh. area. This Ford is absolutely on the bopper. Only has a couple of corners to go, but he must, I was going to say, he's right on the tail of the Ranger. So this next straight will be the place to make a move. Don't want to set himself up for the corner. So hopefully the boys in the Ranger are having a bit of a look backwards. I know it's not something that happens too often. Oh, Ooh, great. for a dive. Yeah, that's a class act right there. Yes. He got that done very nicely. That has perked my interest now. This man could be on for class five. So DC, when do you reckon is the last time we saw an overtake in prologue? Would it be uh, Danny Brown on Kevin Knott in the class four truck? So I think that's and that's going back a uh, that's going back a fair way. But it's been a long time since we've seen an overtake in prologue. So that's uh, if you're here in the uh, 2022 Tats Bink Desert Race, you can say you were here for see the overtake. I tell you what, though, what's interesting about that, and he would have had to have checked up a little bit for that pass, I guess, but he is a couple of seconds, well, actually about 10 seconds slower than um, uh, Chris Pickett. So Chris Pickett, still our fastest time at the moment with that 5.32. And again, as we just listen, it's a great sound as these V8s come screaming into the stadium. Hope you guys at home are getting the sounds of that, you know, that Wilkinshaw car coming in. Method Race Wheels, one of the sponsors. Again, big shout out to Method Race Wheels. They are the sponsor of Prologue here today. The guys from Race Wheels Australia. We've got the banner up at the start line and the guys have put in a big effort here. Method out of the States, you know, they love the Fink Desert Race and they're getting behind it as well. So again, to have those international sponsors and the eyes on it, we have a big shout out to Method Race Wheels. Well, that is one of the great things about this, uh, this off-road race and this live feed that we've got going on. I'm sure there's plenty of ex-racers at home watching along as we see the Class 10 car get off the line there. That's Stephen Graham. Now, Stephen Graham is an absolute flyer as he heads off onto that start line. But, yeah, we're talking about former competitors watching along at home. I've, uh, I've heard a bit of info from uh, Luke Ayres, Brent Thompson, so those guys watching along back home in, in sunny Queensland. Also, uh, Lee Wells in Victoria couldn't make it this year, but uh, watching along at home as well. So great to see that not only, you know, the people are, are watching this, but it's also competitors as that Wilkinshaw performance. They have that six litre wound up. I tell you what, Man. that is one good sounding class five car. That is very cranky from where I sit. Great sounding car. As we've got those great shots of the 508 now, Sliding its way in. Great drift all the way around the berm there. Again, the 508 of Mark Wakeman. And I'm excited. This is a class that I just love, this 10 class. The 1057. Rodney Visser. Now, Josh, there's a name that's been around a long time, racing high busser powered single seats. He stepped it up to that beautiful full-size 10 car. And uh, it's going to be very interesting to see how these Class 10 cars go. So, yeah, very amazing. I think it's going to be one of those exciting things to watch these class races all through. Now, talking about class races, Josh, we've got a time with uh, Bo Robinson, one of our top-level trophy truck races, our Class 4. So let's go and have a chat to him. And we're wandering around the pits. I found myself Bo Robinson. Now, Bo... It's an important day for you to sort of see how you're getting going. So, so what have you done so far today? Uh, we've just done reconnaissance then, had a bit of a look at the um, at the track, and the truck's new to us, so we're just sort of trying to we're learning as we go. And the boys been we've been changing little bits and pieces, and yeah, we've only had it sort of 48 hours, so we've been um, yeah, the boys have been hard at work. I was going to say, I've heard a lot about this new Mason truck. So what's different about it and, and sort of what do you know about it so far and what do you expect today? I expect it to be good out on the main track, definitely. Out here is probably, it's built for the rough, you know, so the rougher the better for us. So this is probably a bit flat, so we'll see how we go today. Obviously, we'll give it a good crack. But, yeah, I think just generally, you know, our other truck's eight or nine years old, so we just sort of need to update it sort of in every little way. So um, hopefully it's done that. And, um, yeah, tomorrow should be better than today, I reckon. Arriving 48 hours before, do you think you left a little bit tight? Yeah, I know. Well, it was supposed to be three months ago, so we've just been, the whole the last month or so has been stressful, but um, no, it's good the boys have done a really good job getting everything ready, and um, no, yeah, it's just, um, yeah, it's uh, all the more for the uh, fairy tale, right? 
exactly and it is a very, bit of a fairy tale you're hoping for so eight podiums but you haven't yet got the win do you think you've got that little bit of an extra edge this weekend uh yes and no i suppose there's always good competitors out here every year sort of the same you know you think you've got it all sorted and then um you know something bites you but we've had a good run out here we've always um like love the joint really and really have a good um relationship with the whole town and everything so for me it's always a good time either way but um yeah i mean a win would be great We've been hearing a bit of moisture. The track's going to be a little bit heavy, a little bit different. Um, how does that affect the racing for you? What do you expect? Well, that's probably a good thing as far as prologue results go. You know, they've got two minute gaps for the first 10 and then, um, yeah, the, the moisture's going to definitely help with the dust, which is obviously an advantage for anyone starting back. But at the same time, again, the track's always the same. Like there's always stuff that bites you. And it actually got dusty yesterday when I was having a look. So maybe it still will be dust out, um, down the far end. Well, good luck. I hope it all goes well for you guys. More of the action coming soon. Yeah, so a, so a great chat there with uh, Bo Robinson, an absolute stalwart of the uh, Alice Springs community and, and Fink off-road race. So if you want to know a little bit more about Bo Robinson, uh, tune into a podcast called Dirtbags, and uh, we, there's a bit more info there. The guys did an interview with Bo, have about an hour and a half chat with him, so if you want to hear a bit more information about that beautiful mate, mason train. Mate, are you talking about yourself in the third person? It's What's all I've got. On? It's all I've got. As we see Graham in the 1065 make his way back in. Now, these boys are flying. I'm, I'm pretty confident we're going to see them maybe, or well, pretty, pretty confident we're going to see them go to the top of the, uh, the timesheet. These boys, absolute animals at uh, other AORC events. We've seen them... Uh, head up and, and be very competitive, be in the top five, the top ten outright as well. So great drivers here in this 1065. And I tell you what, it is a beautifully presented machine, Danny Curran. Yeah, it absolutely is. I love the way that all these little cars now, sorry, you can little, light, pro, like light cars, they've gone to the radius rolled roofs. Like the body lines are really, I'm going to say it, they're super sexy. It's such a nice looking car. It's a pleasure to watch. And this is something I was saying about the other day, Josh. I, at, I walked around uh, scrutineering and the level of professionalism now has ever growing. Like all of these cars are now wrapped up real nice. They've got the sponsors. It's not just sponsors, stickers slapped on, you know, they've got the team shirts. This is a beautifully turned out little 1065 car. Again, Stephen Graham, it's going to be very interesting. There you go. He puts him straight to the top with a 503. That Georgia. is a stonking that is lap. blistering, ladies and gentlemen, to run almost in a four in a 10 car. And again, you've, if you've been listening to me, I've been preaching this 10 class. Everyone's got to get on board with it. It's just so good. Yeah, it is an excellent class. It, 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 it's another one of those classes that... Heck, let's just say there's no such thing as budget racing and off-road racing, but it is, it is great cars. As we talk about the uh, the AR front of these cars and, and the the way that they are turned out so beautifully. Well, Josh, you know who I didn't realise he has a very famous face in with him in the 1065, Tanner James as the navigator. So there's a guy, Aaron James is racing his single seat Lumicraft. That's Dad, Tanner James blisteringly fast driver so to have him in the uh, passenger seat Stephen Graham's in a good spot there but again Rod Visser is one that I'm very interested in seeing he was racing a little single seat Ibusa not so long ago as we've got the 10.59 off the line now Jason Wilson again you can hear him on the bopper there Visit. Wow, and literally on the, on bopper, the in bopper in the commentary tower, we can hear it banging off the limiter. But again, some great names out there racing in this 10 class. And this is one, again, Bentley's got a, uh, a, a 10 car as well. One of the racer engineering, as as it comes onto screen. So the 1019. Sorry, it's the 1018 of Sam Bentley. Yes. Wheel up there. Again, Great to see a full family racing. They're racing the Class 8, the Trophy Truck, and the 10 car. Do you reckon there's a little bit of competition? Oh, absolutely. You know, especially from Sam's point of view. Hey, mate, I'm in the limited motor class, and uh, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a bump. Mate, I let you race my car one time at Pink, and I still hear you flap your gums about well, out it 24 interest, Just out of interest. No, no, move it on, mate. We've got to commentate time. about this Class right, 10 car. Yeah, so yeah, great not, to see Sam here, Right. Um, you know, doing a great run here as we... 
glad the, you brought that up. So the Class 10 cars. DC, I'll tell you what, mate. Give us a little bit of info here about what makes this a Class 10 car. It's basically the... Uh, you'll see they're a bit smaller than a Pro Buggy, but that's mainly to do with the fact that they are lim limited in engine capacity. Yeah, correct. So where it comes from essentially is an American class. And uh, America does have a lot of classes, but this is one that that really took off and was a great class. It was their Ecotech class. So they get these out of their, their Chevy's little... The Chevy four-seater... Uh, you know, four-door little sedans that they've got over in America. So they were running originally a 2.4, but Chev uh, decided to go to a 2.5. So the new rules is 2.5. The Essentially, it's a sealed motor class in the States. Now, Australia's changed that a little bit because obviously we don't sell Chevy Malibu compacts in Australia. So we don't have that option, but they've limit, opened it up to a, to a class restriction. And essentially, it gives you the opportunity to, again, run in a limited class, you, essentially, you can buy one of those American cars and run it straight away, which is what a lot of these guys did, have done. That Bentley one, I did have a look. It's got a Chevy Ecotec in it. So it is just a 10 car that they bought and moved over. Many of them will be that. I see that there's a Banning car over there as well. So, Yeah, and it seems to be a class that people do step up into here as we see the... Uh the, the Muir machine on there as well. I believe these guys have competed before in side-by-side uh, -side sport. So these guys now are making the step up into a Class 10 car. I believe this is an ex Mick Marson owned car. He brought in the country to do a bit of racing, keep his skill set sharp while he was uh, getting his race ready. But I tell you what, a great line there for the Muir boys in, uh, in far north Queensland as they power all their way through Burdekin. I tell you what, Great races happen around Burdekin as well, as we also see Sillet here in this single seat machine. Now, I tell you what, this lad always puts on a bit of a show. He, he uh, bit of a home-built buggy. That's not any disrespect or anything like that, but you can tell it is a, a little bit of a home-built buggy. But always fast here, always competitive, always... He, he's a regular finisher as well, which in these smaller classes is is really an achievement as well. Yeah, absolutely. I still remember the first Burdekin uh, 300 that we went to and he had a spare Subi motor in the back of his tray of his Land Cruiser as he turned up and he was fast. We were in pro class and he turned up in this thing and man, well, he was, I think he smoked us for a little bit there. But anyway, the long story short is this man can drive, particularly on those uh, state level tracks where, you know, it's not the overall speed is as much the key as running through the trees. This guy has talent for days. Now, the cool thing is, up on the line next, we've actually got Kai Floyd. He's yes. going to be off the starting line very shortly after we get Solid over the line. But Kai Floyd is actually the navigator normally for Ryan Taylor. Interestingly, he's running the 624 number. Good, good number. Good, good number, number there. Hey, so just a quick shout out while we have a little break in the action. There is a Victorian registered Toyota in the car park. The license plate is 1DD3ET. Your headlights are on. Righto, so we've got a great opportunity to throw to the pits at the moment with Toby Price, the big truck, and to hear his thoughts on how the race is going to go here at Prologue. He is the most popular man in Alice Springs every day, not just here uh, for the Fink Tats Desert Race. Toby Price, uh, we're at morning off Prologue. Finally, you get to get in the car and do some work. How are you feeling? Yeah, that's the exciting bit. Um, this is kind of like my quiet time, even it's at 7,000 RPM in the truck. So, uh, yeah, it seems, seems a bit strange, but uh, the, the reception here has been unreal. So we're, um, we're keen to put on a good show and, um, yeah, get this truck around as quick as we can. I've been blown away the sheer amount of people that are here this weekend. Last night, the line for you to get an autograph was as far as the eye could see. And then I saw your dad was signing autographs as well. Everyone wants a piece of the prize. Yeah, I think that's probably a little bit more famous than me. He's the one that gets me here to have all the fun. So, um, yeah, he's got the most important job of it all. But, uh, no, it, it was good. Uh, yeah, the lineup, everyone's getting to the front and they're like, oh, we've been waiting an hour and a half. And you're like, well, I wouldn't wait for my mullet head like that for that long. But, um, no, it's good. We're, we're keen. Nowadays, the, the, the big days. So we're, we're keen to get in the truck and get moving. Talk us through the prologue like, strategy. How does it work from your point of view? Um, basically, this is just going to be 8 k's of absolute torture on the truck, so it's um, you need to be at the front. Um, yeah, there's, there's no tarmac out there for us, so you've got to try and make the dust and try and make the gaps between everyone, and yeah, that's that's the plan. So yeah, by the time I think we go out at 10.45, I think the track should come around on itself a little bit and have some good grip, and then uh, yeah, we'll just yeah, we'll start clicking gears and see what happens. What do you do in the next sort of hour or so before you're out in the track? What have you done this morning to sort of just get yourself in the in the zone for what's about ahead? 
Oh, you got to go around to the drivers a bit and stir them up and uh, get in the head a little bit. And yeah, no, it's it's good. So we're just doing some final checks and everything. The boys behind us now are just uh, going through all the Motec stuff in there and making sure it's um, yeah operating at where it should. And then uh, yeah, we basically set some tyre pressures and yeah, get ready for the hell ride. And then the work's for you to be done. We wish you the best. Enjoy. Good luck. I hope it's a fantastic run for you. And sure, we'll catch up with, th with you throughout the day. Sounds good. Thank you very much. Right, so all our side by sides are starting to crank. It's great to get that bit of inside information from Toby Price. 7,000 RPM. Must be a Chev. <laughs> Clearly not a Ford, Greg Gardner said. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes, the, the madman, Greg Gardner. But uh, yeah, TP a great man. I tell you what, the, the J, JP as well, a very popular man too. As we see Swindlehurst, this is uh, off the start line there. So. A great run for there. That's Tom Swindlehurst. You'll see his brother a little bit later on, Jake Swindlehurst, the uh, Swindlehurst racing team. These guys have two beautifully turned out machines. And I tell you what, he has just held that thing wide open from the start line. I tell you what, I reckon there will be a bit of banter going on. Like you said, we've got Kyle Floyd, Joshua Weidman, Thomas Swindlehurst, Peter Carr, all these guys. Are, that's just the top four that I'm talking about. I mean, this is a stacked... I haven't even got to Simon Evans. No, no. Jackson Evans. McNiven. William. Yep. So he, that's exactly Greg Evans, Campbell. Evans. Galandi. Yeah, yep. the, the list is absolutely and stacked in this field. Yes, absolutely. Now, it's going to be very interesting because this is one to watch for sure because it has a lot of eyes on it. It's got a lot of sponsors. It's got a lot of uh, factory-style team. I don't know if we can class them as full factory yet. We haven't got, uh, you know... A, a, the, again, there's a championship within a championship within this side-by-side. -side. So it's going to be very interesting to see how these guys go. Again, Peter Carr off the line now. The 699. Again, looking up and down the times, it's still that 503. Stephen Graham that is glaringly fast. That's going to be an interesting to see how long it takes for that to fall. Because again, a sub four minute time here at Fink Prologue is a fast time. Yeah, absolutely. So I do, sorry, to clarify, I know that's not sub five or four, but you're essentially going to have to go sub four to win that is what I'm saying. And uh, yeah, that Illumicraft, um, yeah, wow, that's that's definitely some very fast times there. Sorry, Southern Cross. No, Illumicraft, I'm definitely on the Illumicraft. Sorry, mate, there's a lot of information coming in up here. I don't think here. that coffee's kicked in just no, yet No, we DC. might need another, another hot one anytime soon. But hey, look at those great shots there of all the crowd starting to roll in. Again, beautiful skies. It's actually the cloud cover is keeping the weather in a little bit as the 604 JSW car is off the line now. That is Jeff McNiven. He's another one. See oh, these side-by-sides, yeah. mate? They never lift. They absolutely. just hold it absolutely flat. So for, if you're following along at home, and again, you haven't had a lot to do with the side-by-sides, these are actually a two-pedal car. They're, they're actually a CVT belt system and they just basically stand flat on them and modulate the speed with the brake. Josh, proper go-kart style. And you can see him tipping it in there, old Jeff McNiven. And probably one of the other things to note, they're probably not glaringly obvious with the cars that we've had out, but uh, these side-by-sides are four-wheel drive as well. So that really helps with their with their braking. They're able to pitch it into corners. They're able to use the accelerator to, to help steer the car and, and the front end will pull, a, pull around versus a lot of our two-wheel drive cars. The way you're going to see guys, we're going to talk about him a lot, but you're going to see guys like Greg Gartner just absolutely hanging it out. I'm excited to see Billy Geddes back behind the steering wheel here in Fink, so, but you're going to see that difference of our two-wheel drive cars versus our four-wheel drive cars. Hey Josh, have a look at this. We've got cars flying up the line, but this is an interesting one here. Yeah, this is Kyle Floyd and Chris Weidman has made up some time. I'm going to say what, judging by the speed that Kyle's coming in at, I think he might have a little bit of a top-end speed issue there. It didn't quite seem to be coming down that, that section as fast as we expected Josh, it to. Josh, I'm going to throw it out there. I actually reckon that it has some sort of four-wheel drive front-end issue. It looks like it was skidding the back wheels. I've gone out on a limb with what I've I seen. Love it. Love but it. I'm going with it because it seemed to be very slippery around that corner and have no front drive, whereas you can see the front drive out of the 6105. Absolutely. But let's not take anything away from Josh White. But the dude is an absolute hell man. He was... Uh, Deep inside the top 10 at St. George and then at Pukeri as well. Had a little, was absolutely hauling. I tell you, if you get on the social medias for the uh, Motorsport Australia Championship, you'll see that um, had a bit, of a, a bit of a moment there. But I'm going to say, I think you're right, Dan. There is a little bit of a drive issue there with that uh, King Chrome side-by-side -side there for Kyle. So that's a bit of a shame. Uh, but an interesting side note, Josh, is that he's oh. running the long one. 
Josh Weidman. Did you see the Navi there? Was just absolutely pumping his man up there. Like, let's go, let's get him. Are we going to see a pass? I don't think I don't we're going to see so. a pass before the finish line. Kai Floyd's got the pace. He's running that wide outside line. And he is holding a flat. Again, the 6-2-4 over the line now. Yeah, look and at the speed listen. difference. Yeah, Weidman on the bopper there. And again, as you said, Josh, should be well and truly said that Josh Weidman is a second. true competitor. So 6-1-0. So just looking through that, Josh was just... He has come, come through in the second position. Yep. So there is some very interesting racing happening there. There's no question that Swindlehurst is having a good crack here, Tom Swindlehurst. So, yeah, crazy racing here in our Class 6. So we're going to throw down to the pits. We've got uh, a madman that is doing the uh, the double. So he's competing in the Fink, in a car and a motorbike. So let's go to the pits. There are so, so many cool people to meet while we're here in Fink. And Danny Foote, you are one of the coolest people because you are attempting to do the double, do the double Fink this year. So tell me a little bit about how it's going to work. Yeah, so um, we're going to send her down in the care name here um, tomorrow morning and then helicopter back to the start and um, go for it on the bike too. Okay, so you're in the care name, which is what's behind us, and you're with your dad. You're alongside your dad. You're navigating. Have you guys ever worked together before like this? Um, we have on the bikes, not in the can -Am. So um, we work pretty well together with communication, but it's going to be a wild ride. So, <laughs> And you've raced plenty of times at Fink before, so what number are we up to now in the bike? Uh, this will be my sixth year. Okay, so, you, so you sort of know the track reasonably well. What do you think is going to be the biggest challenge for you this weekend? Um, the biggest challenge will be handing all the control over to him for a fair bit of the day. But um, yeah, just making sure all the logistics fall into place and we get back in time for the bike. And then, yeah, hopefully we come home with another win in the 250 class. Um, and the fastest female is always great too. And you, you've, you've had that award before, fastest female, and you're also the youngest ever female. So what does all that mean to you? It's pretty cool, actually. Um, there's not a lot of female... Um, races up here in terms of the bikes and I, I've walked around the pits and there's so many navigators and drivers that are females in the cars so hopefully this will influence and inspire a lot of girls to come up to Fink and, and um, have a crack. I know there's a fair few others up here now, this year so we're getting there. It's such an awesome story but just talk to me about the logistics so you've got to drive, helicopter, ride. Is that So how does all this work and who organises this and make sure everything's all okay? Uh, yeah, it's a pretty big nightmare. Um, my dad's been organising it all so in terms of the helicopter, so um, we're really relying on him to get us down there as quick as possible. Um, and then obviously our prologue too, so uh, it's going to be pretty tight for time, but we're, yeah, it's always fun to have a good challenge. And talk to me about your preparation in the lead up to this weekend, how's it been? Um, it's been mostly on the bike, so obviously I still want to have a good crack at that and, and go for the win. So. Um, there's been a lot to do with the bike this week and we've got GRC looking after Dad's can and mechanical and everything like that. So it'll be um, good to get out there and finally get the tyres dirty, I guess. Well, we have our fingers crossed for you. We hope it all works out well and you have great success and good luck and enjoy it out there. Thank you. We'll see you out there. Yeah, so we talk about uh, rarefied We talk about rarefied air there. That's uh, doing the, the double. That's... Billy Geddes and Toby Price that uh, she's talking about hanging in company with. So we wish her all the best there as well. But I tell you what, she's also got a battle on her hands as she's going for fastest 250 rider uh, to win the class as well as the fastest female. So that's, um, that's awesome. Next of our side-by-sides making their way out onto the track as our... Uh, next of the side-by-sides in the stadium section make their way back towards the start-finish line. These cars are coming in thick and fast as we go through. And currently, Stephen Graham still with the fastest time, five minutes and three seconds. And then Peter Carr behind him, five minutes and nine seconds. So... There's, there's really nothing in this side-by-side uh, this -side category at the moment. Absolutely not. You see we've got Graham out front in that Class 10 car, and then he's got these little side-by-sides breathing down his neck, but he's still holding into that, that top spot, so Graham will be very happy about that as we have the, the 646 
on track at this point in time. So some great shots there of Josh Ferguson. As we see the King Crow car, that's Jackson Evans off the start line as well. So Jackson, an absolute madman. He's a uh, an Australian championship, Australian champion in the side-by-side -side championship, which is where they used to race him on motocross tracks. Extremely exciting. So you can imagine Jackson, definitely a bit of a hell man. But uh, that little Can-Am X3 there, Josh wound up all the way. Hey, good name, Josh. Hey. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely good name. As he has it wound up all the way through the finish line. And the 622 machine as well, that's Lockie Bailey as well. So I tell you what, that is a good looking Can-Am. A very unique uh, paint scheme or, or sticker wrap on that car, but a great looking Can-Am. It stands out. Yeah, it definitely does. And it's great to see all the different colours and different wraps and different paint schemes over the weekend uh, through all these classes. There's so many different vibrant vehicles and teams and, and the, just the, the finish to everyone this year is everyone's got team shirts, everyone's coming with um, a heap of stuff. So it, it's going to be a very interesting year as we uh, see uh, this next. That's the 607 off the start line, was it? Yep. Uh, Gregory... Guldani, I believe, in his can -M. Yes. Yeah, great little turned out machine. As it looks like we see Greg Campbell, I'm going to say this is the number three machine on camera making his way back in. So you'll see that most of the other cars have a number that starts with six. Greg actually has just the, the single digit three. That means in the last year that the Australian Championship was won, was run and won, he, uh, he finished third in that, that Method Race Wheels, uh, Greg Campbell Motorsport, Beautiful looking little uh, can am so, and that's a that's a big thing, Josh. It's, huge thing. It's it's a can am in the top three of an Australian off road championship with pro buggies, yes, pro lights, yep. with with everything. Yeah, so it's, it's incredible. He's the, the I tell you what, I'll say it. Originally, when they come out, I used to call them golf carts. I was an absolute hater of them, but uh, you know, Toby Whiteley who you'll see later on in a class four, has raced them and put them in the, I think he finished second in the Australian Championship one year, which is huge. And now we have guys like Greg Campbell as well. And I mean, super competitive. You know, these guys, while they're running here, they're, they're really going to finish like, uh, what's the right word? Fill the top 10 until say the pro buggies come out and then the trophy trucks as well. So these things are are fast. That's that's for sure now. They're, they're definitely in a, in a little, they've stepped up the league. Yeah, they definitely have. And it's, it's a buy-in sort of category as well, which is, is great about this this Can-Am racing, is that if you do have the money as uh, Greg comes across the line there, um, if you do have the money and the funds to do that, you can go racing, you can go to Polaris, or you can go to Can-Am and go, I want a race-ready vehicle, yes. and they will build you a package yep. for that set price, and bring it out to Fink, and you're ready to go. Yeah, absolutely, and it's something that uh, Dan and I regularly talk about is the the production or the, the, the leaps and bounds forwards in technology with these Can-Ams, the Polarises, the Yamahas, is absolutely monumental and so fast and so huge because it's one of the one of the sports that is still getting a lot of factory support. Polaris are here, you know, involved with Simon Evans Motorsport. Can-Am, you know, are involved as well. So you see that leap forward very, very quickly from where they were, say, 10 years ago when they first came into the sport. Yeah, it was... It's progressed so much over the years that, I, that I've that i been here at Fink. I remember when the Can-Ams were such a small, small little section of of uh, the Fink calendar and, and the Fink category, and now they come out and they field a 60-plus uh, side-by-side pro um, category. So... It's, it's massive, the progression, and I think motorsports in Australia, and especially off-road racing with what the Australian Off-Road Championship is doing, now bringing that six-event calendar this year, yeah. is it's making it accessible to a lot of different people around Oz and travelling not just to Fink and Pakun and those, those normal tracks that you see on that AOC calendar, we're expanding now and we're getting all these people, international people as well. So yep. it's the off-road sport here in Australia is growing massively. And the calibre of people that are in the championship now. We, as Jackson Evan appears on screen, now he's part of that famous Evans family of, of racing. His dad, Simon, who was just in front of him and will be coming across the finish line shortly. That's a four-time Australian rally champion. And he talks about how much passion and love he has for off-road racing. And it's the side-by-sides that brought him into this event. So that's a great run there from Simon and as we cut to the uh, to the young fella Jackson I tell you what 
great that they started them uh, right behind each other as well. I tell you, Jackson would have been doing everything he can to make sure that he runs Dad down. Yeah, absolutely. As Ben Falks off the line now, the 6187. A great run there is Jackson Evans. Again, high up on the berm, spray in the dirt there. Again, Jackson, quad bike racer and all-round madman. Again, look at him running that high line. We've seen it change now. The guys are carrying that corner speed, carrying that pace. Beautiful shots here brought to us by the Fink Desert Race. If you're listening along live around the country or even further abroad, again, welcome. It's great to have you on board, and it's great if you're down here trackside looking at the big screen. It is beautiful to see you guys here. It is a great day. You're all looking very lovely. Probably much more lovely than the commentary box is, but the moral of the story is that we are absolutely pumped to have you guys here at the Tats Fink Desert Race 2022. She is in full swing again. We've gotten rid of all the restrictions, and it's time to party. I can't help but look over, and as we're talking about how many people are here already, is that merch line again this morning? Is is like a hundred meters long, or like? So go and get your merch while uh, the line's not ridiculously uh, massive this morning and you want to get in uh, those, uh, get into that before we do sell out. Um, but there will be a whole heap of merchandise available online after the event as well. If, unfortunately, some of the stuff uh, we ran out in your sizes, you'll be able to jump online and grab that after the event. So you uh, don't... Get, uh, so you don't miss out on a souvenir from this great, great event. Yeah, that's something that's always a bit hit and miss, or like as in touch and go with the gear. You've got to get in early and make sure you've got that merch, but that's a great option. As Stephen Henry is up on two wheels on the big screen there. He's uh, making his moves in there. Stephen Henry, a great side-by-side -side Australian Championship competitor. As the 607 flashes over the line, Greg Gulandi. Again, a lot of these guys come from this side-by-side -side Australian Championship. Used to be racing motocross on motocross tracks, eight cars wide. And then as the desert thing got more and more of a, a lure, a draw, they started setting their cars up and coming for the longer. And now the Australian Championship with side-by-side, -side, and that's what I was talking about, a championship within a championship. There is actually a championship running here inside the Australian Championship that is side-by-side -side specific. So it's interesting to note that as a, as a little bit of a side piece. So... The 656 of Bradley Belcher on track now as well in that stadium area. Again, as Stephen Henry, one of our great competitors. Queenslander too, which is always great. The 623 over the line. Again, the UTV surgery car. Those boys have been racing out here for a long time. Wild man on jet skis and skis and all sorts of stuff. So Stephen Henry, when you see him, you know that he likes to party. As a lot of these boys do out here. Again, looking at the action, the Amsoil. It's interesting, this car here, this 676, Josh, this was one of the first ones that I started really noticing side by side. We were down at Bonduma in the Big Whoops, and up until then, I'm gonna say it, I've said it a couple of times, I was a hater, I used to call them the golf carts, wasn't a big fan of the side by sides, rolling roadblocks, all those names that people used to call them when they were first coming through. I saw this thing come through um, the Bonduma Whoops rolling at about 100 kilometers an hour and went, Hold on, I've got to change my opinion on these things. These are real race cars as the 621 comes through. But again, that was the Amsoil k and -M. It was a real uh, eye-opener for me, I think, coming from a pro buggy background where I thought I knew it all. Well, no, these guys are really stepping up and going faster and faster as the 621 of Tony Watley. Interesting note, Toby Watley, the son is in the trophy truck, the Love Day truck, so this is the Love Day team. They both came out of Cairn Amps and it was a, you know, a big thing and they've stepped up and built their own uh, rush kit trophy truck now and they were running right up the top at many of the Australian rounds. Toby in a Cairn Am has actually gone really quick even in these side-by-sides and run up inside the top three in the Australian Championship. So it's great to see all of these guys out and having a red-hot crack here today as they get across the line. Yeah, and it looks like we've got some interesting chats to have with down in the pits. I'm going to throw to one of the girls who are talking with some of our Prologue competitors. I was going to say the adrenaline. Oh, sorry, guys. A little bit caught off guard, but I found myself a family here in Pit Lane 
Jake, Tom, David and Kate Swinglehurst. A bit of a family team going on. So we've got Tom and Dad. Yes. So Tom, are you going to trust your dad to tell you where to go? Of course, yeah, I should. Oh, it's um, No, he's a, he's a good navvy. He does, tells me where to go, tells me to um, go faster, slow down, all that kind of stuff. So he's no. Yeah, awesome. And Jake, you've got your sister. Now, brother, sister, is there any kind of banter that goes on with you guys? Can you trust her to get you from the end of back? Yeah, of course. We've done two rounds already and she's um, she's doing really well in the navigator seat. Awesome. And I know between you guys, who's, who's going to win out of you two? Finish first. Finish first, but yeah, me, of course. <laughs> I got told you were the pro. That's what you told me beforehand. So... How long have you guys all been involved? Because it's pretty cool to see a whole family in and amongst it. Um, well, racing, we've been racing for about four years. But um, before that, um, my old man and my uncle have been race, racing around the 90s. So it's always been like a normal progression to get back into it. So, yeah, it's good, good fun. And, um, sorry, I should have asked you before, but where are you guys all from? We're from Brisbane. Oh, awesome. Yeah. So what brings you, what brought, I guess, what brought the family here to start with? I'll probably ask Dad that. Well, it's just a bit of fun, really. You know, it's the thing that the family can do as a as a group, and it's uh, lovely to be able to spend time with you. Um, my wife is on her way. It's just sad that she couldn't actually see the start of the prologue, but she will be able to see Jake and Kate go round and round, which is really good fun. But it is just fun hanging out with the family and spending some time in the shed, which is many hours, as everyone said on the last interviews, that there's lots of time in the shed to prep these things toys they're real race cars in it these days so it's um it's just cool to hang with your family i think that's brilliant to sort of bring the family in and amongst it it's such a family atmosphere out here and i think that's what we've all really really been loving but what are you hoping to get out of today what's the expectation for prologue um to well first of all get the car back in one piece um and really to to get a good start for tomorrow and hopefully the next the rest of the weekend is a success for for jake and myself so I was just going to ask, what are you hoping hoping for today? Um, it'd be nice to be up the pointy end. Um, this is only the third race in the car, so we're still sort of learning it. But, yeah, it'd be nice to be up the pointy end. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for your time. This is awesome. I hope it all goes well. Thank you very much. Yeah, so great info there. Great to see the Swindlehurst team there. Um, you know, you see that they're sponsored by Method. So one of the things we're going to throw out there, Method Race Wheels are the naming right sponsors of Prologue today. And they've got $1,000 on the line for the fastest side-by-side, -side, $1,000 on the line for the fastest motorbike rider, and $2,000 on the line for the fastest car overall. So fantastic, fantastic information there. Like, uh, fantastic that the team from uh, Race Wheels Australia, Method Wheels, getting behind this off-road event and, and really putting their money where their mouth is. You know, they, they sell their rims and tyres, they, they go down the path of lighter, faster, stronger, and they're 100%, they're you know, they're the kind of people that are backing events like this. So get on there, support the Method Race Wheels guys, Race Wheels Australia. But yeah, a lot of cash on the line for first prize. And it's pretty cool, Josh. They're having a bit of a breakout year as well. We were talking about Ryan Taylor before. You know, he's having a, an excellent start to his Australian Championship run. And like you said, physically involved in the company, physically, you know, and it's great that these guys are out here, as you said, putting their money where their mouth is. It's race car time. There's no question about that. So it's going to be a good thing. So again, we've got plenty of these Class 6 cars still Run around the course. It's going to be a few of these guys all jostling for position. Again, that's that Amsoil car coming through again. The 676. Nathan Shivers keeping an eye on those times. Again, it just does show that that 503 was blisteringly fast, wasn't it? We're in the mid fives at the moment, realistically, is sort of the times that we're running with the side by sides. There's yeah. some very fast cars out here. Talking about this, this is the Patriot Campus boys. The twins, as they're known. Or well, I think they call it the Patriot Twins. So the boys are out here having a go. And again, something to chat about is the interesting differences. Some people are running a long wheelbase for Fink. They say that it's more stable and doing its thing. Uh, a lot of the guys are choosing to run the shorter cars for the whole Australian Championship because in the tight trees, the short cars, the two-seaters are something. That's something we had an interesting chat to Simon Evans about, the difference between the two and what he thought because he has run both. He's run a long car and a short car here at Fink. He's chosen to run the short car at this point, although he did indicate to me that he thought that the long cars could be faster here. 
It just sort of depends on the situation. Again. Run, Josh, run. <laughs> <laughs> Young Joshua running across the, the line there. Again, side by sides off the line. The Method Race Wheels banner there. Again, a nicely turned out car. The 693 off the line of Dylan Basham. Again, th there is plenty of action. Every time the camera flicks, there's just something going on on this track. And that, I suppose, is what is so great about Saturday Prologue. Again, brought to us by Method Race Wheels. And it is one of the best days here. There's so much going on. There's so much food and activities and racing. It's just one of those days that you really can't miss. No, you can't. And I think we uh, have the number three down in the pits with Kazaya now, Glenn Owens. So we'll throw down to them and have a chat with Greg. Thanks, guys. Well, I'm having so much fun wandering around the pits here. Now, I found myself an old, familiar face. So, 2016 champion, Glenn Owen. Glenn, you've only done this once since then. What brought you back this year? Look, fairly keen to come for a run. My youngest son wants to come for a ride in the passenger seat, so he's going to have a go with him this year. And, yeah, that's what brought us back, really. You are saying he really roped you into it. So, is he keen to do a few more? You, could we see you around again? Oh, we will be around for a fair while, yeah. But whether I'm in the driver's seat, I'm not too sure. But we're time for a change, I think. Pass, pass it over, pass over the reins. Well, exciting to come back. Are you, you know, how are you feeling about getting back out there? Yeah, and no, I can't wait to get out there and have a proper The COVID in Victoria knocked us around a bit. We haven't um, much seat time in the car, but um, we've done a bit of a test the other day coming up down Orange Creek Station. The car feels really good and fast, so we're going to give it a go and try to run these boys down. And is there any, you know, any surprises you've come across out there? I mean, um, if you're hoping to, or I guess not hoping to come across, or that you have in the back of your mind, oh, I'm a bit worried about that. I remember that from back 15 years ago. No, nah, look, the track's changed that much this year again. Like, there's a fair bit of past stuff out there. Not as many whoops, doesn't seem to be. So I think it'll suit the buggies very well. And, um, yeah, we can run some of these trucks down. Awesome. Well, good luck. Have a great time. I hope it all goes well today. You're getting in a good place, ready uh, for Sunday and Monday, all the action. Yeah, again, Glenn Owen's a fantastic competitor. Has won this race before in 2016. So it's going to be interesting to see how he goes. And it's interesting to hear his thoughts on that track too. And he's wording to run them down. So that's going to be a very interesting race. Again, I think the turbo cars are going to be very fast here today. It's been said a number of times. You'll probably hear me say it a few more times. But yeah, and just going through our top three at the moment. Very fast times. 5.03 with a two is the 10.65 of Stephen Graham. And again, I mentioned he had Tanner James. Tanner James is an absolute hell man in a pro buggy and has done very well here in the past. The 699 is currently sitting in second place at the moment. That is Peter Carr with Matthew Windham in the passenger seat with a 509. That just shows you how fast those side-by-sides are. And the 6, 610 of Thomas Swinglehurst. So we talked to the Swinglehurst boys before. He's currently sitting in third position. Now, obviously, there's some positional changes coming once we get our unlimited classes or our, our pro-class cars out here. They're going to run deep down into the fours, I'd say, here today. About an 8.8-kilometre .8 track here. And, uh, you know, for doing those sort of times, five minutes to, to cycle through this track. And, again, there's not many big straights out there. It's more jumps and whoops and rocks and ruts and all the stuff. So the, so the prologue here heating up nicely. Again, as the 6165 comes through, that's Benjamin Ward. Warwick Priest in the passenger seat. And he's run a 5.32. That's going to be a deep pack, that 5.32 area, isn't it, Josh? They're going to really be working hard. There's going to be a lot of side-by-sides. They're all going to be jostling for position in that first 30, 40 kilometres. I think that's what usually happens. You know, you get down to Mount Squires and then it sort of works itself out a bit. But for the start, it's going to be an absolute war to get through this, particularly the first 30 kilometres. We talked about the dust in the last night in the first 30. You're going to be looking at the tops of the trees. You're going to be trying to work out where you can and can't push. Again, a bit of a game changer that I haven't driven with is the 
um, the GPS systems that we can run now. We talked about the guys running the iPads in the car with notes and all sorts of things. Actually, I heard a great story. You like Billy Getter's Navi. He's got a guy called Alan Cornick with him. Apparently, yeah, him and Heath Lawson were doing a bit of pre-running and taking some notes. And pretty much on every one of those runs down in the first 60 or 70 kilometers, he was just pushing aeroplane on the iPad. And apparently, that's the symbol for just send it. So apparently, Billy Getty's is going wide open with Alan Cornick in the passenger seat this year. As the Patriot Twins, Monte Salvos are over the line, 688. Christian looks to be at the wheel this year, although the Twins often share that around. Again, Ashton and Christian. They've got the Turbo R, and again, it is one of the long ones. Just waiting for a few times and bits and pieces. Yeah, so he ran a 547, so that's a good position there for the Patriot guys. Definitely is as the chopper starts to get warmed up and ready as it looks like we'll be running into uh, some of our bigger vehicles making their way through. We still have quite a few of these Can-Ams um, and these wreck vehicles to get through, but they are putting on an absolute show for us here at the start finish line precinct so far this morning with the Super 1650s and some of the sports lights as well. Production two-wheel drive. Uh, having gone this morning. Still a heap of action to go though, Dan. We still have some of the biggest names in off-road racing to come. And then we have the top 30 bike competitors. We've been talking about cars all morning. I cannot even think about what that transition period between um, cars and bikes is gonna be like for us. Uh, trying to wrap our heads around that top 30. Yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, even the changes in the track, like these cars and particularly the pro cars are going to really rut up this track. Yep. That's going to show some skill set on our top 30 bike guys. Again, I'm excited to see some of these names out here. Obviously, there's Walshy, complete legend, Jack Simpson. But again, we've got Nathan Trigg. We've got Ivan Long. Oh, man, I'm excited to see Longy swing his leg back over a bike and, and get on that bopper running his own desert team. So, you know, very, it's going to be great. Grabo's riding again this year as well, too, which is, you know, he was the king of the desert in a period of time. So, going to be exciting to see all of those races. There's so many fast guys. Again, uh, I could just, uh, Jack Dooley, McDonald, you know, the list is just endless with these motorbike guys that are going to be super competitive and super fast. And I think we're going to be holding on, particularly if it's a fast year with a smoother track. Yeah, I definitely do think it is going to be a smooth track and it might even be faster. It's going to be interesting as well as we continue to send off these side-by-sides. Joshua Ward going off. Some great shots here. Cars racing through the track. Again, man, the way these side-by-sides, again, Josh, they're four-wheel drive, and that really does make a big difference. You see them running those lower lines. They're really pacing through these corners. And as they run across, they've got plenty of pace too. Like, I think they're limited to, like, not limited, but a gear ratio-wise, you know, 120 is the top speed out of these sort of things. But the thing about them is that they get out of the corners, they get to 120 pretty much instantaneously. Whereas, again, the big heavy trophy trucks, you know, they've got to move to get up to that speed. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see. And again, with it being a faster, flatter year, how that's going to affect it, you know, all that corner speed these guys are going to be able to hold up. It's not going to be too long. In an Australian championship scene, we often see these cars run well up inside the top 10. Again, particularly if it's a tighter track like St. George did have some big straights, which helped obviously the big unlimited cars, but it also had plenty of technical stuff. Think really is that sprint race that everyone talks about though. The 674. Again, Aaron Colburn through now. Graham. Colbrand in the passenger seat and just having a look at the times, 5.36 there for the Can Am Maverick. Another one on the bopper off the line. Again, that's one of our great Can Am competitors as well. Again, very much a Polaris and Can Am race here. There is some other brands like Yamaha's and bits and pieces. But in this turbo class at the moment, these guys are in a stalemate battle. 
where they're just battling back and forth. The technology's coming so fast. Again, we've gone from, you know, glorified ag equipment, if I can use that wording, to true off-road race cars. The 618 is flying as well. James Hutchinson. Now, the exciting thing, we've got the 115 down in the pits, and we're going to cross over live now. So many very cool stories here this weekend at Fink, and we have got Ali Howes and her navigators. Ali, uh, such an awesome weekend, but it's certainly not your first time. You're very familiar with this track here. Yeah, so this 2020 will be my fourth time racing Fink, so hoping to finish it. And it's very much a family affair here because your brother, that's his car over there. And this is your partner, Sarah, who's your navigator. Sarah, is this your first time at Fink? It is my first time at Fink. Looking forward to it. And what is your role across the weekend? I just do a lot of talking and a lot of pointing. Yeah. Your first time in being involved in motorsport or how did this come? Uh, so this will be my fourth race. I've done the national rounds this year. Um, and, yeah, I coached Ali in the gym, actually, and she sort of sort of thought that would be a, a good mix and thought I'd be able to tell her what to do in the car as well. So that's sort of how it came about. And roped you in. Now, Ali, you're currently sitting third in the AORC Championship, which is a fantastic result so far for this year. Yeah, no, it's, um, it's a bit of a shock, yeah. So um, we're hoping um, to treat Fink just as as just another round go there down there and back and and hopefully accumulate some more points so the, yeah the um yeah the idea is yeah the more points we slowly accumulate at the end of the year we might get a, a really good result so and talk to me about your preparation in the lead up to this weekend how much running have you been able to do um we arrived on monday so we've been down and back uh twice um took some time took all most most of the day um um, we just try to log a few things and take note of a few things. Um, but in terms of getting the car ready, um, it was a really short turnaround from Pooncarry. So um, the boys have been really busy in the shed getting things done. And um, yeah, so we're finally here. So it's it's sort of it's been a big build up, but a, a really short turnaround between races. So and just let me know about the setup that you guys have got here. How many? members of the family are here and how many people really make this event happen? Uh, this is the hard one. Um, <laughs> t today, uh, well, here over the weekend we've got about 12 crew with us. Um, you know, I've got my, my brother and his navigator, Sarah and I, my dad, um, and then, then there's everyone at home. So there's okay. a, Uncle Pete, <laughs> my mum, there's, um, there's a big lot of us. So um, yeah, and without them we couldn't do it. So Thank you girls so much for chatting to us. Have a great run today. Have good luck for, across the weekend. We look forward to catching up with you when you're all done and dusted and you're very successful. Oh, 100% we'll be there. Thank you. Thanks so much. Cheers. How good is that chat to Ali Howes? She is one of the champions of our sport. And obviously Josh Howes, uh, you know, the brother, um, last year's second place. No doubt he's probably looking to one-up that little, uh, get a step up this year. Again, Josh Howes, unfortunately... I don't know how to explain this one, but due to all the things going on last year, he, he actually had the most points out of the championship, but the championship got essentially a no contest. So really, in my mind, Josh Howells has the one at the moment. He sort of has the target on his back. He is the fastest man last year by quite a bit. Not at Fink, I'm talking about in the Australian. Obviously, Toby Price was the fastest man at Fink last year, and uh, that's another man that will have a big target on his back this year. No doubt there's plenty of people with fresh machinery that really want to make that a, a, you know, a bit of a statement point. So, but again, we've got still cranking the side-by-sides off the line. Another k &M, and we've had a few go through. Again, still... Top you know, 10 remaining relatively unchanged. We've had, uh, like, uh, Steve Graham at the top, Peter Carr and Tom Swindlehurst are still our top three at this point in time. Um, so we'll keep you updated with the changes that we, uh, that we happen at this moment. But just want to touch on one of the interesting things that Ali talked about there when she said they were pre-running. They talked about uh, logging the track and stuff like that. So uh, one of the things that has come in in the Australian Championship is you can actually use a GPS. So they will have been down the track, putting in course markers, uh, talking to um, Alan Cornick, which is Billy Getty's navigator this, this year. He, um, a lot of the information was just send it. I believe the term he uses is aeroplane it. So a lot of the crests that they were talking about, I believe that the, the term that he puts in the, for the GPS is aeroplane it. And that means just lick the stamp and send it. Well, yeah. last year, if I'm not mistaken, the pro class didn't have those capabilities of using GPS. If I remember correctly from talking to Josh last year, um, who came in so close behind Toby, was that 
they had no clue until they were on Toby's uh, behind. And it was the closest faint finish we've seen in the cars for a very long time. So that was with an issue from Toby's vehicle. We don't know. And, you know, it's very early on in the weekend. But Josh, um, I, I think, has a, a really good opportunity this weekend to try and take that top spot. Yeah, oh, absolutely. I think that he's going to be one that's definitely pushing again. We talked about Glen Owen, you know, Swindlehurst's right there. Ryan Taylor's right there. You know, I think there's going to be... Uh, and then we start listing the trophy truck guys. We've got the Billy Geddes. We've got the, you know, the new Mason of Bo Robertson. I think that's one that's going to be a very interesting... I would not like to put dollars down no, this year on not. who could be a potential... like. I think a lot of people at home, and listen, Toby deserves everything that he gets. Yep. You know, he is a great ambassador for the sport. If you've ever met him, you know he's a good bloke. That's the reality. But I know that a lot of people jump on and go, okay, well, when's Toby going to win? Well, it's not quite that simple, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here to say it. Uh, Toby is a legend. He's got some very, very good machinery behind him. But at the end of the day, there's some absolute hell men that are prepared to hold it wide, and it's going to be interesting. The big, you know, game... The, or the big, you know, chess match thing is going to be that seat time. It's going to be with respect to now people are catching up on Toby with respect to the hours spent on the track. We're starting to GPS log things. You know, that's something that wasn't around a few years. So, you know, back in the day, well, we saw it, didn't we, Joshua? We're down about the 45K mark at the Alice Springs off-road track when that famous pass, we just happened to be there. Amazing. When that famous pass happened, Bo passed, uh, Toby passed Bo for yes. his first trophy truck win. Not an overall win that year, I actually believe. Oh, I can't remember. Did Shannon win it that year? Anyway, long story short is that um, we were there, and the big difference that I saw, because even Bo, let, let me prefix this with saying, Bo Robinson is a hell man that never lifts. You know what I mean? Yep. But to see him, he was lifting on a few of those crests that he didn't know about, whereas Toby never let off the no. bopper. And that's that motorcycle experience. It, that's that 80,000 kilometres of pre-running. Now, what's going to be a different this year is going to be the fact that Bo's done some serious pre-running. Bo's got the GPS. Shane Hutt's in with him. Shane's a very experienced and has been in with him for a long time. Huddy will be right on that. Huddy's a complete legend. Like, what a guy to get in with Bo Robinson, you know what I mean? So, again, let's get back to the side-by-sides because I want to talk about them and their competition. Like, again, the 669 is through now. That's Brent Fowler. And we've still got plenty more side-by-sides coming off the line. Again, they are fast. They are furious, and we are making it happen. Brett Fowler has run a 5.42. But I guess, boys, getting back to it, my point just was that it's not going to be clear-cut this year. No. I wouldn't put all my eggs in one basket. As you said, mechanical issues come into it as well. We've got, you know, six-litre motors that are on that jagged edge of horsepower. You know, a lot of these guys, and they're probably being a bit bashful, 700 horsepower. That's that's a lie, guys. Yeah. They're over 800 horsepower. A lot of these guys, are, well, Mick Marson told us, what, 814, 816? So, you know, he's got a Ford. Greg Gartner has essentially the identical motor built, you know, with Craig Carrison, you know, the reality is that it's going to be up there in those sort of numbers. All of these guys are running big eight-stack Dugans. It's going to be interesting to see what can hold on. They're all running air shift. They're all, wow, technology has come so fast, so quickly. It's going to be exciting times. But again, we sort of get back to this is why this side-by-side -side class is so exciting and competitive because it sort of takes a bit of that money spending out of it and we get back to who can steer the wheels off these things. Yeah, it's about the driver mod, and I think a lot of people don't like talking about the driver mod aspect of things. And yes, we all do have respect for all these drivers and competitors out here this week, and we are not harping on that they cannot drive or they're unexperienced. It's just um, with the with the the level of competition and the the level of names and the caliber of names and the people coming through, it's just it's so hard to be consistent that whole way down to Fink and that whole weekend and let alone with this side-by-side -side championship um, with King Chrome that they've got within the championship, it's a massive big thing. So, Yeah, oh, it is, mate. And then because even that conversation is interesting. Like I, as I'm listening to you saying consistency, and I totally agree, but then 
it comes back to Fink's always been a sprint race now. So, you know, you've got to know where you can just hold it wide. And that's where basically the dude that holds it wide the longest, I know this is a very logical statement, yes. but the guy that holds it wide the longest is going to be the winner as long as they don't break. So you've got to get that that fine, fine line of making sure that your car does the, the 446 kilometres that it has to do. You know, it's interesting because even down to how much can you manage? Like as in, you do the 226 on the way down, can you do a full rebuild? Can you service your car? What what access do you have to making things happen? You know, there's guys, and I don't think this is any secret, that are doing gearbox changes, turbo changes, you know. Basically, they will do an entire strip and rebuild. Um, Toby Price last year put a, a full rear end in his car, and I believe a gearbox as well. So, you know, to have that level of, um, competitiveness that that's what you now need to do and even then as you sort of said had that head issue on the way back very lucky we actually talked to him again on the dirtbags podcast he was telling us a little bit of information about the way the valve you know the things that happen with that head and honestly that was nearly very much a dnf for toby he was this close that motor wouldn't have done many more kilometers the way it was and he you know limped into the the finish line there and got it done again he's got a great series on youtube that shows that so the 638 again off and smoking away and we got another little side by side coming through our stadium action again sponsored by method race wheels bringing us all the prologue action here today putting their money where their mouth is putting big checks on the line i like that josh it's a good thing when we've got uh, big Big names like Method Race Wheels looking at the Fink Desert Race and saying, hey, we want to be involved in this desert race out in Alice Springs. Central Australia, beautiful weather, beautiful time, beautiful ambassadors, just all things beautiful. Yeah, you're absolutely right, DC. And that's what you talk about, like, with Method Race Wheels, the guys in Australia sort of pushing it onto the the American company there. They, they are heavily involved, and, and we're having a chat to Bo, and he said uh, if his mason turned up a little bit earlier, he actually had people that were absolutely committed to uh to throw money on the line to rent his old geyser come over from america and actually race here and add that extra international flavor you know we, we do have a few americans here some of the the geyser brothers we know paul wheel picked them up from the airport yesterday uh tisco is tisco here boys, yep. we've got um jason duncan from uh sdg socks is here as well so awesome to see that uh that we're getting that international flavour. I don't think it's going to be long until we have a, a, a top-name American competitor come over and uh, really experience things. So. Yeah, well, we did have Harley Lettner come over a few years ago, and he did very well, ran inside the top ten. And I think if you gave him the opportunity again now that he knows what's here, I think he could do uh, even better, go up the step, no yep. question about that. Absolutely. He, I think he got a real... Uh, eye opener yep. in the Fink prologue. Again, this prologue is very interesting. I, I don't think he thought quite how um, how off the line it was. From start to finish, they just have to be on it because we talked about it with the Baja stuff and that. Lots of the guys run 500 miles, war not warm into it, but keep the gear alive and then have a sprint race for 100 miles at the end of a race. So it's almost a race within a race. Whereas at Fink, from the moment that you strap the helmet on, you've got to be at 105%, otherwise you're not winning this sucker. Well, that famous footage from OBR Racing a few year ago, years ago, Trav off the start line, they used to hold the boards behind it to stop, uh, what's the right word, too much uh, spray coming from the rocks, and, and he launched the vehicle that hard off the start line that it literally spat the guy out that was trying to hold the, uh, hold the wooden board behind the rear tyre. So that's the level of commitment that you're going to see uh, from all the drivers here, from the moment the green, like the race starts now, they're not looking to jockey for position in prologue. They want to be that number one in their class. As we see a little bit of a, a battle happen for class here, we also see a little bit of a bit of racing in prologue. Yeah, Josh, you mentioned T Rob. There's an OG Hellman that just has to come back. T Rob, if you're listening, mate, get yourself a pro buggy. Heck, we'll even allow you to get into a trophy truck and come on back because, man, there's a guy that has talent by the bucket loads. And uh, just such an enigma here at Fink. But yeah, oh, oh, wow, a bit of over, go under. under. Yep, that's a wild little pass there. Again, the long Polaris taking on the Can Am. Nice line there, nice and high on the berm for the Polaris. Yeah, well, he definitely licked the stamp and sent it there. That was a, a great pass, and I love seeing these passes in the side-by-side -side category here at Fink and Prologue. It's Prologue, and we're seeing passes. So, again, this is how, how tight um, these side-by-sides are, and I love 
because they let off that throttle in the absolutely it's um I, it's lovely that, yeah, that turbo kane, whistle is, is nice it is absolutely <laughs> kane jones there in the 657 with justin thompson hey josh there's a name that i haven't seen for a bit 670 is uh stuart zelinski the madman in the brumby is now racing in side by side so if anyone's seen the gold well you would have seen it on the live feed there was plenty of footage of the gold brumby stuart was a class eight stalwart so running in that so Stuart in that uh, in that Brumby used to regularly spank Kent Battle. So are we calling it now, mate? Is he going to spank Kent Battle in the side by side in that uh, that number in that element machine that Kent races? Beautifully turned out six liter. I'll emphasize that six liter Chev. But uh, beautifully. No be I don't think it has. There's a. I got an inkling that Kent doesn't run turbos on his vehicle. Gotcha. But yes, yeah, Stuart used to regularly spank Kent in the Class Eight battle. So. Hey, that might be a little battle within a battle that we're looking for this weekend. I like it. I like it. The 695, I think it is now, coming around through the track. Nice run there. Again, the JSW boys. They've been racing in this side-by-side -side category now for a long time. A beautiful-looking car. And again, another Polaris off the line. So again, plenty of side-by-sides racing up and down this track. And we're actually going to throw now to the pits with one of our races for the 649, I believe it is. I hope you guys are loving the prologue morning because we are loving being down here and amongst it with the drivers and the riders and of course all the family and friends that make this event happen. Troy Daly, now you have a very, very cool story because you are attempting to do the double this year, the double Fink. Why on earth are you doing this to yourself? Uh, why not? We'll give it a crack, see how we go. Involve everybody and yeah, we'll just see how we go. Can't, uh, can't hurt. It's probably going to hurt me more than anything <laughs> else, but anyway. No, we're, we're laughing and being jovial, but you've got a pretty significant backstory that got you here in the first place. So just give us a bit of a, a bit of your story and what led you to coming to think for the first time in 2017. Yeah, didn't have a great deal of time. I got a terminal cancer. Didn't have a great deal of time to uh, keep going, so we had to start ticking the bucket list pretty quick. But it's been extended a little bit now, so we thought we'd do the double and uh, give that a crack. Why not? Now, yeah. you just told me that that first thing you did, you had chemo that morning and then you went out on the bike and completed it. Yeah. And you were not just completed it, you did it really well. I mean, yeah. just talk us through that, that experience. Yeah, ideally probably not the best uh, start up to it, but yeah, a bit of a long race, but we, um, we got it done and got it finished. And yeah, I mean, it was a long way, I can tell you. I didn't even actually know how long the race was, but uh, it was 226 k's, I know now. <laughs> <laughs> and then you've got to come back as well. Uh, so just how's your health at the moment? Where are you at with that? No, nah, we're all looking pretty good at the moment. So hopefully good enough to do the double. So no, nah, we're all looking really good at the moment. So just shows you can keep going. Don't give up. That's, that's such awesome news to hear. Now, logistically, how's this going to work? How are you going to get back and forth the whole way uh, on the buggy and on the bike? So we get down there on the buggy, and then we've got our we've got our we've bought a pilot and we've hired a plane, and we're going to uh, fly back to the start. I'll have the bike over at the airstrip, and it's registered, and then uh, straight on the bike back over here. Kelsey's going to hold the race up if we have to, <laughs> and we're off. And uh, prologue, you've literally just got out of the car from prologue. How was it for you? Felt great, felt awesome. Probably, yeah, I don't know how we went, but we'll go over and have a look, but uh, as good as we could go anyway. Now, your navigator, Bruce Navigator, um, you were talking Troy up before. Obviously, he's talking himself down a little bit. He, he goes all right out there. He goes bloody good, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and your job for the weekend? Uh, I'm Navi, so, and Tro and uh, Harry's here too. That We've got two Navvies, yep. yep. So making sure that he knows where he's going. It's 226 yeah, yeah. kilometres. And keeping him, keeping him pumped up. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much for telling your story, guys. Good luck over the weekend. Enjoy it. I really hope it's a success for you. Good on you. Thanks very much. Josh, I think what's so cool about that is to see the motorbike guys transitioning. That's a common theme that we're going to see a bit this weekend. And again, I think, you know, they've got that famous saying, everyone knows it, with age comes a cage. It's true of most riders. You know, you get a little bit older and you start looking at, you know, how can I be involved in the sport? But with daily doing the double and everything else, that is an amazing achievement. And, you know, under the circumstances, what an absolute legend. And for everyone rallying around him and making it happen, you can just see how excited. Like the navigator there, he's just pumped up, isn't he? He's having a good time. So the guys are, are ticking another one off the bucket list. And that's what, for many people, think is all about. Obviously, it's very competitive at the top of the ranks. But then there's plenty of guys that are here to make sure that they have the best time and grin ear to ear. And listen, do as well as they can within themselves too. That's a, that's a big thing. Like... 
you know, sometimes you've got your own goals. It might not be the stand on the podium. It might be, hey, sneak inside that top 10. That's what, hey, get a class win, you know, get a class top three, whatever that, you know, might be. And, uh, yeah, it's just such an amazing race out here with so many things going on. As we see another one of our side-by-sides coming on into the stadium area. Again, lots of the guys, uh, for logical reasons, I want to say, it's nice and cold out here. You don't want to go through the water. But that is cutting that apex. Now, what's going to be interesting is to see once our, you know, pro lights, pro cars, all those sort of things start coming out, are those guys going to risk it for the biscuit? Are they going to send that cut? Because that is an interesting corner. Josh, do you want to tell us that? No. <laughs> I was just going to stir him up there because he has a bit of experience with that corner, uh, my younger brother there. He uh, he had a little bit of an incident. What year was that? 14 or no, 12, 13, something 13, like that? Mate. 13. 13. Hey, producer, can we just cut Dan's mic? Uh, <laughs> can we cut it off, please? So knows that corner very well. It can be uh, quite slow. Well, actually, it was the corner before that one that really got us. But the long story short is... It was the whole know, prologue. Are you, <laughs> whole prologue, okay, <laughs> whole exactly. Prologue. So, but the moral of the story is that when you cut in there, you're really chasing that inside, outside. You're like you're chasing the apex corners. And right at the moment, there's the water sitting on that track. We don't have real bright sunshine out. I don't imagine that's going to change. But that's the fast line. So are we going to see people commit to it or is it going to set them off? I, I think people, uh, I think once we get into our pro lights, I think the, the delvage of, of playing with that corner, and I think people are going to be watching that corner as well. I think it's it's all about, when you get into that section, you're coming in so hot and you're right on and the car's really unsteady. Mm. So it's, it does create quite a bit. And, you know, Toby's had issues there. Um, Jack Rhodes famously flipped it, was at the back of the grid and decided to just drive through and got third, I think, in the end um, from that. So, yes, that corner um, is, is a big issue and it's it's going to be interesting to see once we get into those those higher-powered vehicles who actually takes that line and wants to play with that, uh, that scary corner. No, well, I totally agree. Well, I think that's going to be the interesting part as well is the guys in the bigger cars that you talk about that are going to have to play with that corner, they're not going to know. They're going to have to make that decision on the fly as they get there. Because you know, by the time the the pro buggies get out and the the trophy trucks get out, there's going to be a hundred something cars over that course. So they're not going to they're not going to know whether that that inside line, whether that water's been cleared off or not. So it's going to be interesting to see what the first couple of cars do. Yeah, it's an interesting one. So, do we, you know, just just talking about it, do they have spotters over there? Do you think, Josh, if you if you're being serious about it, like particularly if you're like coming at the the back of the the pack, you know, you're starting to say, okay, well, I need someone in place to be uh, ready to tell me what's going on. You know, the likes of Toby Watley and that sort of thing. You know, are they saying, okay, well, Toby cut that corner. I'm cutting that corner as well. You know, again. Uh, I think that's something that people are going to play with. There's a lot of information getting around now, and that's going to be one that's very interesting to see what happens. Righto, we'll, we'll throw to messages at the moment. We've had a great morning so far, and there's plenty of action up and down the field. It's going to be interesting to see where this all lands us at the end of the side-by-sides. Oh. Think your mate's a good value? you should check out venue mode. When the green light is activated, you're on tab tour. So you'll get access to exclusive markets and offers just for heading to your local. Venue mode, only on your tab app. Tab, long may we play. have been tough. Here at Imparja, we want to help our customers get back to business and reconnect with their own customers. Television viewing levels are at an all-time high, so now is the time to reach out through TV. And to make it easy, we offer complete commercial production and airtime solutions tailored to your specific needs. Our advertisers have been advertising with us for years, and that says something. Whether you've used Imparja previously or are new to our station, give us a call. We'd love to help.
Looking good, race five. Bailey's burger joint might not look like much, but it's here where I experience the greatest racing live from across Australia and around the world. With Play Central on the Tabba, you get unlimited access to Sky One, Sky Two, and Thoroughbred Central. And you can bet whilst you watch, anywhere you like, even with a double patty and a side of fries. The special isn't bad either. Play Central, only on the Tabba. Tab, long may we play. We're here to race. We're here to win. We're not here to watch you. We're traveling at speeds up to 180 kilometers per hour. That's 50 meters per second. If we hit you, we're both gone. The facts are simple. Another serious spectator injury could end the race for good. Don't stand on the outside of corners. Read and observe all safety signs. And stay at least 20 meters back from the track side at all times. Don't be the reason. Don't be the reason. I've always kind of been drawn to bugs. I've always wanted a bug, and the first bug I ever got was actually a shell. That sparked the OG bug, and since then, uh, I guess I've never really strayed away from the, the bug platform, the look, the, uh, the vibe, the feel. It's just something, I guess, from being from San Diego has always kind of uh, hooked me since day one, and uh, I don't think there's no turning back. <laughs> Here we go. The 6182 just came off across the line. But I tell you what, what I'm excited about is on the line is the 120 of Brady Martin. The little Jimco. 
I tell you what, this Martin family, they've got plenty of history racing here and further abroad. Craig Martin, his father, multi-time Australian champion. And uh, both the brothers very fast in the pro light, although I'm very excited to see what Dale does. He's just sold his little Tatum pro light. And so hopefully we see him. He might dare step into that alpha that they own. That is one of the sexiest pro buggies known to man, built out of by Gene Towler and a few of the team over there at Alpha Race Cars. The 634, now the P-plate. That means that he's out here doing his first couple of races, so exciting, and that is actually a rule that they've got to run the P-plate. So the 634, obviously getting into the sport for the uh, first sort of time. Again, Robert Kirkhoffs. And it's a nice looking car. Well, it's set up to the suspension working its way through. Again, a few minutes to go. We were talking about this in between. We can hear Brady Martin clearing the throw to that V6. I desperately want to call it a turbo V8, but it's definitely not any of these things. It is a little Jimco Pro Light. Australian spec chassis, so it's got all the good stuff, essentially just missing the turbos. And uh, But, mate, he's come third outright in this race before, so, you know, something to keep a good eye on. Again, those Martins, they go so hard, it's not funny. And Brent is going to hold it on here. But again, the 634 coming across the line now, pumped up for that run. Again, the Kirkhoffs in the 2017, they just run a 6.02, which is a great time. Again, remembering that it's one of his early races here. Again, still plenty of six cars coming through. And again, Brent Martin is going to be one of the first cars off the line. Then we've got Jason Richards. Unfortunately, not that Jason Richards. Another Jason Richards in a little Shenny, the 119, the 177, Mel Brandel. That's an Illumi craft. The 135. Now, this is the one I was talking about as well. This Pro Light is going to be an amazing race because Andrew Moles, D stroked BMW. Have a listen to it. 11,000 RPM. Yes, you heard me right. That is a crazy bit of gear. And then the 115 of Alexander Howes. Listen, oh, how can I stop at this list as I go down? 123 is Matthew Burrows. That's Mark Burrows' relation. You know, these boys are uh, out here running a Jimco as well in the 123. Again, I keep looking over because I get excited every time I hear that that little pro light of Brent Martin. He's just clearing its throat, making sure it's got all those netties ready because he's going to be set to full kill here in a very short while. The 687. Now, this is one of those earlier Bombardier ones, the K&Ms. This is what they first came out with. This, So this is a good show. If you're looking along at home on the live stream, this is one of the early K&M offerings. So, you know, it was only six or seven years ago that this was the most competitive K&M that we had, and it's still a great car. There's no question. But you can see it's short. It's You know, it's designed for a purpose. And now that they've gone, as soon as they release that X3 chassis with the big motor, that was a big step up for K&M. And Polaris and K&M have essentially gone to manufacture war from there as we set the lights and the sights to the pro light brent martin off the line the v6 3.5 naturally aspirated jimco screaming there as the 120 have a look he will not dip the throttle here for quite some time again the 677 making its way through the prologue track that's les shivers Beautifully looking turned out again. Aglamo oil car. And then the 651 of Stephen Grant will also be making his way into the stadium very quickly. But again, that's why we do the gaps to the pro light or between the classes. Brady Martin is going to be very fast here. Yeah, absolutely, Dan. I think he's going to be one of those guys that is maybe not in prologue, but I think he's a, he's a very smart driver. And, you know, he... I'm not saying he won't be up there in prologue, but he's going to be very close to it. As we hear Jason Richards in the 1-1-9 one, one, get himself off the start line as well. You can probably hear that noise coming through the microphones as we also, there we go, we've cut to the 1-1-9. One, one, so these pro lights, you're going to see a step up in speed now, I think, Dan. I think it's safe to say that our, our top times are probably going to start to tumble a little bit. Like we said, that's no disrespect to some of those, uh, those smaller cars. Yeah, Josh, now a number of these cars are ex-pro buggy cars, aren't they? That's Danny Brown's old Shanny that uh, Jason Richards, or I believe it is, and that was a turbo car that used to run the 42 number and uh, under ARB guys with Danny Brown. Danny Brown's been through a couple of cars now, had a Jimco, and now he's switched over and he's got that beautiful four-wheel drive Alumicraft buggy coming. And I tell you what, that one is one that I'm ready to drool over. 
Shame that he's not here at the moment. But Danny Brown, if you're listening, mate, get back to Fink. We want to see you here. Well, Mel Brandle uh, going to catch the line next up. And these pro lights are going to start to come in thick and fast. And once they hit that back section, they hit that gate, they hit those warps, that's where we're all going to start to see it. Absolutely. Now, he is in a heck of a good car as well. This Alubacraft, uh, originally built by the Owens, and then handed over possession to the Swaffields and a lot of a lot of effort put into the motor of this thing, this car and the suspension development, this car being a multi-time class champion here at Fink as well. So there's a lot of pedigree in this uh, in this Pro Light. Interesting with the Pro Light, Josh, you can hear him clutch kicking that. So not a torque converter car. So where they're chasing every bit of horsepower, because I, I don't think I'm giving any secrets away, the Pro Lights, they're sort of pushing, say, let's say between 370 and the big dogs are like maybe 450. Like 450 is a pretty serious number out of a 3.5 NA V8. Again, running V6 stack, as well. Sorry, V6, sorry. I did mean V6. But, you know, uh, well, talk about the, the motors here. This is the D-stroked one coming up of Andrew Moles, local Northern Territory Hellman. Yeah, so a 3.5 litre D-stroked BMW V8. You can hear this thing as oh. we wait for the green flag and he's off and look at the roost on that thing this thing is sounding insane yeah i just had to stop for a second and listen to the aurora of that bmw powered pro light this is what you do when you uh you know you're sick of the the same old same old you come out and go do you know what i need a d-stroked bmw motor it is a super impressive bit of gear and he's another one mate you're going to see him not just inside the top 10, the top five. He's stood on the podium. It's going to be a wild time. Looks like the dust might be clearing and, you know, we're starting to move through now. Joshua, it's not going to be long. Again, I did the old Joshua. I can just say it any time, can't I? Yeah. We're going to have these cars come through the whoops here anytime soon. And I tell you what, they are going to attack these rollers. The crowd, look at it starting to roll in. Ali Howell's on the line now. Got the five seconds up. We're going to take off. Here we go. Brady Martin on the way into the stadium. He's gone out wide on the other side of that water. So there you go. That tells you that they're avoiding it. But Ali Howell's in that Jimco off the line as well now. The 115 as the 120 is inside the stadium area. Brent Martin, have a look at him. Have it a red hot crack. Ex motorbike boys as well, the Martins, they've all had experience riding the high line on berms, and that shows when they've made the transition over to off road racing. Getting a little squirrely there is Brent Martin in the 120. So, this is what we we're talking about. These guys are racing for positions. They would like nothing more to be inside that top 10 for prologue and give them as dust free as possible a run. But that's going to be hard when you're in a 450 horsepower car that is competing against 800 or even those big turbo cars set to kill which again i don't think i'm telling any secrets there's rumors of over a thousand horsepower of those twin turbo v6s so brady martin absolutely flying and i'm going to tell you the time here in a second it is a 454 so we're down into the fours ladies and gentlemen with brady martin sending it very hard matthew burrows is at the wheel of the one, two, three with Mark Burrows in the uh, passenger seat. Now, interesting thing to note, and I did know this because it was a Holden turbo car. They pulled the turbos off it, I imagine, because that is a Holden V6 powered car. Got the old alloy tech, bit of nang nang. Who doesn't love a bit of mang mang, especially here in the Alice? I know uh, the burnout pad behind us does get a couple of V6s out there, so it's great to see him out on the Fink track as well as Jason Richards makes his way into the stadium section here, catching a bit of a high line there. Yeah, a little Shinoeth. And I tell you what, that's a beautiful turned out car. And I think that it's a great choice for a pro light. They were very popular back in the day. Shannon Wrench used to run one of these cars as well, which is now at the hands of Tony Falaba. But, you know, these cars have run right up the pointy end of the field and they're the right weight for a pro light car. They've got plenty of suspension travel. Now, next off the line. The 147 of Glenn Collins. I tell you what, Dan, I don't know which way to look. We've got Glenn Collins leaving the line. Jason Richards flying across the finish line here. You can see that that step up in competition as we get to pro light. These are guys that, like we said, they're a little bit limited in their horsepower. They're 3.5 litres, naturally aspirated, but suspension wise, chassis wise, everything like these, these cars are as high tech as you can get uh, anywhere in the world. So these guys want to put on a, a good show and they want to battle. They want to be up there, you know, pushing into that top 10 as we see the 177 Alumacraft there. 
a pretty good run there around through these uh, sweeping horseshoes into the final straight here along the finish line. Josh, you know what's got me excited. It just shows how fast those little 10 cars are. Yeah. That 10 car yep, that still... ran a 503 is actually faster than Jason Richards. Wow. And just to clarify, Jason Richards is fast. Fun. So that's not a yeah, that, that's crazy to think how quick those 10 cars are these days. Again, a beautiful chassis and well sorted. Uh, Jason Richards running through at the 506 there. Angus Mackay off the line now in the 182. Again, we're keeping a good eye on all of these cars. As Brandall makes his way across the line, we'll wait for the time to come up on the timing screen. And that puts him, uh, her, sorry, Mel, uh, currently in seventh position with a 5.15. So, uh, Brett Martin, your man to be oh, with a 4.54. Hey, hey, sorry to cut you off there, but Andrew Mould's got a little loose and went over the back of the berm. He's running the very lo long line around the outside. I saw it. I actually thought that he was having tyre issues, but he wasn't. He was just up way high on the berm, and he's fallen over the top there. So the 135, I think, was on an absolute cracker. But unfortunately, that will cost Andrew Moles. So the 135, keep an eye on there. We're going to have a look at the time because he probably dropped four or five seconds, uh, unfortunately, running off the back of that berm. Weir's off the line as well, Jack and Tim. So again, I'm keeping a tight eye on where does that put Andrew Moles? He ran a 5.04, Ooh, so that would have put wow. him right in the mix. So that's how close it was. Yep. And unfortunately, that little slip up, Ali straight through the mud. She didn't worry about it. The 115. So again, that track, as they start cutting through that water, is now actually going to dry out. So that line's going to get faster and faster as the day goes on. They'll start moving it around. So that's interesting that that's already started happening. And again, Ali Howes, you can see the navigator. Go, go, go. Let's make this happen. The 115. Again, great shots brought to us by the team here at Fink Desert Race. And if you are listening along on the YouTube live feed, welcome this morning. We've uh, hit our stride here. The weather is absolutely gorgeous. The cloud coverage is actually keeping the warmth in, although people probably out in the crowd are going, mate, you're in a commentary box, you're a liar. Moral of the story is I don't think it's as bad as previous years. And if you're thinking about coming out to, uh, from Alice, because obviously you're not going to drive from Rockhampton or Brisbane, but, you know, get on, come on out, because the weather's turned nice and we've got some big dogs and about that, to bark. And that is the uh, the final pro light, the 149, Harry Weckert, across, off the start line, as we see Ali come across the, uh, the finish line as well. So that's our third place holder in the Australian Championship at the moment. Yeah, she ran a 5.17 too, so she's right up there. Sarah just fist pumping from our spot in the, uh, the the commentary box. We could see them just pumping as they were going across. So the 123, again, the Burroughs entry. This car knows its way around the Fink Prologue. Absolutely, and what a family history as well. His father, Mark Burroughs, the first man to actually win Fink outright in the vehicle. So this was back in 1999. They still used to compete with the, uh, the cars and the, the bikes. They used to actually have a an overall winner as well. Um, so the fastest time between the cars and the bikes. So, you know, family history, family pedigree. That's one of the great things about Fink. It's an off-road race that's been going for a lot longer than you and I, and, and Josh has been alive. So there's a lot of history here at the Fink. Well, it wasn't that long ago that they celebrated their 40th. So I think we're probably around 45 or 46 years of running now. Yeah, it's, it's crazy to think that uh, this race has got that much pedigree. And again, as a motorcycle race and as a off-road car race now. And, you know, again, like you said, that rivalry was very real between the cars and bikes. The cars have had the advantage now with the horsepower for a little while. But, yeah, amazing. And, again, we're going to get on the line with Bentley. They'll still have a couple of minutes now until they leave. But the 147 coming around through the stadium area. Glenn Collis, great run through there. Yeah, these guys are definitely putting on a show. Prolite currently with, um, sorry, Alexandra Howes with a fifth, uh, five minute and 17 second uh, time in the end there. And Matthew Burrow, Burrow sorry, with a 5.25. So we're sitting around that five minute mark. Um, but the, the pros and I think Hayden Bentley uh, will... Uh, Drop below that uh, 450 mark. I think we're going to see around about the mid-40s. 
Yeah, listen, it's it's absolutely a possibility, particularly with these four-wheel drive trucks. It's going to be interesting. One name there that I'm excited to see is Phil Lovett. Phil Lovett is a motorbike legend, and I mean a legend of the sport, I think, and he's been coming for years back in the 500 two-stroke days and racing KDMs and bits and pieces, and, uh, you know, he's now stepped up. He was in a Can-Am because he is the dealer down there, and I think it's Singleton, I think, Josh, but I'm, I'm not really sure, but the 897 Phil Lovett is actually, he bought that trophy truck on a deal off Brett Kamil none other than Comiskey. I'm pretty sure he's owned pretty much every car on the line out here at the moment. But old Brady doesn't mind uh, buying and selling a few cars. He had this four-wheel drive racer truck. It was actually turbocharged big block. Phil has bought that, pull it out, put a six liter in it. So it's going to be very interesting to see how that goes. And uh, again, an all-wheel drive truck, how it goes this weekend. Yeah, it should be interesting as we see the one of our other pro lights coming through there as well. The guys having a good run. You see they blasted it up onto that berm there. So a lot of commitment there from the uh, the 182. That's Angus McKay. As we see them over these couple of little rollers just to unsettle the car as they've got to set it up for this sweeping corner. But no lift there. It's held flat the whole way across the finish line. I tell you, those little V6s absolutely screaming. Yeah, and the other one that I'm interested to see is um, the Weirs. You know, Jack Weir is always fast out here in the 155. He's in that pro light, and he's always inside that top 10 area. So, again, probably not in prologue due to horsepower, but he's a consistent finisher and a fantastic card. So I'm excited to see where he goes. Here it is on screen right now, the 155. These guys have got plenty of kilometres down the Fink track. And again, nice sedate drive, I'm going to say. I'm sure it's not sedate in the car, but I think that he's picking good lines. As again, we see those cars snaking in. That'll be Harry Wykett in the back there. And Josh, I see that Harry's car is actually an SS Race Tech car, which is very cool. Built out of South Australia, the boys. they do, Yeah, and a very unique look. It gives you that radius roll, the 149. So the SS boys, excited to see that car. They've had some serious success recently with these cars that they've been building. And one of their pro lights out here. So big shout out to those guys if they're listening along. Scott Schiller. Yes, yes, SS, Scott Schiller. That's the only behind it. But also very competitive man in a car himself. So a, a, a builder and a driver. So great to see that uh, Lockie Weir get across as we eagerly await to see the time from Harry Weckart there. As we hear the revs start to build on the 818, the Hayden Bentley machine, that racer engineering four-wheel drive trophy truck a Nissan GDR motor, D-stroked twin turbo. Tell you what, must have some custom parts in that car because D-stroker kits for those 3.8s, probably not a real popular option, but that's the level of commitment that these guys are going to, getting custom, one-off built stuff for their cars. Yeah, super impressive. And again, the four-wheel drive thing, we talk about it quite a bit, Josh. Like. It is some extra weight, it is some extra components, but the traction that they get in corners, the corner speed that they can run, I think that's going to be one of those things that's very interesting. Now, interesting, my run sheet says that Phil Lovett wasn't in this position, but I think this is a good choice. Phil Lovett, plenty of experience. They've moved him up the run sheet, and uh, I think that's a great choice there in that racer engineering Sorry, truck. One thing I'm just interested in, Phil being an absolute hell man on a bike, known for racing his Can-Am still with an open face helmet. Can you see, Dan, is he running an open face helmet in that car? It looks like oh, it to me, mate. Yeah, yeah. He is. Yeah, yeah. so you will not, that, mate, that is old school Hellman there, an open faced helmet in a four wheel drive trophy truck. That is something you are not gonna see anywhere else other than Phil Lovett and the Tat Spink Desert Race here at the Method Race Wheels Prologue. Or in the 90s with Ivan Ironman Stewart, because he sent it out. But you're absolutely right, mate. Hey, look at that crowd. Wow. Every time we look, that fence is absolutely packed. Cars are three and four deep now. And I tell you what, that's a great shot too. A bit of a sidetrack, but all those planes parked in the background. You know, everyone knows that we've had that bit of a time with COVID and whatnot. And they've all been parked up. That is a parking lot of big planes out there. But again, what a backdrop to one of the, well, the greatest race, the biggest desert race in Australia, the Tats Fink Desert Race. Again, brought to us by Method Race Wheels. A great shot of the banner there as Josh Nourish is going to be off the line. Now, what's interesting about this truck is it is an Ultra 4 underneath. Yeah, actually, both of these had the Doolins behind it too. These guys, great mates, great competitors. They've done the four-wheel driving thing. They've done the tough truck thing. And this 844 of Josh Nourish off the line, JN Motorsport, they're having a good crack at the moment. Built like 
uh, for a King of the Hammer type event over in the States. Yeah, correct? that's exactly right. So it was built out of Sydney. And they were running it in Australia. A previous owner was running it in a, uh, Australia as that style of car. It's very much like a bomber chassis is my understanding. So if you are familiar with the Ultra 4 scene, there's a guy called Randy Slawson that's been very competitive in the Ultra 4 scene. And uh, underneath is, again, I'd say a highly modified now because it's been transitioning to more class eight off-road racing but that car at some point looked like a bomber was built out of sydney by a guy that's very good friends with randy slawson again i hope i've got all that information 100 percent. i'm sure josh will tell us at some point but again i believe that's the history of that car where at doolan so this is mr diggett they were actually hardcore tough truck competitors back in the day he's raced a, a two-wheel drive trophy truck They've then built this Ultra 4 inspired off-road race car, this 886, and they are now waiting for a new trophy truck to arrive. I, I don't really know. I'll try to catch up with them later. There was some story about why they couldn't race the two-wheel drive truck. They made the decision. Maybe it was prep time and everything else and testing that they decided that they were going to run the 8 again, and they're back at Fink having a good crack in the 886. Michael well, Dolan. our eyes are peeled on that back gate. We are waiting for Hayden Bentley to make his way through. Still in the lead currently is Brent Martin in that pro light with a time of four minutes, 54.4. The best time so far. And it's around about a 10 second gap to second in the in the sports side of uh, Stephen Graham. That 503 time, absolutely blistering. But here comes Hayden Bentley into the stadium section. Let's see how he does. This tricky corner here, let's see what he does. Yeah, listen, the four-wheel drive is going to be a huge advantage here. Out wide, ducks in on the brakes and then accelerates through. No real worries there. And again, plenty of horsepower to drag that car around. You'll see the front digging. That's going to be the big difference that you see in this trophy truck. It's going to be interesting. that Again, the racer, Hayden Bentley's had a number of amazing cars. He's actually a previous Fink winner when he won in his second, uh, sorry, in his single seater is what I meant, in his racer engineering car. Used to race V8 Jimcos, made the move to the turbo cars. Again, a racer. Always been tied with the racer engineering guys. They have very fast trucks out of the States. Again, there was a moment in time, Josh, where you would not muck with a racer truck in, in qualifying. It was a very interesting time over there racing. But again, this truck looks beautiful and planted. You can see the way it digs around the corner. And again, that GDR power, look at this. This is a Lie. full display of horsepower. Wow. Damn. Yeah, that thing is very quick. There's no question. It's got all the Five horsepower. 501 there from Hayden Bentley. So um, puts him in second position so far as the next Phil Lovett comes in to that section. So again, this is another racer engineering truck. Interesting that we've got two in Australia here, but the eight, six, uh, nine, seven, so I apologize. Again, Phil moving up from the side-by-side -side category where he was extremely competitive for the last number of years. And again, an ex-bike boy where Phil was very competitive in the overall scheme of things on dirt bikes. So making the transition now into the bigger four-wheel drive truck. Now, what's interesting about this one is it is a six litre V8 that they built specifically for this truck in Australia. And it has been commonly questioned whether with all the extra parts and the weight, whether the natural aspirated V8 is quick enough for the four wheel drive system. Phil Lovett has talent by the bucket load. So this is going to be a good test for the four wheel drive trucks to see where they sit. But again, Phil and the sound, you can't beat the sound no. of a decent V8, can you? Like the turbos are cool, but the noise, have a listen to it. Sing past the commentary box. Oh. <laughs> a very cool truck there. And again, my eyes just cast over to the timing because I'm very interested. Again, as you mentioned, Bentley with a 501 just knocking on the door there of a four minute run. And Phil Lovett is through now. Josh Howell sitting on the start line now. Now, this is the man to watch in prologue turbo car, all the horsepower, very talented. Now, I doubt this is an issue, but Josh Nour Nourish has got a panel flapping here. I'd say it might just be a loose Zeus clip. I don't think they would have uh, had a moment out there or anything like that, but they definitely got the windbreak on. Yeah, that's a bit of a shame for those guys, like you said, when every tenth of a second counts, like we said at one point this morning, we had first, second and third covered by two seconds. So these guys, you know, looking for that every little bit of advantage, they've got that panel flapping off. That's a bit of a, um, 
a little bit of an error by the team there, but that's something they're going to hope to rectify and, you know, get fixed there. But I don't know, DC, the guard looks a little bit busted there. Looks like they might have had a bit of an off out through the paddock. But uh, maybe we can catch up with them a little bit later on and, and catch up on some goss and, um, and bring you all this information. Absolutely. Anything can happen in prologue. We all know that. So, But the 844 looks strong and healthy and he's running in now. So Phil Lovett and we've got Luke Stan Stanley in the passenger seat in the 897. He ran a 516. So a good position there out of the line for Phil Lovett. Again, we've got Josh Howells in the 15 on the line now waiting waiting to get his day under work. He would have his business suit on. He is ready to absolutely make his mark here. He's been very close, and I mean very close. He came in on the bumper of Toby Price. Now, Josh Norris, that six liter screaming across the line now. But Doolin is very close as well, the 886. Again, four-wheel drive trucks. You can see those long links. These are actually solid axle trucks. And again, we're keeping a good eye on the line. The 30-second board is up for Josh Howell. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you aren't on the fence already, make sure you get there because we are about to get underway with the pro buggies. Yeah, if you had to be a gambling man, Danny Curran, you would bet the house all on the fact that we are going to see our top competitor come from either Pro Buggy or Class 4, which is coming up next. So this is it, ladies and gentlemen. Jockey your way into a good position on the fence as we hear the boost build on the Howls Motorsport chip coat, that VQ35, as he clicks it up through the gears all the way along the start straight. Going to be interesting to see if he lifts for this corner. Mate, Josh doesn't lift. There's no lift in that brain. He is a madman, an ex-motorbike boy again. You're gonna hear me say that a lot. You know, with age comes a cage, they've moved on and jumped into the car class and they've been slaying it. Josh Howells and the Howells Motorsport team have had a great ride. Eric Hume back in the passenger seat for this race, which is their happy place, the yep. 15. Yep, absolutely. They, uh, you know, they've been a great competition team over the years, you know, they've formed a great relationship. But this is another car I'm excited about seeing AJ, mate, this guy, absolutely, an absolute killer behind the steering wheel. This uh, this single-seater Alumacraft got the big King shocks on there as well. Uh, mate, this thing is an absolute weapon in the rough. AJ, one of those guys that the rougher it gets, the more he seems to like it. A little bit different, it's got a twin turbo Ford Eco Boost in it, but look at that thing get off the line. Also the center seating position, like, you know, that just the one person. So reality dictates that that's obviously going to be a disadvantage if you've got to change a tire or anything like that. But Aaron James has run a heap of races here. He may be in the situation where he doesn't take a spare because if he's got to stop to change a tire, there's no point worrying about it. It is all throttle, no brakes. And Aaron James again in that single seater. Now, interestingly, Josh, I was just going to mention Michael Doolan did come through there, 886. So if you listen along at home, 551, a great run. And it is a Jimmy's 4x4 car. So, again, very interesting to see how that goes. And, again, we've got our top three, Joshua. Yes, yep. So uh, we'll just get on Matty Hanson. You can see they're holding up the 30-second board there for him. And uh, so Matty, a great competitor from Victoria, was actually all set up ready to rock and roll last year and then was held up with COVID. Oh, unfortunately, sounds like an, a little bit of an issue there. We heard no the revs way. build. We heard the revs build and then drop. So Matty slowly trying to get that car off the line. My goodness. Man. Poor Matt Hansen. If the man did not have bad luck at the moment, he would have no luck. This that is heartbreaking. That is heartbreaking to see. This guy is a prologue king. Man, those guys cannot win a trick in the seven car. SMU, if you're listening, we got your boys back. Matty Hansen is absolutely flying again. But I think man, you're going to see some drive angry. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's not ideal in any way, shape, or form to lose that time at the start. So we'll just quickly talk about our top three at the moment. We still have Brett Martin in the 1-2-0 holding top position with a 4-54. Hayden Bentley in the 8-1-8 has slipped into second place with a 5-0-1. And I tell you what, DC, we talked about it. Stephen Graham in that 10-65 still holding down third place outright as we see Shannon Ranch in this brand new Jimco Hammerhead. Oh yeah, Ooh, yeah. That's uh, that's the uh, eleven setting there, Joshua. Shannon Ranch is here to play the game. This man 
has talent by the bucket loads, and it's going to be interesting to see what he can do. Honestly, because we're bits of Jimco fans, if there was a Jimco that you'd have for the big rough stuff, it's this hammerhead. Long trailing arms, it's set up for the big stuff out of America. He has all the boost, all the horsepower, and it's got the right guy behind the Here wheel. Here comes the Josh Howes down through the gate section rolling over those rollies he's coming in quick let's see what he does in this section down along the old gan rail line here in alice springs josh howes making his way flying into this section will he cut in so what's interesting Just. is you're going to see the use of turning brakes in these buggies. So out of interest, guys, these do have single rear brakes. They'll use them like a cutting brake on a tractor. You're going to see them on the brake a lot in this stadium area. As the 23 gets off the line now, that's Peter Costello. That's a cool car too. That's an ex-Kittle car, so it's going to be very fast. Probably Toyota powered, I imagine. But again, Josh Howells is the one we're watching at the moment because this is going to be all business here for Josh Howells, making sure that he is in the right position. Next up off the line, Joshua, we got the number six of Ryan Taylor parked on the start line. But again, Josh Howells, listen, he's putting on a clinic here. He is driving neat, controlled, and using the horsepower where he can. And have a look at it. Look at the way it's spraying the dirt here. Ladies and gentlemen, Josh Howells has those thousand daddies cranked up. And he is start finish line here at the Tats Fink Desert Race. So we see the countdown for Ryan Taylor in the Method Race Wheels. Tatum there, he's our current Australian Championship leader. He's off the line, but we cut to the 93. No, we're back to the six, as that's a, uh, another one of those Nang Nang uh, Holden Commodore Motors there. So looking forward to them having a good run. And the 93, AJ, you see it picking up a little bit of a wheel there. Like we said, AJ likes that car to be set up nice and loose, fast through the rough. Ladies and gentlemen, just breaking news, 443 with a one for Josh Howells. Ladies and gentlemen, that's how you put it on the box at the moment, but there'll be plenty of people lined up to try to take a shot, take a swing, do a Mikey Tyson on it. The Jimco is right up the top, the Aussie Special. But again, we've got Ryan Taylor and Adam McGuire up the line in the Tatum AK-47, the ex-Harley Lettner, but AJ, Look at this, all the power, 93 through as well. Again, can't say this enough, we are keeping, and Glenn Owens up as well, oh, so 444 for Aaron James. This is about to get very exciting here. Glenn Owens feeding it all the biscuits off the line. Yeah, the 30. Did you hear that thing off the start line? Did it have a, a shift or a launch control? It sounded like he was able to hold his foot flat to the floor and we heard it sound like it had a little bit of a miss and then it just launched off the start line. I think that Glenn Owen has a, uh, has a shift or a, or a launch control on that car. Yeah, still a couple of big names where Aaron James there coming in, as uh, Dan said just before, there's one second in it at the moment between that top two in those pros. Josh Howes, Aaron James are split by one second. So it's anyone's game still as the next pro buggy comes in to the stadium section, Dan. Yeah, mate. I mean, that'll be uh, none other than the 33, I believe. A very fast car here with Shannon Wrench. Going to be very interesting to see where he sits in these times. Again, that beautifully turned out new car. BF Goodrich up the side. Swinglehurst off the line. And again, locked in a battle there for the championship. We heard them talk about how it's a really a competition between whether you decide. Look at that. The front wheel physically stopped there on Shannon's car as it three-wheeled around the corner. Again, there's just so much action happening. Again, if you're listening along, if you've joined in on the live stream, welcome to the big show. We are at the Tats Fink Desert Race. It is Method Race Wheels Prologue Day, and we are betting the sheep stations here today on making sure these guys get up in the top of their heaps. It's going to be an interesting one to see who the top three is. No doubt these pro buggy boys are going to be hungry. They want that dust-free run. They need that dust-free run almost to uh, make sure that they keep in front of the trophy trucks, if that's a possibility, because there is a gaggle of trophy truck guys that want that top step. As Shannon Wrench powers over the top of the line. Costello, two in the 23, coming in in the Jimco. Shannon Wrench, what a pace. 
So a 4.57 there as well. That's a great run there. Again, these guys cracking into this four. But it is still Josh Howells, a 4.43 with a one. That is a very quick time. Two wheeling a little bit for Costello again too. He's really dipping into that berm. Oh, up on two wheels there for Costello, nearly getting it over. Going to be very, very interesting as he continues through the stadium section. As you said, a ex-Kittle car, so a very, very pedigree card here at Fink. Tyler Owen off the start line has got the board as well, as we still get some fantastic shots here of this Costello car going around the line. But the 41 Alumicraft car, the big V8. Beautiful turned out car in that yellow. And Costello now, all the power over the line as these guys run to our famous start finish line. Now, sorry to interrupt there, DC, but just having a little bit of a look back through last year's time. Josh Howe last year, a 4.43. So the exact same time as last year. So we've had a bit of a talk about the different track conditions, but we talk about Ryan Taylor on track. Yeah, amazing stuff here. Again, Ryan Taylor, our current Australian points leader in the championship. We talked about him, whether he, uh, how he fits in and how this race works in because the Fink is the big one. But I tell you what, we're going to throw to Rihanna down there. How's it all going? Energy starting to lift. We are now into the pointy end of the method wheels for a long You want to get yourself to the edge of the fence. You want to get yourself in a position to see these these guys hit the track. Uh, what we've been walking around down in pit lane. It's been such a cool uh, vibe down there and seeing everyone. Righto. Unfortunately, a little bit of a uh, technical issue there with the sound, but no dramas as we see Glenn Owen throttling down through there we saw ryan taylor josh come through with a 501 that's actually a great position for be starting out of obviously he'd love to be down in that four but it's a it's a good position for our current points champion now i am very interested where glenn owen puts himself because this is one of those guys we keep talking about it but he is here for nothing other than think glory there is coming in no hot. yeah have a look at that pace coming around that corner in the 30. Very interested to where that puts him. The 74 to off the line now. 4.54 for that time. So that's a great time. Jacob both off the line now in the X Sporties buggy. He's another young bloke to watch in the pro class. He is going to have his foot to the floor no matter what. I know he's not fighting for no championship out here this weekend but the 49 making its way into the stadium section now. Yeah, another one of our great competitors, Jake Swinglehurst. So that's going to be interesting. So actually just having a look at the times, Glenn Owen with that 4.54 has by point, what is that? Point zero, three. zero, point three of a second. So like we're talking splits of splits by point three, they've just pushed um, Brett, Martin. Brett Martin out of third position on the podium at the moment for our prologue. So Glenn Owen is right there at the moment. Again, trophy trucks are coming. Yeah, that's right, Dan. But we talk about Jake Swinglehurst. He's on the line as well. I'll tell you what, another one of these great method-sponsored cars. He is walking that thing in across the finish line. That is a great run there. So awesome to see that uh, not only is Method Race Wheels sponsoring the prologue in itself, they also sponsor individual races as well. As we see uh, the, the 44 machine, that's Elphinstone, Western Australia. So these guys have come all the way from Western Australia to get here to the Fink Desert Race. Yeah, also the 95 of Brett Rogers and Brett Richardson was off the line in that Ritz Racing frame. So the guys with the Chevy six liter, that's the noise you can hear in the background. There's some very cranky V8 cars sitting on the line now, getting ready for their chop at this prologue track. But Elphinstone came second by splits at the last round, at round two at Poon Carey. So Elphingstone, I believe that's an ex-Robinson car, Joshua. So he's uh, made the step up. He's had a number of cars, but this car is a beautiful Jimco. Again, a Western Australia car, and it's done very well here in the past. So keep a good eye on the 44 of Shane Elphingstone. He's looking for championship points. Turnbull off the line now. So one of the interesting things about that car, Dan, you talked about earlier with the Pro Lights 
and that clutch kick off the start line. Well, you heard that with the Turnbull machine as well. So it still runs a clutch rather than a torque converter. So they're still manual gearboxes, but they run a, a torque converter much like an automatic to help uh, take a little bit of punishment out of the drive line. As we see uh, Tyler Owen here in the 41 machine. Yeah, beautiful little turned out of Lumicraft car. Again, we're talking about these Prolog cars, Josh. No spare on that one either. Running them as light as possible. Again, more so with the trophy trucks. It's going to be interesting to see the guys running different tyre combinations. You know, we already heard Bo's got to run 35s for the actual qualifying and then run 40s at the actual race. Again, completely acceptable. A lot of guys do mild suspension changes and bits and pieces lower their car for the prologue track because there's not those massive i mean there's big rolling whoops but it's not those massive von Duma whoops uh we have heard again we're talking to Flo before he's talking about some big hits down there further down it's going to rough up as the 996 is off the line now that's stephen phillips and again as tyler human throttles down 504 for tyler human that's a great time as well oh i didn't even tyler see him. owen owen sorry i did I say human? Yes. I apologise, Tyler Owen. And then uh, the 31 of Kent Battle is off the line as well. Heath Lawson, this is an element buggy again, a frame that I'm absolutely in love with. The guys down there, the Havies building these cars. And I tell you what, if you're looking for a top level Australian car, there's an, that whole area down south is just rife with performance buggies. Kent Battle, uh, one of our northern competitors, Got the six liter built by Brinks Performance. And I tell you what, he puts a few videos up every now and then, and that thing sounds very cranky. Yeah, absolutely right, Dan. A cool car, we were talking about it before. 100% Australian built. Every component on this car is out of Australia. The Albert's gearbox, the Brinks built Chev, the uh, the computer system that he runs in, and the element frame, as we see, another element frame. Yeah, and they are beautifully turned out cars. Again, the 52 off the line, that's Royden Bailey. So again, great shot of two element cars. It doesn't get any more Australian Oi, Aussie, than that. Aussie, Aussie. Exactly. So no, it's a beautiful time. The North Trans guys will be very happy with that. It was a nice clean run as they put it through for a 5.18. Well, here comes young Boothy, the Alice Springs local. He's got Sam Glotter in the passenger seat there. So two Alice locals, young, hard working men out here for a play in the pro buggy class. This young kid has insane amount of car control and does not lift look at him come through this stadium section and i can tell you down towards the start finish line it's going to be on song yeah mate porter cars that was an era in in off-road racing that you know like these cars were true top of the level american baja cars and it's interesting so it's very cool to see that that's an interesting little car the 58 the single seat of ivan schmocker it's actually a Southern Cross Element combo. It's a, it's an interesting car. It has a very unique look. And again, the 95 coming back into the stadium. Jacob Booth making his way to the line. He's going to keep his foot flat in it. Let's see what time he does. It's going to be interesting. His second Fink, 5.23 there for Jacob Booth and Samuel Galotta, which puts them currently in P27. And that's a nice spot to be in, honestly. It's a good position. You can run out of that. We've had some very good results where we've seen guys come from that top 30, top 40 position. And uh, that's going to be interesting to see where he ends up overall at the end of the weekend. Again, a solid car that knows its way around Fink. And that's half the battle too. A reliable car, a V8. There's a lot of good things going on in those quarter cars. And 68 off the line now. Yeah, that's Craig Barnett in that... Uh that gym code there looks like it's a six liter chev as well sorry mate I, I don't think it's a jimco isn't it a southern cross i believe that car so it's a southern cross frame yes sorry my bad i was picking the wrong car that's all right mate we'll forgive you this one time if i hear it again you meet car back now <laughs> but a very cool car off the line with barnett and again got the ls2 the six liter chevy it's going to be a very popular motor choice the old ls you, you know, it's basically Alice the world, isn't it? Limiter Springs here in Alice, across uh, back here on the burnout pad, I can tell you that. Um, we love a little bit of that. A little bit of valve float? <laughs> yeah, a little bit of valve float. As uh, sounds like the number 28 is getting ready to start off another one of our young Alice local, Shane Greening, this time. Um, the man is going to try and beat the time of Timothy Button in that Super 1650. Those two are going to be very competitive, but the uh, father and son team, Sun Driving, 
this one this weekend. So great to see Shane out here and the Greening family out here as well as Turnbull crosses the line. We'll see what time he uh, puts through. It's a five minute and 10 second pass. I love it, mate. Did you see the clutch kick from Turnbull halfway around the berm? See, that's something that you can't do in a in a uh, converter car. That's a man that does not give a crap about CVs and axles right yep. there. And I like yep. it. He's I confident. Like it. I like it. And it does. It sounds great. As the 996 now makes its way into the stadium section. Again, we've got that awesome grandstand seating. Look at the crowd just completely packed there between the stadium area. Now, one of the interesting facts about this 996, this Pro Buggy, it's actually a D-stroked Cadillac V8 to 3.5 litres with twin turbos. So I tell you what, have a bit of a listen as this thing comes across the finish line. It's going to be absolutely screaming on boost. Now, off the line now is Weston in the 61. That's Cooper Weston, the youngest Weston. So That's right. We talk about some great Australian-built cars, and then we talk about the Western cars as well. Great to see them out there having a bit of a run, like doing a good job. Yeah, the 61, Mickey Thompson sponsored, and those guys have been over and raced Baja and done all sorts of things. Again, the Western family, particularly Chris, is uh, steeped in off-road racing history, and it's cool to see Co uh, Cooper come through as well. This is another one of these element frames coming around now, the 52. I really love the livery on that. It's a good color combination. The car looks great. Although, is that trees in the front A-arm there? These guys might have had a couple of moments out the back, I'd say, looking at that. Maybe just collected firewood for later tonight. It is going to be cold, Joshua. Yes. It is going to be cold. So, especially down Apatula end. So, off the line now, it looks like the 30. Actually, it might be the 38. Is that David Beavis? No, 60. Brent Lewis, Superboot, RV2. Gee, it's a bit hard to see some of these smaller cars. They, they've gone to the very colourful na nameplates on them. And so the number that you're looking for there with David Beavis, Dan, is 38. Correct, correct. So just while we're talking about David Beavis, David Beavis, also one of those bike riders, multiple top 20 finishes here at the Fink Desert Race and has now made the switch over to four wheels. Yeah, very cool. So Brett Lewis off the line again. And that'll be David Beavis off the line now. So, you know, I was close. I was close. But again, Element come through. Oh, Baranky V8 in that one. As the dust flies at the start-finish line. And then the 58 coming through as well. Again, the single-seater thing. That's an interesting thing. If, again, there was a moment in time where everyone was running that single seat. But they've now got a, you know, it's always popular and good times to have your mates So just board. a little bit of info too about uh, Royd and Bailey there in that element, that twin turbo V6 element, their first race as well. And it's something a little bit different as well, running a Toyota V8 as well. Now here's some sad news, guys. We, we look down the track a little bit, it'll probably come into frame. We see the Hanson car under tow. That's bitterly disappointing. He was one of the guys that I was, uh, I was betting was going to lay down a great lap as we see... One of the original Element cars come through. Now, that 58 machine, Dan, I believe that that is actually... Um, I've gone blank here. Haby. Aaron Habies. Original. original. Original Element car. So that car there, a lot of history in off-road racing here yes, in Australia. Ivan Schmocker. Um, yeah, and that's the car that has that a crazy photo of it at Millison, where it's just absolutely floating through the air. So again, another car. Oh, this is 88 off the line. Yes, Darren that's Williamson Darren driving Williamson. that, but that's the old Hawker car. Yes, Chris Coulthard at Alice Springs Local. That That is a car that knows its way up and down the Fink track. Now, I tell you what, you talk about locals. We talk about guys like Bo Robinson, eight podium finishes, never a winner. Chris Coulthard at Alice Springs Local. So close, so many times. Had the lead of the race a couple of times and succumbed to mechanical DNFs, I tell you what. But that is a fantastic Jimco. Turned out beautifully. Well, what's crazy about that is Chris Coulthard is back driving in an Alumicraft trophy truck this year. So I'm excited to see that. The bright orange Alumicraft car. Um, Young Shane Greening comes in as I nearly fall off my chair in the commentary box. I'm that excited for Young Shane to come in. Um, with the Bob's Mob sponsoring there as well. Big shout out to Bob as well. Um, Bob Bulldog getting, uh, he's a massive name here in the Alice. Um, gets a lot of vehicles prepped for this event um, and for Speedway locally here as Nacon, the 86, 
uh, leaves that. That's Richard Hakon, sorry, uh, making his way out on to the prologue track. So Shane Greening making his way around the horseshoe section. Is he going to be quicker than Timothy, Timothy Button as the Western Oils now come in to frame into the stadium section? But we're only a couple of minutes away now from that elusive class four. And yep. the man who's going to lead him off is last year's king of the desert. Yeah, absolutely. Needs no introduction. It's going to be interesting to see how that all shuffles out this year. Again, Josh Howell's obviously on point. It's going to be interesting to see what Toby and Bo and Greg Gardner and all those fast cars can do in the top of Class 4. Billy, again, I, I'm going to stop listing them because it's the more you think about it, the more there's just amazing names up and down that list. Uh, Cooper Weston out now, the Mickey Thompson Tyres um, Rush Buggy. So this is a pretty cool car that they've built in Queensland themselves. You can actually buy these cars as a flat pack and put it together yourself. So pretty awesome stuff there from the 61. And the boys are definitely on the go here. Just trying to line that straight up. And plenty of horsepower. That six, li oh, it's a 5.7 apparently Chevy. So might have the LS1 in it. But again, a great drive there. And again, the helicopters starting to circle, as you mentioned. It's obviously trophy truck time. It's it's fever pitch now, and if you are not out here yet, or if you're you're close and you're watching the live stream on your way out, or you're watching from home, make sure that that cup of tea and coffee is ready to go, because you don't want to leave that screen when these big boys come out, because it's going to be on for young and old. And there's a big list of big names with new vehicles it's going to be an insane finish to uh this method race wheels car uh slash buggy portion of the prologue yeah absolutely it's been an absolute killer prologue so far and brett lewis is out there slaying these berms really nicely turned out little car there again one of our super boots i believe and again he's got plenty of motor in that thing a-arms, big coilovers on the front. Nice run through there. And again, I love the fact that it's just licking flames on the shifts every now and then. Again, Superboot RV2, it's actually got a Mitsubishi 2.3 litre turbocharged motor in it. So next up, it looks like the 38. So this will be the Porter of David Beavis. Again, nice run there from the guys. And again, the 487, just letting you know, three minutes to go they just put the three minute board up in front of the 487 of none other than tp87 but again david beavis out on the line another one of our motorbike hellmen from back in the day central queensland local legend that that engine that's in that uh, trophy truck behind us apparently has 590 horsepower um, hey, I Josh, think hey, someone's Josh, I got, been seeing I was going to say, I've got to pull you up. I think he's lined here. Yeah, I think, I think he he's is. lined here. There's no way with that Dugan's turned out motor that they're running less than 600 horsepower of that car. It is an eight stacked paddle shifted absolute monster. Maybe, maybe, six, maybe 600 at the wheels. Maybe, yeah. maybe, maybe. But he's definitely, uh, he's playing it a bit coy there, I feel. Lots of them do play it coy. We did have a great chat to a few of these trophy truck drivers. And, you know, when they say, the basic package they are definitely downplaying those basic packages as the 88 oh, oh. Up very high as in too far on the berm but no worries for that gym co to handle again darren williamson at the wheel of that how high do you ask snoop dog high wowzers that is high so the 88 darren williamson again pedaling around this course Great looking car, mid-motored, which is a bit unusual for a Jimco. As he throttles down, a bit of a unique look. It's a great looking car. And as you said, has done plenty of kilometers up and down this Fink track and all over Australia racing. Williamson through now. He's got Jake in the passenger seat there. Again, the 2000 series with a 529. So again, if you listen along for the 88, they've had a nice safe run and it's been a good time out here in Prologue. The 86 as well of Richard 
Hancock. Now, this is a car, Josh, that's got a lot of history as well. I reckon that's the ex-German motorsport car, the way that the spares mounted bits and pieces. It might not be. No, you're right. I, uh, the ex-AGM car used to have the spares straight up it's and down. Kicks. That wouldn't happen to be the ex-Kurt Williamson car, would it? Well, it looks a lot like it. But anyway, Kurt needs it. But anyway, there's a lot of cool cars out here. And actually, to be honest, Josh, we've had a few little shuffles, haven't we? So we've now got one minute to go until the 487 is off the line. He's got a clear track. That's got to be an advantage. But Josh Howell's had the same advantage. There's no one on the track after the 86 finishes. Well, interesting DC as well, like you said. Josh Howe running the exact same prologue time as last year. Does that mean we're going to see Toby dip into the one, the four minute thirties like he did last year? I believe it was a 4.37 or a 4.38. But uh, Method Race Wheels prologue here. Hey, shout out to Tyler Cooper as well at home. He's one of the uh, shop employees. As we see Toby Price off the start line there. That beautifully turned out TSCO truck. Now, Josh, interesting to note, double spares on that truck. So running the smaller tyres, that looks like it's on a 35 or maybe a 37. 37 hard to probably, tell from yes. here. But it is on a smaller tyre, but running the double spares. So obviously uh, interested in keeping that consistency of balance. Air shifted. He will be banging through those gears as Toby sets the pace out here in Class 4 in our trophy truck category. Again, ladies and gentlemen, if you're listening along and you've joined us on the live feed, welcome to the big show. It is the Tinks Tats Fink Desert Race here at the Method Race Wheels Prologue. And we are underway with the big dogs. Bo Robinson in his brand new Mason truck. He's going to get the five second mark. We're this all one. watching. We have not seen this truck before. It has just got flown in. And it sounds strong, boys. It's and, shaking the commentary tower up here. And as, gee, it hooks up well. Yeah, the OBR truck, the 413, now off the line. Same deal, paddle shifted, six-speed Albans, Dugan's KRE combo, eight stack. Look at that dust, dust starting yeah. to settle. It's interesting that that's sitting around like that. They say it, they say it every year. They say that with the rain that we've had record rain over the last 12 months, that they say it every year. It will it will cut down that dust. It won't. Think that this Fink track has its own games. It writes its own story. It wants to throw up dust and make it hard for these top guys. It's going to throw up dust and make it hard for these top guys. There's so many different things. It, the track's ever-changing. There's so many different variables in this sport, in this qualifying session right here, right now. It's going down to the wire. Now, this is what I'm looking forward to as well. Absolute hell, man. Toby Watley off the start line. Now, this man throws down in qualifying regularly. Short, sharp races. This is this man's specialty from Love Day. He used to race that Can-Am. He knows how to bring it straight from the get-go. So this is a, a, a truck that they've built themselves, running an Albans gearbox, a, a Chev 6-liter as well. So looking forward to seeing how this goes. But man, like we've, we've said it all along, top spot in prologue for the race tomorrow is going to be very important for that dust-free run. I mean, look at the dust that is hanging around due to just a couple of the big cars across the prologue track already. Yeah, Toby Watley's definitely going to be one to watch. And again, just interesting how that duff changes because that didn't feel as bad as what Bo had to. Is, is Toby maybe dragging a bit of concrete behind or something and throwing some dust out? Because I tell you what, that dust was crazy for Bo. It seems to have settled now a little bit, maybe the breeze, but Greg Gardner, deadly Gregley's on the line. Josh is yes. jumping in the commentary tower. Built Ford Tough, this six liter SVO by Craig Carrison. Have a listen to this, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Ford Clinic. Well, here we go. It's going to be interesting to see how Greg Gartner goes in this vehicle. Sounds on song, and it looks like the dust has cleared a bit for him. So we are just waiting now for Toby to come into the stadium section as Greg Gartner hits it back. Yeah, absolutely, mate. Look, Look at, at Greg. Look at into that top corner. Mate, an ex-speedway racer as well. Greg will just race anything that has four wheels. Doesn't even need four wheels. One wheel, he'll race a wheelbarrow. Like, that's the kind of competitive Here we go. He Toby Price coming into the stadium section. Absolutely flying now. Let's see what he does in this tricky little section. Coming into the horseshoes on the break into the chicane. Yeah, no issues there. So straight through the mud. That's going to be an interesting one. I think that's the shortest line, so it's going to be interesting to see how that goes. 
Again, pitching it into those big berms as Billy Geddes, you can hear the 4-4-1 off the line in Hellboy, the red truck, the Geyser brothers. It's been around a long time and Bill knows his way around the Fink track. He's gonna hold on as well. The 4-8-7 though, we're back with it. Shooting through the prologue track. Again, looking for every last inch of track. Again, look at it throw the roost. These new trucks absolutely throw down. As he hits his final corner now, this horseshoe coming out. It's gonna be on the loud pedal straight through to the Tats. Fink does a race start, finish line. Here comes Toby Price, ladies and gentlemen. Get loud, let's see what he can do. He's absolutely flying into the start finish line. Let's see what he comes up on the board. Does he put Josh Howes down into second? Toby Price with a time of Four minutes and 42 seconds. There's nothing in it, ladies and gentlemen, wow. as Robinson makes his way in. It's going to be so close. It are, is going to be so close. That's simply crazy. We are They're, talking about 0.2 of a second separating first and second place. That is completely nuts. And the 4-1-3s here as well. Keep a good eye on Bo Robinson. But I tell you what, at the second, Toby's done exactly what he needs to do. Toby's going to be the big game here. And again, the 413, this brand new Mason Trophy truck. It landed on Tuesday. It got to Alice on Wednesday. They tested it Wednesday afternoon. It's completely nuts that these boys are here racing this brand new combo. Bo, oh. out in the grass, but there is not a throttle lift in this hell, man. He knows exactly what he's doing. Man, how close is this? That is all the berries. Ooh. Nothing left for Bo Robinson. 4-4-8 four, four, there for Bo. A great run. But that will actually put him in fourth position at the moment, just behind Aaron James. Unfortunately, that gives him a little bit of work. Again, it's a great position. Please don't think that's a talk down. But the 4-1-3, he will have a bit of work to do on race day now with a couple of pro buggies and a trophy truck in front of him but he knows how to get it done. Yeah, Toby Watley now into the stadium section, all just hitting the uh, edge of the berm there as he comes into the horseshoe section. You see how hard the tyres and the suspension are working on these vehicles. It is insane. Absolutely. Brett Smoothie on the line as well in the 447, so it's going to be cool to see how they go. They've had a bit of a rough lead up, but again, it's all Toby Watley at the moment in this orange truck built by Love Day. Oh, again, have a look at him just ripping. This man knows how to party. Watley having a good crack as Greg Gardner. The blue truck comes on in. Again, Watley thundering past the commentary tower as the 410 is now in the house. Yeah, so Toby Watley across the line there with a 457. That puts him in eighth place overall, but special Greg. This man, absolute animal. Every time he is on the track, I am 100% excited. I'm like a half open pocket knife up here, mate, as, as Greg Gartner just puts that forward in all the right places and it touches me in all the right places. Yeah, I think it's touching all of us in the right places like at this, this point because he is on song here. He's looking very, very quick. And the car control from Greg here is looking very, very good in the stadium section. Hasn't had too many hiccups. So it's going to be interesting as he comes around this last horseshoe section, if he can get his foot flat into it and see where it puts him on the line. It's all about trying to get that dust free one run for tomorrow. Now let's just listen to this board come across the line. That man knows how to get it done. Uh, Deadly Gregley, that is pretty darn impressive and I'm very interested, he ran a 4.58. So that's a great run there from Greg Gartner and Jamie Jennings. Billy got, Geddes. As we got in. Billy Geddes and the corn dog in the house here. So this is a great pairing as well. Looking forward to what Billy does. Alan Cornick, a very experienced navigator. Done a lot of racing in America with Corey Howell in a big unlimited truck. So has a lot of confidence in what these vehicles can do. And that is great line there from Billy. You see him getting it just a little bit side, hugging that inside line. They're doing a great job here. Cornick pulling the reins, I reckon, on Billy. Well, not pulling the reins, cracking the whip, I reckon, on him. So this is a great run out of Hellboy. A great Central Queensland competitor. 
great to see him back into the action here as well, out into the Fink family, into the Fink fold. Yeah, it's great to see Shannon Lander off the line as well in that Desert Trophy truck with Keone Lander, his navigator this weekend. But here we go. Let's have a look at Billy Geddes come flying into the start finish line. This thing's on song as well. Yeah, and another great Central Queensland boy, Billy Geddes, but also Brett Comiskey just went off the line as well in the X uh, in the 434 truck. And the 450, Paul Wheels on the track in the G6. And Comiskey's actually in Paul Wheels' old truck. So, man, there's some shuffling of trucks. But this is another one that they flew over. You can see it's actually essentially a full-size G6. A little bit different. Aussie spec, let's call it. But, yeah, Geyser Brothers in the house here today. And uh, this truck, they're just saying about the development of it, the 450, the way it's planted, the way it drives, the way it corners. Paul Wheel is a huge fan of this G6 chassis that he has. And he's going to put it... Uh, good pace in here today. Again, what we're going to see is the trophy trucks really hunt when it comes down to the Von Doom or whoops and those bits and pieces. What a great sound there. I tell you who's off the line there is the 492. We all turned our head for that unusual noise, but that's because it's a turbo uh, V6 powered truck, and that's none other than Dave Fellows. But again, Paul Wheel through now. What a run for Paul Wheel. Let's see where that puts him. Puts him in 20th position so far with a five minute and seven second pass. And isn't this what's crazy about Fink? Just a couple of years ago, a 507 would have put you on like the top step of the box. Now it's putting you in 20. It shows you how wild the competition is at Fink. This place is no joke. It is the guns of guns and everyone's bringing the good gear. It is a wild race as Justin Monticelvo in the 484. Say, speaking of good gear, yeah, the Get Performance Trophy Truck, this thing a work of art. Yeah, built by Gene Taylor out of uh, beautiful, sunny Southern California. Hopefully the boys are listening in, Harley and, and, and all those crew over there, Bo Morton, if you're listening on the live feed, big shout out to you guys, and Glenn Taylor. This is Gene that. Taylor, I apologize. The and other Tisco truck, truck, sorry. No, you're right, Mick, Mick is off the line now in this truck. It's actually the first Tisco truck that came into Australia and it's another work of art, beautiful bits of gear. He raced it under the Narva banner for a lot of years. Oh, Smoothie come flying in there in the back of that Patriot shot. Have a look at the helicopter down low, taking all those amazing images that we're going to see. Yeah, the Lockdown Apparel sponsored trophy truck flying there with Brent Smoothie behind the wheel as the Patriot Campers sponsored truck comes through. And we'll see where that puts him on the list. Uh, Five minute 30 around the prologue puts him currently in 45th position but let's have a look at Brent Smoothie in this uh, this trophy truck he's driving the wheels off this thing yeah listen they had a rough lead into this race they've done a lot of work to this truck behind the scenes due to some uh, issues earlier in the week let's just say so the guys have had a huge week getting this car ready and to have it on the line and being competitive so awesome the 447 but off the line too this is an amazing story Nichols. Now the 430, they've built this in a two-bay shed at home. It's a beautiful truck and they're throwing down this year with the competition. Again, Brett Smoothie on the bopper. Have a look at this, ladies and gentlemen. He is back ears. How good is that? Yeah, Shannon Landon, uh, Lander, sorry, coming through the stadium section now with his daughter navigating for him for the first time. Uh, at Fink, so it's great to see that family teamwork again, and this truck is uh, a pretty quick one, and Shannon is a madman behind the wheel, I can tell you that. It's very cool. Is that a Micklefab truck, a 485? And it is a very nicely turned out, a desert trophy truck. Yeah, it's a beautiful looking body and frame on that. Double spares, all the gear on there, so those guys looking for a fast, consistent run. Now, this is the Smiths, and this is this Turbo 6 I was telling you about. Such a unique sound out of this thing. It's really revvy, and the 445s, and these guys building this truck themselves, developing it over the last couple of years. We actually had a chat to those guys on the live stream last night, and it was great to see a family out there racing. Again, we can tell that story over and over about all the teams together. But again, the 485, a beautifully turned out truck. Nice size. And here's Brett Comiskey, out of interest. And again, this is another uh, race truck. It's actually an X, this is the X Toby Price truck, the 434. So again, beautifully turned out truck. Paul Wheel owned this truck as well. But Comiskey owned it, and I keep saying it to you, because um, 
again, Comiskey's basically owned every race car known to man in Australia, so he has some beautiful cars in his collection and moves them and sells them and does bits and pieces under their racing banner. But he is currently sitting third, tied with Ali Howes in the Australian Championship at the moment. So what a battle when you've got a trophy truck and a pro light in the battle for third at the moment in that category. Well, if we're outright, I apologise. Yeah, well, as we look at the Falcon-sponsored trophy truck making its way out back with Brett Kamitsky and also Dave Fellows now, this is my underdog for the weekend. This is the man that I'm watching in this uh, Northern Pastoral uh, trophy Sorry, truck. Sorry, I'm going to interrupt. Did you just call Dave Fellows an underdog? Well, yeah, I, I, I agree with the statement, Joshua, because what it's interesting that when does Dave Fellows ever not be in your top list of the first people? And yeah. that's what's interesting about it. There's so many great guys. We talked about Shannon Wrench last night. Like, how was he not the first cab off your list Ab for a winner? Absolutely. There's so much talent in this. And I know we will continue to say that. But if you're not listening at home, everyone, I'm going to say it. Everyone thinks this is a Toby Price show. And it is. He's a legend. But there is so much talent in this field. Dave Fellows. Six-time big six champion. Six-time big yes. champion multi-time Australian champion. Yes. And you know, like we sort of just brush over like it's another truck. No way. Dave Fellows oh, is a man. He's a flying. He is on a mission. And let's see what he does in that Geyser Brothers truck. I think he's going to be happy as Dave Bird, another Alice Local, makes his way through. That is a five minute and ten second as the Tisco truck goes off there for a little bit. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, Mick is having a great run there in the 482. So that actually puts Dave Fellows in 24th, which honestly, again, for Dave Fellows, in my opinion, is actually a good, good starting spot. position. He's in that top pack where they're really going to be pushing. There's going to be a lot of fast guys up there. So that's going to be interesting to see how those guys go. Again, beautiful trucks. We saw a number come through. Just We're going to try to rattle them off. I mean, Glenn Towers came through there. Again, Mick Maggers on our uh, screen at the moment. Uh, David Bird's also out at the, the moment. Shannon Lander. John Smith's out running at the moment. The 408 is off the line as well. That's Dean Miller, the Triton Engineering, Ursic Custom. Ursic building a lot of great buggy chassis. Have a look at Mick getting after it in this Tisco truck. Is this going to be the one that competes with Toby? Uh, it's a good run there. Mick's got a lot of talent for sure, but a 519 there. Again, puts it in 34. I don't want to talk it down, but that's a great starting position when you've got so much talent out here. The 430. Again, this is the Nichols. I love that body style built in with thorn built. It's a bit of an Aussie classic look. Greg Gartner had a similar body look for a little while, and that's just a classic F truck. I love that nickel built truck. And it sounds good, it goes good. It's a great size for Australian racing conditions. Probably a little bit outgunned at feet, but where you need that big stuff. But, oh, a bit of a spit there. Now, this is the truck that Chris Coulthard is driving. It's an Alumicraft truck, the 420. Justin Watt in the passenger seat, and Melissa Watt also um, option to navigate. Justin Watt, a champion in his own right. He's done very well here. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how Chris Coulthard does go with that uh, that entrant vehicle. As you said, uh, a man who's been very, very close in the past. Yeah, a bit of a hired gun, isn't he? He's done a number of different races in different cars, and he's done very well. I'm sure someone will correct me, but I don't ever think that he stood on the top, top step, did he? He was always no. he come second in the Hawker car, because he was second there at some point but never won it so close. It was a great story there for a while. And again, we talk about that up and down the field. I mean, Bo Robinson's been on the podium uh, eight times with unfortunately never having stood on that top step. No doubt he's gonna have a good crack at changing that. Now, good old Aussie Commodore, Middlewaters there. There's not much Commodore in it, I don't think. And again, I'm sure they'll correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I reckon this might be the ex Ross Boland car. But if not, it's, it's of that era. There was a few of them. This is a nice turned out car too, a Brenthal car. Glenn Towers is actually the Brenthal dealer in Australia. So if you're looking for a car, he is the man to talk to if you're interested in the Brenthal. Has run a big pro buggy here in the past and has always run very fast and very competitively and pretty much always under that Falcon uh, livery that he's been running with. And he's now in a trophy truck, the 480 Brenthal truck. Brenthal having a great run over in America at the moment. They've had some really great 
uh, outright victories. Got Kyle Jurgensen over there. And this truck is a really nice turned out car. Again, you can sort of see it's a little bit tucked. It's a little bit neater. It's, it's quite a uh, special looking car. Now, this is another interesting one. This is the Hanley Brothers. Now, these boys are ski racers and world champion ski racers. And they've come here. They started racing side by side. They're a two car team, got the bug. And now they've got a trophy truck as well. But it's an interesting trophy truck. It's a Pro 2 that has been converted in many ways. And that's why it sits really low. I think it'll do quite well in, in Pro Lock. But it's interesting to see how that height works in the um, down in the Bonduma. Whoops. I guess we're going to find out. That's what happens every think. We find out. Glenn Towers has run a 522. So a great run there from the Brenthal truck. And Joshua, that actually has a 3.5 Ford motor in it. Turbo car. Yeah, and then you got uh, Dave Bird in this 433. Another one of our Alice locals making his way around the horseshoe section. As another very good looking car. Nicholas Cummins in that Brethel Trophy truck. Uh, making his way out on to the prologue track. Yeah, the 479 is doing the Australian Championship, so he's been doing a few kilometres. This is a pretty new truck. Got the six-litre Chev in it, the GM-built motor. But again, like you said, the 433 off the line. David Bird, Bennett, trophy truck again. Bennett, an absolute legend, an enigma in off-road racing in Australia. Used to have that old C20 Chev. But here comes one of the Bennett trucks. And I tell you what, that is moving. Not short on horsepower there, that Bennett truck. And David Bird lays it down with a 542. The 408 in the house now. Brad Miller and Mark Miller. Again, the Ursic Custom Car. Hannah now, this, Bentley. I was going to say, this is Hannah Bentley, the daughter, having a good crack. This is Hayden's old two-wheel drive trophy truck. Now, Josh, I'm, I'm scratching my head there. Was that always a six-liter truck, or was it a turbo truck that they've converted? Because Hayden was very big on the turbo motors for a long period of time. I just can't ever remember if he had that six-liter in the first truck, or whether it was a turbo car that's now been converted. Because I must admit... Man, I love this statement as a learner car, but the six liter would be very forgiving compared to the turbo car. Yes. Have a look at this, another one. The Miller Boys having a red hot crack there. I love the way that truck sits. It's very squat, very low. They've got all the weight moved around and Ursic involved in that. And that's a name that you just know that he knows how to build fast cars. Yeah, you got Chris Coulthard making his way around the final horseshoe now. So let's see what Chris can do as another one of these Holden Commodores make their way off the line. Australia baby, gotta love it. Who doesn't love a little bit of Commodore action on a Saturday morning, but let's see how Chris Coulthard goes this time around. Let's see the pace he sets in the Auto Fit 88 Illumi Craft Trophy Truck. He does a five minute and 16 second lap of Prolog, which puts him in the top 30 currently. So again, we're not trying to downplay the top 30 for being um, a slow time. It's a good spot to be in, especially with these these big guys playing for sheep stations out front. They may break. You don't know. So there's so many different varying stories this weekend. Yeah, yeah exactly. You, Hayden, I, Hayden Bentley's one that has had a great run out of like 13th position and whatnot. So, you know, you're absolutely right. Sometimes they can come through the pack. It's not a uh, not an unusual story. So again, another car off the line here. Another one of our Commodore cars. Get a few of these Thornbilt style cars. The 481, Colin Desbro. And again, the 424, the middle water car. Those guys have got some great footage up on YouTube and their social medias and different stories and, you know, getting ready for the bracky, bracky bash and the hours involved in the shed in the middle of the night. And that is always a great family story there. Yeah, they'll be looking for a finish, Dan. I believe this will be their fifth attempt at Fink and uh, haven't managed to get that uh, that finish yet. So they're none from four currently. So hoping to, they'll be looking to change that, uh, that luck and get themselves across the finish line this year. Now, this Pro 2 car really does look very...
very, very nice. It's nice and low to the ground. Again, a lot of uh, uh, change needed to take in this because these uh, over in the States are a, a circuit racing type of vehicle, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, um, on ice and dirt and stuff like that. So it'll be yeah, interesting absolutely. to see how uh, this Pro 2 goes. Absolutely, yeah. It's almost like motocross for trucks, you know, and that's a, they're all on the track all at the same time. Slightly different to desert racing where we're looking at timing. But yeah, this is a very cool truck and I believe those boys are going to do very well in that as again, the uh, Westline Brenthal comes into view. Beautiful looking truck, that 479. Get a little loose there, loosey goosey, I do like it. And again, interesting running the double spares. There's, there seems to be two very distinct styles of uh, thought process here. Either you want to run it loaded or completely unloaded. There's one or the other. So do you think that's because, Dan, they've done most of their testing in that state in that state with the spares, the weight in that certain position? So they've decided that they uh, that's the way they're going to run Prolog. They're comfortable with the car. They'll understand the way it'll handle in the rough, the way it'll break, the way it'll corner. Um, so maybe the guy's not wanting to make too many changes to that vehicle. Yeah, absolutely, mate. I think that that'd be a, a very accurate assessment of it. There's lots of guys that'll tell you, like, you know, you don't want to set your set, change your setup too much for Prolog because you want to know if you bump into that corner how it's going to react, how it's going to handle, exactly what it's going to do. So, and then there's other guys that say, no way, lower it, change it, tighten it up, make it happen. So, you know, obviously, again, we talk about that two very different uh, thought processes. And again, as that truck comes across the line, Nicholas Commons in the 479. That was a great run there, a 514. And Hannah Bentley now comes into view. That racer truck. I was saying, Josh, about that era of time where racer trucks were just completely unbeatable over in America. Dale Dundell in the, uh, the Roberts Racing Trophy truck. You're exactly right. I remember... Uh, Luke McMillan telling the story. I mean, this is, you know, he's raced with Andy McMillan and now he's very fast himself. He went for a ride with Dale Dondell in a racer trophy truck and he got out and the first words were, I've never gone so fast through the desert as I have. So these racer trucks are a beautifully turned out machine. Plenty of, uh, plenty of performance in them and Hannah doing a great job here dipping a toe in the water. I believe this is her second think. Last year she shared the driving with Sam. I think she did prologue and the race down and then Sam returned home. But Hannah now... Looks like she's got the keys all weekend with Sam stepping into that Class 10 car. Yeah, it's absolutely awesome that, you know, you could race that family-style racing and in such great machinery too. There's, you know, great vehicles out there. And again, Hayden Bentley has been a stalwart. He's won this race before in his single-seat racer engineering buggy. And it's great to see Hannah come across the line in the 418. And she is getting after Great drive there from Hannah Bentley. Again. Yeah. Sorry, five minutes and 44 for that one there. Puts her in uh, the top 100 around about the 81st mark there as we see another one of these Holden Commodores making their way through. Yeah, interesting. Again, that Australian-style build, a little bit shorter, a little bit tighter and thinner. Again, yeah, Brucey e. Muir was a legend in the lime yellow one for a lot of years. I do believe that he's moved that on. We saw it at St. George in Queensland. But the 486 of Jamie Lawson. Again, a nicely turned out car. All the sponsors stickers. Nice GDO front end too, that, that unique grill on that one. Doesn't get much more Aussie than racing through the bush in a Commodore U, does it? No, it doesn't, especially with a Pontiac front end on it as well. But uh, <laughs> Well, that's the Brisbane coming out. Yeah, a couple of uh, pure, uh, Holden purists would not be very happy um, well, with this the, vehicle. Uh, Chev, Chev badge on the hubcaps. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, a beautifully turned out car and they're having a good run. And obviously this must be a team because this is a beautifully turned out Commodore as well. Red and blue. Peter Simpson would be the second car coming through with the 412. And then the 411 of Mark Foster is now coming into view, who was our last trophy truck off the line. Beautifully turned out car. Oh, oh. no! We've lost a wheel off the 48. I didn't One. see what happened there. Colin Desbro. He must have um, caught a berm in the, the wrong spot, or I don't know whether he's... Yeah. Luckily, he's Sorry. off the track there, so yep. he hasn't slowed down Peter Simpson at all. Oh. The 4 1 2. 
Getting a bit hairy on the two wheels there for Simpson as he's coming through the stadium section. These guys are got to be careful because you could throw it all away in those these last couple of corners. We've seen it happen here. Absolutely. We've seen it many, many times. But the 4-1-2 now, well and truly on the bopper. Again, that car's had a number of different development times. It's been around for a long time. I remember it, I think, uh, a good couple of years. I'd say 10 years ago. And then the guys have gone away and done some suspension changes, built some different links for it. But Peter Simpson, and it's got plenty of motor in it. As the 4-1-2 is now across the line. D Simpson in the passenger seat. Again, it started life as a Bennett truck. But with a six liter, again, got those long arms and bits and pieces. The Chev six liter. And unfortunately, the 481. Looking a little bit sad and sorry there. Not much you can do. Now, it is interesting to note for our people listening at home that that does not finish his weekend. If they can get it finished, they can get seeded, which means that you get put into the grid and they can still have a run. So there's no issue there. And again, 411, Mark Foster, our last car off the line. A little bit of a Tundra or a Hilux montage, I would say, from that. Yeah, it looks like a bit of an, uh, an older school Tundra early Hilux uh, Oz version, um, if you could call it that, from the front end. But a very unique looking uh, vehicle for the, the Foster, and it is a very unique one of our um, extreme two-wheel drive vehicles out here. Yeah, absolutely. But you're still putting on a great show. You see the way it's duck diving and weaving. He slows down just a little bit there, make sure his competitor's okay, and he'll get back underway. So... Looking forward to cheering our final competitor of four wheel vehicles here at the Method Race Wheels Prologue event. So a mad shout out to Method there. Those guys putting their money on the line. So $2,000 for the fastest four wheel drive vehicle overall, as well as $1,000 for the fastest side by side machine. But then the action doesn't stop there. Method also throwing down the money for the bike boys. Wanted to make sure they're included as well. And $1,000 cash for the fastest uh, two wheel bike as well. That's pretty awesome, mate. There's no question that Method have got right behind this event and it's been a great time as the 4-1-1 again. Foster now making his way around that final long big sweeper, letting the Chevy 6-litre sing and he's going to be our final car over the line here. Ladies and gentlemen, give him a round of applause. What a show here at the Tats Fink Desert Race, Method Race Wheels Prologue. That is our vehicles done and dusted. So just a quick recap of our top 10. You'll start to see these numbers come up on the screen. In first place overall, we have Toby Price in that TSCO trophy truck with a 4 minute 42.9. Second place, car 15, Josh Howes in that Jimco, a 4.43.1. Point two of a second, all that separates first and second place. Then AJ, Aaron James having a great run with a 4.41. In third place, and then Bo Robinson in that uh, beautiful Mason Trophy truck. He's adapted to that quickly. A 4:48 that puts him in fourth place. Glenn Owen, the uh, the Fink specialist that's been flagged or parachuted in here to have a shot at the overall in fifth place with a 4:54. And then we got Brenty Martin in that. What was it, Dan? A V12 twin turbo? No, no, just kidding. Brent Martin in that. Jimco, a little naturally aspirated 3.5 litre. What a absolute stonker of a lap. A 4.54 in sixth position. Then we see Shannon and Ian Wrench in that brand new or new for this year, Jimco Hammerhead with a 4.57 in seventh place. And then Toby Watley, what a great run in that Love Day Rush truck. A 4.57.9 as well. So seven, like you could throw a hanky chip over these guys. And then Greg Gartner, old special Greg, a 458 ninth place. And then Jake Swindlehurst rounding out our top 10 with a dead on five minute flat in that Aussie Jimco. So that's a great run for them. They're second in the championship in the points hunt. So they are in a great spot to be starting. That's our top 10 for the Method Race Wheels Prologue. Josh, I agree. The top 10, I love the, but like look just the outside the top 10. We've got our first extreme four-wheel drive with the 818. That's Hayden Bentley. So that's amazing in 11th. Pro is our Ryan Taylor. So he number six is in 12th. And then our first sports like, mate, Stephen Graham, yeah. class 10, is sitting in 
thirteenth outright. Bro, unbelievable. This is nuts. Yeah, yeah, that is that is fantastic. And I tell you what, and then we've got Peter Costello, Shane Alfredstone, Tyler Owen, another one of our pro lights inside the. Uh, well, a couple of our pro lights inside the uh, the top twenty as well. We've got Andrew Moles in seventeenth. We've got Jason Richard in eighteenth. Billy Geddes in nineteenth place as well. So those guys having a uh, having a good run too. So we're looking forward, mate. There's going to be battles up and down the uh, the field. Like you said, the way is it going to play out? We've got first in the championship, Ryan Taylor in twelfth position, just in front of him, Jake Swindlehurst in tenth position. Like they're only going to be starting a few minutes apart tomorrow as well. So, mate, it's going to be a battle on for this race. Like you said, there's going to be, you know, a, a race within a race with the championship. But, mate, think it's the one they want to win. Yeah, we could talk about this all day. Like that's crazy impressive, Josh. Jake Swindlehurst has stepped into a pro buggy at the start of this season, bought a good card. Now, that was a good tick the box. Yes. But sitting in 10th at Fink yep. in the big show, like, that's crazy, mate. Like, so much, a big shout out to those guys. They've done so well. And uh, I think that we're going to be in for one hell of a year. Mate, with the Swindlehurst boys, if your lips a bit chapped, you know, you get the poor, poor ointment. The red tube is what you're looking for, guys. So, like I said, support the races and the companies that are, that are, these guys are up and running. So, Actually, my lips are a little bit chapped right now. Just, you know, a bit of a plug out there. Mate, something's chapped, oh, I can tell it's you. It's going to be your, but the moral your lips story, in a moment, mate. The moral of the story is that that is a great field in the top 10, spread between a number of classes, and uh, I'm excited. There is no question. And again, guys, like, Ryan Taylor, like, to uh, that's a good starting spot for him, in my opinion. Like, he's come out of 20th and 24th and, you know, down in those numbers. To be in that seating position is a good spot for him. Absolutely. I tell you what, though, like you said, one of the things about uh, this race that's going to be interesting is the top 10 get that two-minute dust gap tomorrow. Then it drops back to a minute, um, and then I think around about 70th or 80th, it drops back to 30-second intervals off the start line. But we saw the dust today. We saw that the Bo Robinson, even in prologue, was affected by Toby's dust off the start line there. You know, it was hanging around. So, you know, that dust free run is going to be important. But then also the top 10 with that top two position. We're here to race. We're here to win. We're not here to watch you. We're traveling at speeds up to 180 kilometers per hour. That's 50 meters per second. If we hit you, we're both gone. The facts are simple. Another serious spectator injury could end the race for good. Don't stand on the outside of corners. Read and observe all safety signs. And stay at least 20 metres back from the track side at all times. Don't be the reason. Don't be the reason.
times have been tough. Here at Imparja, we want to help our customers get back to business and reconnect with their own customers. Television viewing levels are at an all-time high, so now is the time to reach out through TV. And to make it easy, we offer complete commercial production and airtime solutions tailored to your specific needs. Our advertisers have been advertising with us for years, and that says something. Whether you've used Imparja previously or are new to our station, give us a call. We'd love to help. Your mates a good value you should check out venue mode when the green light is activated you're on tab turn so you'll get access to exclusive markets and offers just for heading to your local venue mode only on your tab app tab long may we play i've always kind of been drawn to bugs i've always wanted a bug and the first bug I ever got was actually a shell. That sparked the OG bug. And since then, uh, I guess I've never really strayed away from the, the bug platform, the look, the, uh, the vibe, the feel. It's just something I guess from being from San Diego has always kind of uh, hooked me since day one. And uh, I don't think there's no turning back. <laughs> We're here to race. We're here to win. We're not here to watch you. We're traveling at speeds up to 180 kilometers per hour. That's 50 meters per second. If we hit you, we're both gone. The facts are simple. Another serious spectator injury could end the race for good. Don't stand on the outside of corners. Read and observe all safety signs. And stay at least 20 meters back from the track side at all times. Don't be the reason. Don't be the reason. What a buzz here at Alice. There's so many people have come to town. There's the crowds packed behind us just watching that meeting. It was huge. So it's really exciting for everyone. And I've got Natasha Files, the Northern Territory uh, Chief Minister here with me to sort of run through what does this mean, I guess, for the Northern Territory economy, but also the local community as well. It's a fantastic event, not just for Central Australia and Alice Springs, but for the whole Territory. You know, the large numbers of people that come into the Territory specifically for the event. Some people fly in, some people put it on their camping itinerary, so it's just fantastic. 
And for you, I mean, you're here, you're amongst it, you're the crowd, your son's here with you. He's a big motorsport fan. What have you sort of been exploring and doing today? It's really fun and it's Henry's into his cars and he's informing me and uh, teaching me, but there's really something for everybody. It's just got that really fun carnival atmosphere. So it's a really great event for the Territory. So a big thanks to all the volunteers and officials that put it on. And obviously some of those key numbers, thousands of people coming here to Alice, that's huge. It's like 12,000 spectators for this event and not just here today at the start finish line, but right out across the track. So uh, people come specifically for the event. Local Alice Springs residents always plan a camping trip around it out on the track. So it's, it's really fantastic and huge. And just mentioning that camping along the track, we, we talk about 12,000 people coming here. We talk about 14,000 spectators, but is there a way of really managing how many people come and camp along that huge track? It's so well organised and it's a really small team that pulled the event together but they make sure that whether they're people at this start finish line or out on the track that they're looking after themselves but it's just a great family friendly event. And I'll ask Henry, have you got, you got a few favourite drivers out there? It's great to see you here with mum sort of supporting the event as well. Who's your favourite driver? Probably Price. Toby Price, have you gone out there and got a signature yet? No, not yet. We have to put that on the to-do list mum. There's heaps to hear, so for anyone that might be watching this, um, certainly plan around it, get to the Territory to enjoy the Fink Desert Race. And it is absolutely a once in a lifetime opportunity. It's my first time here. I'm having a fantastic time. The crowd is just, it's brilliant. There's a particular community env environment here and sort of vibe and experience that you don't get at a lot of events. So that is super special. special. Natasha, thank you so much for your time. Plenty more action happening today. We've got the bikes underway from 12 o'clock for their prologue.
Looking good, race five. Bailey's burger joint might not look like much, but it's here where I experience the greatest racing live from across Australia and around the world. With Play Central on the tab app, you get unlimited access to Sky One, Sky Two, and Thoroughbred Central. And you can bet whilst you watch, anywhere you like, even with a double patty and a side of fries. The special isn't bad either. Play Central, only on the tab app. Tab, long may we play. We're here to race. We're here to win. We're not here to watch you. We're traveling at speeds up to 180 kilometers per hour. That's 50 meters per second. If we hit you, we're both gone. The facts are simple. Another serious spectator injury could end the race for good. Don't stand on the outside of corners. Read and observe all safety signs. And stay at least 20 meters back from the track side at all times. Don't be the reason. Don't be the reason.
Desert Race Committee and club members congratulate and thank all our sponsors for getting on board Australia's ultimate off-road race. Not only is it the premier off-road event in the country, it's pulled together by a voluntary committee with enormous community support. It is the generosity of sponsors that keeps costs down and assists us to promote it far and wide. The Fink Desert Race Committee acknowledges our amazing 23 years unbroken naming rights sponsor, TATS. TATS have invested nearly $1 million in sponsorship since 2000, and together we have forged a strong sporting partnership. Their generosity has allowed Fink to grow to what you see today. The one thing that the TATS Fink Desert Race has maintained since it started in 1976 is that it allows anyone to enter. Whether you are the best in the country or just in it for the fun, all competitors strive to achieve a finish. It is with the help of our platinum sponsors that anyone can have a go. We acknowledge the following. Northern Territory Government, TAB, Lassiter's Hotel Casino, Alice Springs Town Council, Imparja Television, Lion, Central Comms, Method Race Wheels, the Fink Desert Race Committee would like to show great appreciation for our gold sponsors who provide key services and expertise to support the running of the event. Exact Contracting, Telstra, Ram Hire, Chubb Fire and Safety. With a race of epic proportions, it is the smaller sponsor that gets targeted by competitors hoping to ease their entry burden. A proportion of these also support the event and we are grateful for their contribution. The club now asks that you support those who support the event. Think of that the next time you're ready to make a purchase. We'd like to thank the following sponsors and supporters. Alice Equipment Hire. Complete Fencing. Alice Plaza Shopping Centre. Aldebaran Contracting. Desert Technologies Proprietary Limited. Red Centre Technology Partners. Asprint. APJ Concrete, National Australia Bank, High Tech Industries, Thrifty, Centre Pest Management, Alice Traffic Management, Northern Territory Correctional Services. The Fink Desert Race Ambassadors are unlike many other promotional modelling positions around the country, selecting real women who have both a passion and interest in motorsport but also have an interest in volunteering their time to a community event. They become part of the Fink family and are widely recognised. These women all bring a wealth of knowledge, experience and passion to the event and broadcast the race to a wider audience. We thank each girl for their contributions as volunteers. The Fink Desert Race Ambassadors are proudly sponsored by Lotus Makeup and Beauty, Desert Wave Surf Shop, Core Art and Designs, Nikki Westover Photography.
What a morning we've had at the Tats Fink Desert Race for 2022. An awesome morning of prologue racing and it's now time to announce our winners from the Method Race Wheels Prologue. Firstly, we're going to introduce Clayton Taylor who's going to say a few words on behalf of Method Race Wheels. Thanks, Clayton. Thanks, Rihanna. Uh, it's great to be here and, um, you know, for, for Method Race Wheels to support this event um, as part of a global campaign for Method in the USA. Uh, it really, really speaks volumes for this event and how big it is and how much support that it receives. So we're extremely proud to be a part of it and uh, it's going to continue for many years. Um, so, you know, let, let's hope that uh, the next two days proves uh, safe for everybody and we, um, everybody has a su successful weekend and um, yeah, let's bring it on. Absolutely, can't wait. So our first announcement in the fastest side-by-side -side, winning $1,000 from Method Race Wheels in the Can-Am with a time of 5 minutes and 9 seconds, we have Peter Carr. Congratulations Peter, just talk us through your prologue lap out there. Uh, yeah, I just tried to keep it clean, it was, it was pretty slippery out there, so I just tried to keep it as straight as I could and yeah, I managed to pull off a good lap. And you're happy with how everything has been going so far in your preparation for the race across the weekend? Yeah, well, I haven't done any dirt racing this year, so it's good to come back in. And after last year, I missed out on, on this position by two tenths of a second. So it was good to, good to get the top spot this year. And talk us through what's the preparation over this evening. Get yourself ready for tomorrow. Your, your navigator, Matthew Windham, he's over there. He's prepping the car as we speak. Yeah, so basically we'll, we'll probably lift it up a little bit and we've fill it up with fuel and and hope for the best well we wish you all the best have a fantastic race across the weekend good luck thank you congratulations once again ladies and gentlemen the fastest in the side-by-side -side category peter carr and to announce the winners for the method race wheels prologue overall in a time of four minutes and 42 seconds we have toby price and jason duncan Toby, congratulations once again taking out the prologue just, just in the end. Yeah, that was uh, quite close. Um, Josh definitely kept us honest there and uh, yeah, track was slippery. So um, we had to just try and take our time around there and just make sure we uh, kept it on track and, and we did that. But it was, uh, yeah, it was, it was close by the end there. Just talk us through what, like everyone has now said, the conditions are slippery out there. I mean, what are you expecting as the weekend unfolds? Um, yeah, we got the luxury today. I think tomorrow is going to be a different story. So uh, the track is always dusty and um, yeah, we got a, a good starting position for tomorrow. So yeah, we, we just need to have a good rundown and um, yeah, Jason uh, called all the, uh, the, the shots here well today. So um, yeah, we'll uh, try and scare American and see if we can uh, get him out of Australia and uh, never come back again. Congratulations, Jason. You're part of this team as well. You've got pl plenty of work to do yourself across the weekend. What was it like from your point of view out there? Oh, it was really fun. We went as cautious as we could, but as fast as we could just to get it to the finish safe and have a clean run. Luckily, we got on pole and we're going to have some fun tomorrow. We're looking very much forward to it. Good luck across the weekend, guys. Congratulations once again to our Method Race Bills overall prologue winners, Toby Price and Jason Duncan. Well, what a podium that is, and it's going to be very, very interesting. Only 0.2 of a second in that one. So it's going to be on for young and old out through that back gate down to Fink tomorrow. But the build-up for the bikes now is where we start to get excited. David Walsh will be the first bike competitor to make his way around the prologue track and it's going to be interesting to see this top 30 now instead of a top 20. Yeah mate it's going to be a big difference to have the top 30 all on that single start. David Walsh, the man, the myth, the legend. Fink local, it's so great to see the Fink locals out here and uh, yeah I think it's going to be a real interesting race here. We just saw some, I don't want to say upsets but like some interesting um, positions for the for the top of the cars and we're going to see the same with the bikes I think. And even then down to once the 450s and the 500s come through later on this afternoon, there's a few guys out of position there that didn't finish last year. That's going to be very interesting as well. 
But we do have the Fink Ambassadors down there holding up the two minutes. So we are two minutes until we are underway here. And I tell you what, what a race. What a day. What an atmosphere. The crowds are making their way. Actually, as Toby gets their check, get the photos there and again at the dice, there's just action everywhere, isn't there? Yeah, there's a heap of action. And I think I um, actually went and had a look at the Chicane Club. I got given a very special little VIP uh, wristband. So I went and had a look at the Chicane Club and oh, far out. What a, um, a great rendition to the Fink uh, precinct here at the start finish line. Yeah, actually, I got a text message from a young Michael Napier who's over there uh, having a good time in the in the chicane club. So, yeah, the guys over there having a good time and celebrating on the live stream there with the Method Race Wheel. Again, Method Race Wheels. Now, listen, we've got... Whoa, whoa. While she gets very excited there on the rev limiter, we've got the one-minute board up. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you're around the podium... Make sure to get to a fence now. Or if you can see the big screen, make sure your eyes are locked on that big screen. It's about to get very, very interesting. We are going to send the top 30 one by one to determine the, the top 30 for the start. And then we go into the normal grids through the classes. But the thing is, there's so many big names in those normal grids. It's going to be on for young and old outside of the top 30 as well. There may be names that just slip in. Absolutely, mate. There's a lot of very fast people. Again, it's interesting to see all the Class 2 bikes starting off. They're all the uh, 451cc upwards, so on the KDM 500, the bits and pieces. And the number one up on the bopper, ladies and gentlemen, David Walsh is away. His prologue run. This is going to be key as he tucks down Gets right under that bike. The 450 screaming through the Alice Springs dirt. Jack Simpson's going to be on the line after him. Then Rick Island, Callum Norton. There's going to be a gaggle of races here today as the dust moves away. And Davey Walsh is on his way. Yeah, David's going to get out into that prologue section now, the back around section. and. Jack Simpson now on a new outfit, yeah. OBR, yes. sponsoring this man this year. Yeah, absolutely. Listen, I don't think OBR are the main sponsor, but it's, it's a conglomeration. Essentially, Jack Simpson is racing for himself this year. So Jack Simpson trying to build his own brand and his own reputation, like you said, doing some racing over in America and all sorts of things. And with that two on his number plate, that's going to be something very exciting. But again, OBR, the black and yellow stands out. What a great looking combination. That fluoro yellow, synonymous with Fink. Yeah, I'll tell you what, Jack is. Simpson on the bopper, all the way over on the left, little kicker there. Again, if you've just joined us on the live stream, welcome. We hope you're having a fantastic time as Jack Simpson checks out of the Fink start line. And we are underway with Prologue for our number two bike. Again, on a Husqvarna FE501, these 500cc motorcycles just so popular out here in the desert. Rick Island, number four, warming up now again on a Husk FE501. We had this conversation about these Euro boutique brands. Now, obviously, they're very much tied together. KDM is the main parent company of a lot of these, but Husqvarna got a few different bits on it. Hanging off the back. What a great ride out of there for Rick Ireland. Again on the FE501. Fourth in last year's Fink Desert Race. Callum Nort on the line as well. And again, a Sherco, our 500, an SEF-R race bike from Sherco. Running the number five plate this year. So, again, ladies and gentlemen, if you're following along and you're not a Fink uh, fanatic like we'd like to think we are, these single digit plates, that is their board. The top 20 all run off the plate that they came last year. So, if it's got a five on it, he placed five in 2021. And then it goes down to classes as well. There's class fours and 
X's and all sorts of things that we'll explain as we're going through. Yeah, Dan, and one of the other big rewards there for that top 20 finish, you'll see currently we have bikes out on the track one at a time. So if you finish in the top 20 from the year before, you're also rewarded with the Fink Prologue Track Method Race Wheels Fink Track all to yourself. What a cool feeling being out on that track on a motorbike, and you know you've got it. You don't have to jockey for position off the start line. So that's a, that's a huge advantage for these guys as well as you'll see. Once we get into the rest of our field, they'll start to drop back to uh, to three at a time, I believe. And gee, there's some big names here, Josh. Yeah, Waters. You know, both the Waters are there. Jake Smith's there. Luke Hayes. Yes. So shout out to Luke Hayes. His family actually owns one of the properties that the Fink Track runs on. As we see, David Walsh, the local, come back into the stadium. Look at that style he's got. Such a classic desert racing style. Backing it into those corners. Up high on the berm as the number six takes off. That's Brody Waters. Great run there from Brody. But again, Davey Walsh is the man of the hour right now. Every single Alice local is reeking on this man right now. He is the local favourite. Oh, look at the style too. Wheel up over those humps. Just absolutely bossing it. Leg out. GDR suspension on board this thing. So definitely is going to be wicked up. Greenfield, an ex-winner, multiple time winner here at the Tats Fink Desert Race. So he knows how to set up suspension on a bike. As it comes around the final corner. It's going to be interesting to see what this time runs and whether it goes quicker again. Here we go. It's David Walsh, the local boy. He's making his way down to the start finish. Let's see what time he does. Four minutes, 48.5. Jack Simpson now into the stadium section, ladies and gentlemen. Man, a 4.48.5. The bikes that are is fast. That hanging on to it. Man, the way they run those high lines as the seven's off the line, that's Jacob Smith. The Smith boys, complete legends of the sport. Sorry, DC, to correct you, number seven there, that's actually Nicholas Waters. You're right, sorry, mate, I've got my numbers crossed there. That's right, it's a seven close, and a nine. The two brothers, close, close, you reckon? Very close. But yeah, Jack Simpson absolutely on the boffer on that big Husqvarna. Great to see Jack back here in Australia racing. He uh, spent a bit of time at the start of the year off racing the work series over in America as well. So come back here to Australia with the help of OBR, Smoothie, a couple other people like that. Some great sponsors being able to put his own team together. And, mate, he is going to be battling hard. Look at that. Down low, apex that corner, looking for every ounce of performance out of that bike. He comes across the finish line there. We're going to hopefully see his time. Oh! Four, 48. Point Jack two. Simpson. Oh my he's God! On the top step at the second, we've only had two bikes through, <laughs> but he's on the top step at the moment. Jack Simpson on that FE501. And there's nothing in it again, boys. There's nothing in it. Point, point three of point a second. Point three. Man, that is a crazy bit of riding skill. These boys are just hanging off it as the four of Rick Island makes his way through the stadium. Again, nice and high in the berm. I love these little humps that they've got to work with. This is far from a flat track. Look at that suspension working on that Husqvarna. Yeah, I believe this is only uh, Rick's third attempt at Fink. So he's done really, really well over the years to put himself in the position that he's in now. And it's going to be interesting to see what he can do, where it puts him in this uh, these top three bikes so far. It's going to be interesting. Let's see what he does as he makes his way around the berm towards the start finish line. He's going to have that thing cracked on. Look at him come in. The head down as much power and aerodynamics as he can possibly try to get. Let's see what time. It is a 4.57.2. So it puts him in third position currently. And guys, just at the same time, because there's so much action, we've got the five on the track as well, but Luke Hayes has taken off in a array of horsepower and dust. So again, everywhere we look from the commentary tower, there's just things crack a lacking as Callum Norton powers through this stadium section. Again, up high on the berms, you can see those big seats. They'll have the steg pegs, the steering dampeners, all the desert stuff. These boys are on the bopper and riding these things like they're 95 kilo 125s. Have a look at this footage now as we go through. The boys get right out wide, trying to look for that smooth line through the whoops. But again, Callum Norton on the number five, out wide and on the bopper. Look at him hanging down. He's underneath one hand across the finish line. 
great ride there from Callum Norton. The number six is in as well. So again, we're all looking at the updated times constantly here. The number six on the track. Oh, what's the, if I could ride a motorbike, Joshua? Oh my goodness, these boys are just getting after it. Yeah, that's Brody Brody Waters there, like a very good style. You see him just get on the back wheel while basically railing a bit of a bird, puts it on the back wheel to get over those uh, those little braking bumps or the acceleration bumps that the trucks, the buggies, the cars have already started to put into the track. Yeah, nice and deep. But they're all running that high line. You can see it almost drying up already up there. You can see there's a racing line emerging. Oh, nice air, big flick. No drama there for the six, though. Again, Brody Waters hanging down low. The 18 of Jake Coleman off now on his 450. Getting the track to himself. We're expecting the other Waters brother there. He is now Nicholas, the number seven, coming in. Callum Norton sneaking into the top three with a four minute and 54.1 time around the prologue track. So Jack Simpson, David Welsh, Callum Norton, Rick Island, your top four so far. But it's ever-changing. The track is ever-changing. All the bikes continually going out. We've still got Luke Hayes to come in as well. There's so many people. Yes, yeah, Sam Handley off the line as well on his KDM 500 EXC-M. As you said, Josh, literally people everywhere. Motorbikes going everywhere. The number seven. Again, Nicholas Waters hanging off. They can only imagine. Again, rev limit a bomb from the 17 over there. So, Corey McHannon. Yeah, and we're going to go and talk downstairs with the number two man currently at the moment. David Walsh is downstairs with one of the girls. We're going to have a chat. Guys, I know there's plenty of action on track, but we were very uh, grateful to have David Walsh come straight over here to the stage. But you've, I can see the frustration. You're disappointed with that run. Tell us about it. Yeah, I just had a really big mistake out in the back. Um, one of the buggy lines sort of just went off course and, uh, I, yeah... It pushed me out off the off the berm, and uh, yeah, it's cost me a couple of seconds. But hats off to Jack. It was obviously a real close time between the two of us, and um, I knew he was always going to be quick out of here. I mean, he's put me and him on a motocross track. He beats me every time. So just uh, yeah, look. Hopefully, if I don't get knocked off second place, we can start on that first grid tomorrow, and it's a long weekend. Yeah, I can tell you're disappointed, but it's a very long race. Plenty can happen. I mean, what's the mindset now, looking towards the weekend? Yeah, just focus on uh, tomorrow's job. That's, you know, trying to get there, get there as fast as we can and, yeah, and hopefully be, you know, injury free and, and then turn around the next day to come home. Yeah, thanks so much, David. We'll let you go and, and take a rest. You've still, still got the deep breathing here. Thank you very much. We're very lucky to have David Walsh come over straight after his run in prologue. Jack Simpson's a man that sits at the top of the timesheets right now. Well, well, well almost actually... with the commentator's curse there. <laughs> As, uh, as we were interviewing Walshy there, Jacob Smith has come through on an absolute flyer, a 4 minute 44 second point four. So Jacob Smith on that Husky has put himself to the top of the table there. He's knocked off Jack and David. So you can see that that frustration and that, that, that you know, that, that pressure that's on David as well, you know, and, and having to ride the track after all the buggies and trucks and everything ha have been through it. It's a little bit different to ride. But, mate, I still would not be riding off David Walsh. Uh, an Alice Springs local, tons of experience. This is uh, this is going to be one heck of a race. This man as well, I would not count him out. Luke Hayes, his teammate. Let's see what he comes through. And, no, that is a 5 minute 03.4. So, the, the slowest so far of the rest of the bikes. But um, that Jacob Smith coming in there and just plucking top spot by four seconds. Um, insane. Again, like we've said ever-changing conditions so it's anyone's game it's anyone's game and we still have so many big names to come yeah and 452 k's of racing like what we really got to understand is yes. this time doesn't even actually count towards the race this is just jockeying for position at the moment so 452 k's of racing to go and again walshy simpson and i'll tell you what jacob smith again 
hey, listen, we're talking about guns here. Yeah. We're talking about guns that are splitting hairs. Like, these guys are super impressive. Callum Norton, Nicholas Waters, those guys have done an amazing job so far. And again, the bike's just charging off the line there. The 695, Thomas O'Connell. Great ride there. The bright orange uniform, the bride and gear. And again, it's great to see a wide range of uh, bikes out there too. This will be the 14 of Callum Haberman. WR450, first of our little 450 bangers. Little 450 bangers. But well, yes, they are yes, compared no, to the other ones. No, no, absolutely. We talk about a, um, a few years ago when Yamaha really got involved and, and wanted to take this race to the KDMs. They actually factory or, or not factory but a team actually built a, a, a bigger stroke and crank for their motorbike and turned a WR450 into a 500 because they believe that that's what they needed to compete against the uh, the big bikes. Yeah absolutely and now the Sam Hanley of the 16 so another one of our class 2 our, our over 451cc bikes KDM 500 again these KDM so popular in the desert now. As the number 51 leaves the line Samuel Stockman, sorry, 5 or 1 1. Uh, and it looks like Ben Grabham is out on track as well. So that is another big name to watch as we look at the number 17 of Corey McCannon. I tell you what, if you want to feel old, seeing Ben Grabham run 7 2 1, a class 7, so that is actually an age bracket, to see Ben Grabham running a class 7 number on his bike, see, that makes me feel a little bit old. Yeah, the king of the desert. The man, the myth, the legend, Ben Gravel, out there thrashing around. But what a complete and utter legend as the 17 of Corey McMahon. So very cool. One of the, that 17, you'll notice that bike, a little bit of a different colour. It's actually a gas gas. So great to see gas gas out here putting a, you know, a bit of a sea, a, a bit of a presence into the scene of desert racing here at the Fink. And they're, they're playing around with bikes I've seen as well. It looks like we've got one enduro bike and then one um, race, like desert racing bike um, with the gas gas. So I think from what they're, they're looking at is what bike does um, work best here in the desert. But here comes the number 10. Uh, I think, is that 18? I think 18, it might be, sorry. No, that's right. Jake Coleman, it is a bit hard to see, but the 18 out there. Jake Coleman having a great ride. Another one riding a 450. So good to see these 450. That's actually an XSXF, so it's actually the motocross version of the KDM that he's riding out there. And he's having a good crack there too, boys. Legs flapping out the side, getting through those braking bumps very well. Wheel up on the bopper. The 287's on the line, Nicholas Turner. He's about to put her up on the limiter and get out of here. Another local to watch, ladies and gentlemen. Nicholas Turner has been riding very well in the off-season coming into Fink. So it's going to be interesting. It's anyone's game still. As Coleman makes his way down to the start-finish line, head down, and let's see where that puts him. Yeah, absolutely flying Coleman. He was hanging off the back. He looked like he was looking for a couple of extra gears there, boys. He was looking for the shifter or something down there. When I think we got Ben to grab him now in the stadium section. If I am correct, it looks like the 700 number. 721. So let's see what he can do. He's on a 500 EXF this year. Yeah, back on a KTM. He's had a lot of success there with KTM and, and in Honda in the earlier days. So he's had a little time away, but he's back on a KTM. But I believe doing his own thing. We were talking about the other day, doing his rides, arrive and ride kits. So Ben grab him through, proving that the 721 still has the pace. Mate, the old dog, uh, no disrespect, eh? the old dog Ben grab him still got it. He's put that up into sixth position at the moment with the 455.8. So not not too far off the pace there of the of the absolute top. But great to see a legend of the sport like Ben grab him back out here. Uh, competing again. Yeah, this is very cool. Some great shots on the monitor there of those dirt bikes coming through the whoops and making their way into the stadium. It's a very high speed section. Then up on the berms are working their way through the chicane area. Looks like there's plenty of throttle pumping going on there. I like the action. 
He's having a good crack over there. Now we're going to about uh, just about to start our groups of three. So this is where the action is going to come thick and fast. Multiple bikes on the track at any given time. And as you boys mentioned, we're going to keep a good eye on who's coming through because it is going to be blisteringly quick. And we have some fast guys, Josh, that, uh, yeah, we talked about Nathan Trigg. We talked about Ivan Long. There's a ton of guys out there that are very, very capable of coming through the pack and jumping into our top 10, top 20, anywhere in there. And those guys will be hunting for those starting times because, again, those single starts and first grids, like that's just something that everyone's hunting for. Yeah, absolutely right there, Dan. The action is about to get a bit loose, a bit wild. We are looking forward to it. We're now sort of, no, but this is your, your more amateur style riders. These are the guys that want to tick it off the bucket list. But I tell you what, they're still competitive. They want to get the, look at that. You can see the elbows up, the elbows are out, and these boys are ready to rock and roll. Mate, does old mate on the right there, the X99, have it pointed in towards the center a little bit? I think he was, uh, I think he was looking for the bit of a jump there. But this is where it's going to be interesting. You've got to push and push hard because dust is an issue in this race as they slide on in. <laughs> I love it, mate. They are getting amongst it. Like you said, elbows out and they're bashing to that first corner. Yeah, and that looks like a Sherco on the bogger, the 299. That's a 500 SEF R. Lockie McClellan on that one. But the 611, oh, sorry, 511 of Samuel Stockman is through first. But again, good run. Again, we've talked about it. Sherco putting in a real concerted effort to make sure that they uh, have a presence in the desert. They've been doing great of lately. And again, there's nothing but uh, props for those brands coming on board and doing their thing out at the Tats Fink Desert Race. Again, the Method Race Wheels Prologue is running deep right now. Put money on the line for these winners. As again, our H class is just cranking out at the moment. So Lockie McCallan with a five minute flat comes across the, uh, the finish line. That puts him in P8, provisional P8. So that's a great run for him as well with the five minute flat time. Yeah, absolutely, mate. It's a great position. And again, Nicholas Turner on that 287. Oh, letting her hang out a little bit. I like it. He's uh, making sure that he's given it everything. He's, he's, he's wicked her up and giving him the herbs and spices on that KDM. So the 287 making his way through the prologue track. Honestly, making it look pretty comfortable. No real dramas there. So our last group of bikes off the line there, Luke O'Donnell, Anthony Skeynes, and Trevor Marshall. So that's our group of three that have just left the start line. We're gonna, gonna be interesting to see how they start coming in as whether we get some battle packs that start to happen. Yeah, absolutely, mate. Again, it's very hard because the action will just be so thick here as bikes just start to roll through. Again, we wanna keep a good eye on that top 10 number. Again, as Anthony Mitchell, Damon Bulmer, and Philip Moroni have headed off on the line. And Nicholas Turner just set a 5.12, putting himself in 13th position. Great starting position for the 2.87. Yeah, Nick will be happy with that one. One of the Alice Locals, one of the many Alice Locals uh, racing in the bike category this year. And there's stories upon stories about people with bikes and how long they've been pre-running over this event and in, in the lead up to the event and there's always so many great great stories about people it's this this race has always been a bike race yes and it's it was originally started there and back and we continue to see these cars progressing and getting quicker and quicker and these athletes on these bikes getting fitter and fitter and it's very very insane to see as our next group off the line, Craig Sanders, Grant Pryor, and Nicholas Turner, uh, and Anthony Mitchell, sorry. Mate, did you hear the rev limit pop down there? So that's a little, uh, that's the H84, Craig Saunders on a KDM 350. You thought it sounded a little pretty revvy compared, you know, we've seen a lot of 500s, a lot of 450s through that 350, that KDM 350 being one of the first of our smaller bore bikes. You could just hear that, that difference in the RPM as he went to pop it off the start line. Yeah, absolutely, mate. And he did pop it off the start line. 
wheels up and he had a real good crack at that. Hey, now listen, down on the start line, we actually have Jacob Smith, who is sitting in P1 in qualifying at the moment, or he has Barna FE501. So over to Jacob Smith. Thanks, guys. Yeah, Jacob Smith, he finished almost four seconds clear of Jack Simpson, who was previously in that sort of top top spot. Yeah, just slightly ahead of David Welsh there. So, Jacob, how was that drive for you? Yeah, it was really good. Um, you know, obviously the time was, was great and I had a, a pretty clean run. I probably left a few seconds out there, to be honest, but um, over the moon to, to be on pole so far. And I mean, there's still a couple of guys to come through that are quite quick. So, um, but yeah, hopefully we can start on the front row and, and be P1 and um, sets me up good for tomorrow. Getting ahead of a name like David Welsh, is that you know, make you feel a little bit comfortable having that four seconds ahead? Uh, it's just nice to know that um, my speed is there and, and the bike's good. And I mean, Walsh, he's, he's the king of the desert for a reason. And, um, you know, to be in front of him is cool. But, uh, you know, it all comes down to tomorrow. It's just qualifying, really. So, um, you know, it's, it, we're in a good spot and uh, just build on it from there. And the rest of today, what do you do prep heading into the race tomorrow? Just relax, really. Get plenty of food in. Um, get to bed early. You know, now I'm sort of dreaming about the race for another 24 hours pretty much, what's going to go down. So just relax, um, make sure my prep is, is spot on and um, just count the hours down till 12 o'clock tomorrow. And you mentioned there's a couple more drivers that have still got, or riders have still got to come through. Um, who are some of those names that you might be watching out for as, as they keep coming? Uh, my teammate, Sam Davey, um, he's uh, in class two, so he's going to be a little later down the, the track. And Ivan Long, who... Um, has done pretty well here in the past. He's he's to come. So there's still a few guys back in the field that are that can put a lap down. But um, you know we're we're in a good spot right now. There's a lot of lot of people here to support Ivan Long as well. There's a name that keeps coming up, so it should be really good. Thank you so much for your time. Good luck. Rest up. Plenty more bikes. Plenty more action happening. We better go get back to our commentators who can bring you all of the updates as they come through. Mate, that Smith family, though, they are a fantastic family of off-road racing. And he was talking about some of the things with the, the little things of the prep and making sure they get the one percenters right. Uh, one year here, they had a bit of a drama where they, they got fuel tanks in and they were they thought they were 11 litres, but they are actually only like 9.9 or, or 10 litres. So they weren't able to actually have enough fuel to make it to their pit stop. And uh, he actually ran out of fuel extremely close to the finish line jump at... Uh, at at Apertura and it's a memory that will be burnt into my mind for a long time we were standing there watching the competitors come in and uh, all of a sudden up over the hill was uh, was Jacob Smith pushing his bike to, to get it to the finish line that's the level of commitment that these guys have to, to want to be able to finish Fink and that's the things they talk about the little one percenters that like that they need to make sure they're on top of to, to, to win the Fink Desert Race. Yeah, absolutely. That was a wild time when they pushed her up over the hill. We we had a good set of split times. We knew where everyone was, and when they didn't come, when we thought they were going to be over the rocks, uh, yes, it was a very, very frantic time as they came and pushed it over and got fuel and, and got to the finish line. So a very interesting race in those days, and it will be no doubt a, a ton of stories from Fink 22 as well. So again, we have got plenty of bikes starting to come through now. Anthony Skeynes is through, Luke O'Donnell's through, Mark McDonald, Alan Henderson, Warren Zerner is all finished as well now. And what I love about the, the H class and the older bracket classes is that you don't just get new bikes. You get those classic bikes that you haven't seen in years and it just takes you back. Yeah, absolutely, mate. Yeah, there's, as we were uh, listening to... Uh, the Smith boys there, they, they actually uh, two-stroke ran through. I mean, two-strokes were the thing in the day with the glory era of CR500s and KX500s and all the Euros that were around in those days, the, the big two-strokes back in the 80s and 90s. So, yeah, pretty amazing there. And I tell you what, what's pretty awesome is that Jack Simpson is also on the line down there. He was sitting in the top spot for a short period of time before Jacob Smith. So, uh, bike number two. Mate, how was it? It was all right. It was a little hairy in spots. Um, the trucks had kicked up a lot of water from the inside of the track, so that was a little slick, different to what we're used to. Um, and, yeah, I, I actually went off the track a little bit and missed a gear, so that was my fault. But other than that, it was a pretty smooth run. Um, 
no moments or anything, so yeah, it's okay. And you're fresh back into the country. You've obviously been racing over in the States for uh, since the end of last year, but not a lot of preparation to be here in Australia. No, not really. A lot of bike time, which is good. That's going to help me throughout the race, but um, track time, usually I do like 5,000 Ks pre-run, and this year I only did about 1,500, so, but I have done my apprenticeship here. This is my fifth year, so I've done plenty of Ks up and down that track. How's the bike looking for the weekend and the long run? No, the bike's unreal. Um, couldn't, couldn't thank OBR Racing enough. Um, Bo put it, I think, fourth outright in the cars as well. So we're having a good run and we're looking forward to uh, putting it on the podium for both car and bike. Yeah, good luck for the weekend. Enjoy. We look forward to seeing how it all goes. Cheers. Thanks for that. Yeah, that's awesome, isn't it? Like, you know, the OBR boys stepping it up and Jack Simpson, what a grab there. And looking good too. I like the gear. I like the fluoro colours, they always have a nicely turned out outfit. And yeah, the boys both stand on top of the podium come the end of the weekend. What a dream weekend that could be. And again, the right gear, the Mason truck, all that, the 413 and along with the two of Jack Simpson. So going to be interesting to see how those go. But again, we've got tons of people through. Craig Saunders, Anthony Mitchell, Grant Pryor all through all these H-class uh, bikes as they keep thundering off the line as well. There's a couple of names in the, in the H class that you've got to look out for, such as H64, Tony Lockett. Tony that's, Lockett. That's a story. That is a story. There's plenty of stories about Tony Lockett. But again, filling it out, there's Scott Brooks, Drew Martin and Scott Baker all through. But these battle packs are coming through, as you said, Dan. Yeah, With absolutely. The little two-stroke H86 is through as well now. And again, look at it. There's just bikes coming and going, and it is fast and furious. And all of these guys are jostling for position. You know, what can be a couple of seconds when you're talking about 600-odd motorbikes is a huge difference positionally. We've actually seen that even with the pro uh, buggies and, and the trucks as well. Like, you know, what used to be not too bad a gap, now five, six, seven seconds can actually change the position quite dramatically. And that's something that's just ever been evolving here at Fink. There used to be a few masters, but I tell you what now, there is a lot of masters out here. There's a lot of, and I don't mean that masters like is in the category, I mean like is in gurus that know how to do this Fink track. There's a lot of guys pre-running, there's a lot of guys putting it all on the line here as the H80 comes across as well. Again, great shots of the H74 making his way around. Matthew Winnitz is finished as well now in class six. Bike 683. That's another one of those little KTM 350s. Hear the difference in the RPM. I tell you what, looks like those two guys have had a heck of a battle the whole way around the Fink track. Yeah, Andrew Taylor, Josh on the H77 and the H76 is Brett Manuel, both on KTM 450s. Have a look at these guys, the H-Class again, just cranking off the line. H81 across the line, Gene Fewings. The 21 and the 22 as well. They're off the line, that's Paul Grosner and Craig Harvey. Again, the guys are really favouring these 500s now, aren't they? Used to be a thing that that wasn't such a uh, push, but now I think that the the 500s have really taken over the desert industry, as I call that, and a Yamaha 450 comes across. <laughs> the old that is, that is how it goes, commentating team. But anyway, WR450 of Jason Dyball, H82. But again, H74 across the line as well. David MacArthur, Sam Davey is across the line. Craig Hiller. Or Hillier, I apologise. Oh, look, the Star Spangled Banner on the line. Great outfit there. And he's taken the whole shot as well, so... He's definitely getting after it. Uh, that's John Hafey, and he's on a, a beta. The H72 across the line as well, Dylan Desbo. So another one of those bikes that uh, a little bit of a bespoke... Type, the, well, even the, the fact better. that it's an RR250, so a little 250, he will be revving that thing to the moon and back to keep up with these big 500s. So that was Derek Rowe, Tony Dalkin, and John Hafey off the line there. That's our H14, H20, and H19.
Again, fantastic shots. And that dust, it is definitely the breeze is pushing nicely and keeping it to a minimum. There's been some years where it's been so thick, boys, that you cannot see through the camera work. Whereas now it is quite nice. It's holding off. And again, you can see that flag flying as the Method Race Wheels prologue continues to deliver. Bikes going every which way. Action aplenty. A little two-stroker there of the H69 across the line. That's Michael Ricketts. Now, that's interesting. That's actually a 520 SMR. Well, that's what it's listed as. What does that mean, Dan? Well, I think you're throwing me under the bus there, mate. I didn't know they made a 520 two-stroke, but apparently they do. I'll have to brush up on my KDM knowledge. But Rodney Irwin also off the line on his 350. There's a CRF 250 off the line of Alexander Long as well for 94. And again, a lot of these guys not just racing, but ticking off those bucket list racing items. The HO4 of Phil Peterson off the line. The H33 of Anthony, uh, sorry, Rodney Anthony. And Matt Gray on the H46 off the line, as well as Paul Haradine on the H70 comes across, and the H66 also across the line. They're coming in thick and fast now in those small little battle groups. It's great to see it, how tight it is on this prologue track. And they're all, as we've said uh, this morning, we, we, they are jostling for positions. It's especially in those in those in those lower ones you you don't want to throw it all away no exactly right carol mccone is through now on the 506 and shane menzies on the 757 now a single starter on the class off the line now as well and giving it plenty the h64 one hand on the wheel there just having a little bit of a breather but again the crew off the line, they've just started. That's Lincoln O'Connor on the H02 in his class eight bike. Oh, now what have we, we've already got a muffler flapping here. Something flapping on the back of that. It might be a number plate mount, I think, flapping on the back of that bike there. Hopefully we haven't had an excursion off, class, off track, but at the moment doesn't look to be any lack of pace here. Again, Adrian Copeland on the H58 is finished now. Again, no changes to our top 10 or so at the moment. But again, keep an eye out on some of these other clubs. Like, again, we, we sort of talked about Ivan Long. There is a few guys. Nathan Trigg is one that can uh, potentially push himself up into that list as well. Again, off the line now is David Lloyd on the 898 KDM 500. And H55 of Jason Williams has just finished up. He's sitting in position 42 at the moment. Again, plenty of live timing, all on the thinkdesertrace.com.au website. If you're following along, there's plenty of options. If you're listening along on YouTube, welcome. I hope you're having a fantastic day wherever you are. You should be in Alice Springs. But we understand that you've got to do some other things every now and then. But again, a big shout out from us to you. Thanks for listening along on the live feed. And if you guys are in the crowd here at beautiful downtown Alice Springs out at the racetrack, well, good morning to you guys as well. It's almost, oh no, it is afternoon, I apologize. It's 12.37, the moments are slipping away. As the H, I believe that was the 22 of Paul Grovesner is over the line. We've got Tim Phillips and Roy Chamberlain off the line, as well as Anthony Perdue. And Drew Martin just finished on the H52. Again, can't say it enough. There is action aplenty as we look around the track. Again, don't go anywhere, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure you get yourself a warm beverage or a cold beverage if you're that way inclined. Grab yourself some merch. There's still some stuff down there. Pizza and all the good stuff out at the track because we've got a long day of racing. And again, 
Those class fives are gonna be on later and there's gonna be some big boys still coming and they're gonna be on the bopper trying to shake themselves into the top 10 as the H27 comes across the line now. That is Simon Coffin on the 500 EXC. Oh, the boys jostling again, shoulders out, having a good crack here. The H21 across the line of Craig Harvey. Adrian Donaldson, Warren Smith and Grant Bertrup are off the line as well now. Craig Harvey's put himself into 36th provisionally. That's a nice run, good position to be in. Have a look at this. Again, the bright outfits working for him. They have had a great run there. John Haffey on the H14. Again, the RR250 by Beta. Oh, look, still running the red light on that one. The boys coming out of enduro mode. Probably took her to the shops this morning to pick up the milk and bread and just out doing a Fink prologue later on. One of the joys of these true enduro bikes. KDM do build a fantastic piece of equipment, as do many manufacturers. But the H20 now, have a look at that. Got the big desert tyre on it. Those boys are ready for action. Well, DC, just throwing it out there, mate. One of the interesting things is you did talk about those... Uh about those Euros, mate. And we talk about a guy that probably really got the Euro train started here at the Tats Fink Desert Race, making that switch from Honda to KTM is Ben Grabham. And uh, Kasai has him now down on the wall at the finish line. Thanks, guys. I sure do. Currently still in sixth overall. We've got Ben Grabham, <laughs> four-time winner, bit of a king of Fink. Uh, ben, what did you think of that ride out there? Uh, the track's pretty challenging. Um, I heard Toby say before a slipper, and I was thinking, no, nah, this track ain't slippery until I got out there. And I was like, he's right, uh, the water's dragged onto some of the clay, and it made it hard work. I just did a, a clean, safe lap. Like, I have a good idea what's ahead of us. So it wasn't too uh, rushing things, trying to make mistakes. And hey, I'm here in one piece and looking okay so far. And you're just saying before, you know, it's been a few years since your last win, but how are you feeling heading into to this one? Are you confident with some of the guys ahead of you? Yeah, I am. Like it, it feels like a lifetime since I've been winning out here. I've managed race teams and done lots of different things since, but it's, it's nice to be on the bike, fit and healthy, and, and uh, it's going to be a challenging track after the rain the last few weeks, but I reckon it'll be good, and, and uh, hopefully I've got a few tricks up my sleeve for some of these younger ones. And you're talking a lot about that, that, war, that rain that we have seen. It's changed the track and also, as Toby was saying, quite slippery. Um, what is the key when you get out there tomorrow? Uh, eyes ahead really because um, it's all the unknown like we don't we don't really know what the trophy trucks and buggies and cars and everything does that does ahead of us so just yeah just keep looking be on our toes and and just be ready for the worst somebody was saying earlier actually that it when the buggies go ahead of you it can kind of mix things up and make it a bit softer or do you, do you, are you expecting some of that or, or what do you think will happen definitely like I like the cars go ahead because it totally mixes it up and changes it up to what the locals are used to so it's um it'll become a brutal racetrack and hey uh, I, I think with the rain the fastest guy is going to get to the front either way awesome well thank you so much for giving us your time i know six you want to be a little bit higher up there but good luck tomorrow good luck over the weekend and i hope it goes really well we'll come grab a couple more of the riders as they keep coming through yeah bed grab them there saying it feels like a lifetime ago that he was out here winning races but mate Grabo back in the day, I mean, that is a memory that sticks with us for a long time, particularly back in the day when, when Grabo was battling it out with, with Toby Price there. It was just, it was absolute chaos. We talked about it. Uh, it was something that in the lead up to Fink, the, the Grabo versus Price, even though they're on the same team, it, it dominated a lot of our conversation before. So great to see Ben Grabo back, fit, healthy, and on a bike. There's a man that has plenty of experience on this Fink track. Well, Kate. Okay. Sorry, KTM um, weren't a, a a brand that was synonymous with the the Tatsfink Desert Race. They did a lot of development in those years when Ben and Toby were going at each other, and it did produce a lot of exciting uh, fights over the years. And to have Ben grab him with Toby, Toby would have learnt so so much. And when KTM saw that team and they did that Fink Assault for that one two-year period. They got those bikes up 
to a position where they've been on the top step since um, and it's been hard to get them off. Yeah, absolutely. It's probably something I was just about to mention before we went to bed, but we we're talking about all the Euros that are here. We've got Beaters, we've got KDMs, we've got Sherco. As I look through the list, I think I've only seen maybe three or four Hondas, whereas back when Ben was riding on a Honda, like that was the bike to have out here. If you weren't riding a Honda, you were you were getting laughed at as you put you know pulled into the prologue. People were laughing, thinking you know this guy's not even a chance. So it's very interesting how the the game can uh, be mixed up and messed with by by what's winning at the time. Yeah, that Desert Edge team, that Desert Edge Honda team were an uh, unbeatable force. And now as we go down onto the start line, we've got local boy Luke Hayes down with Rihanna. Luke Hayes, thank you so much for joining me up here on the stage. You've done your run in prologue. I mean, how was it for you? Yeah, look, um, the run today wasn't exactly what we were after. Um, still on the fifth row currently, which is um, promising. But yeah, look, the, uh, the, tr the cars made the track quite challenging today. Um, lots of surface water still out on the track, so perhaps it's a little bit too tentative. Um, but you know, we've got a 450 odd k's of desert to chew through for the next couple of days, so hoping to uh, recoup some ground. We were lucky enough to have a chat with Dave Walsh as well after his run. Again, a little bit disappointed with his outcome. Have you guys had a chance to talk to each other and, and suss out where it sort of went wrong for you both? Yeah, look, we've had a brief chat. Um, we're sort of busy sort of trying to get back to HQ and um, prep for tomorrow at the moment. But uh, yeah, look, both of us sort of, uh, I think, got individual things that we need to work on for tomorrow. And, you know, uh, this is only a very small percentage of the overall weekend. But yeah, look, um, plenty to uh, go home and think about this evening. So just let us know what's the plan from now on until tomorrow morning. What do you have to do to prepare yourself for the weekend? Basically just get the bikes prepped, um, a couple of minor adjustments just to make sure that they're ready to go for tomorrow. And then for me, just focusing on the mindset, you know, um, just approaching the rest of the weekend. Um, yeah, and just making sure I keep a lid on it and make it all happen. We wish you all the best. Good luck. I hope it really goes well for you. Thanks so much. Thank you. Well, Lukey Hayes there with Rihanna, and that was an interesting chat as well. These these cars, those high-powered um, trophy trucks, have really made this track a handful for our bike competitors. Yeah, and that's something that they're going to have to battle all weekend long. The track is going to chop up. It is going to change. You heard Ben Graben talking about that. But if there is a man that is going to understand this track, it is going to be uh, Luke Hayes there. He's an Alice Springs local. His family actually owns a station that the Fink track runs on. So he's been riding the Fink track since the day he could walk. You know, so a, a great effort there. And I tell you what, him and Walshy, both yeah, Alice Springs local, you were talking about it before, the, the hopes and dreams of the city ride with those guys. Um, you know, it's something that Alice Springs takes a lot of pride on itself for a long time there with the likes of, uh, like, Greenfield and that. They they defended this race from the out-of-towners, from the out-of-staters. You know, it was something that Alice Springs really held close to their heart that they were the, they were the kings to beat on the bikes and now we've got these out of towners these out of staters coming along and, and taking that competition so Walshy and Hazy they'll want to be making sure that they fight their way back up to the top and, and keep those stinking out of staters right where they belong and that's not on the top step yeah they they definitely will with with Alice riding on their back they have a heap and heap of support and and as you said with with these interstaters are coming in with with the teams and and all this infrastructure, it is, it is harder for a, a privateer or someone who, who's supporting themselves over the weekend. Um, but then again, you look at those, those smaller blokes that have been here, they have lived on this track. And I mean, they have lived on this track. So yes, the track conditions change every year and the bikes and the cars, it, it all changes. But for those locals, there's always been a local's advantage because the amount of time you spend on that track determines how you're going to go for the weekend, I, yeah. I really do believe. Yeah, absolutely. It, it is a huge advantage to get out there and do a bit of pre-running and, and get yourself up and down the track as we see the 881 of Jason Gunther across the finish line. Actually, that is a stonking run. It's six minutes flat, so a great run there for uh, Jason Gunther on the 881. But you are right, you hear stories of back in the day where guys would go and that, that drive down, that, that drop off jerry cans of fuel along the way and then that drive back and, and that ride down and get to the 80k mark, that stop, that fuel their own bike up, that get down to the 160, the 170, fuel their bike up and that ride down to Apertula and back and, and 
fuel up on the way back and then get into the car, drive back down the Fink service road, pick up their jerry cans, and that's what the locals used to do to, to try and keep the competitive edge. Yes, they did, and as this great footage goes out, to everyone around the world who's, who's joining us on the live stream and to everyone here in Alice who is at the start-finish line precinct, I hope you're having a lovely day. The weather's actually quite nice uh, at the moment and we have a heap of competitors still to come. We're currently in Class 8. And you are 100% right there, Josh. That's one thing you just mentioned, the weather. When's the last time you've been at a Fink Desert race and it's been so overcast. Are we going to see rain over the race weekend? That is another thing that is going to really throw a spanner in the works here. I think it was a hot topic. And last year, you saw that tiny, tiny little bit of rain uh, on race day two, actually, when we were waiting for the cars to come in. There was a bit of rain. Um, so it's going to be interesting. I, to, to be completely honest, I don't think it will rain this weekend. If it does, yes, it definitely will throw a spanner in the works. But um, with with the amount of rain we've had in the last 12 months and the cars that are going to be putting on a putting it down for leather, it's going to be very, very interesting. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I mean, it, I can't remember the last time I was at a Fink event and it involved wet weather during the race weekend as well. So this is another little spanner in the works for the race weekend, but but looking forward to see how this all plays out. Yeah, well, something that's even interesting about the Fink track is it is 226 Ks. I mean, that fact that there can be rain in the center section and not at the end and not at the start. We've seen years before where they've literally raced through rain and, you know, like had, and it's been dry and dusty, you know, 200 Ks down. It's a pretty crazy race when you think about it like that. Yeah, Bo Robinson was telling us a story on the Dirtbags podcast the other day that uh, his dad, Brian, was out in front leading the race and uh, he was actually in front of the rain and the cars about 10 minutes behind were in the rain. And they had a mechanical DNF and, and they broke down, but their car, no mud, nothing whatsoever on it. And all the other cars covered in mud as they uh, as they came past poor Brian as we see the 844 machine get off the start line. Now those two boys really going for it. Yeah, absolutely, as we have some other finishes, the 873, the KDM 300 is through, as well as the 500 of Matthew Evans. Sorry, that was Jason Willis on the 8C73. So again, all our good Class 8 competitors. Great ride around here. Again, what a sea of orange we have here. KDM really do deserve the accolades. They put the effort in in the desert. But off the line, we did have a, a Beta RR 480. KDM 500 EXC, James Clark, or sorry, Clark James, Rowan Adams, and Declan Gibbings. They're out there battling their battle in prologue, trying to get the best position they can for their run down to Apatula. Oh, plenty of rev limit of bop out the back there. Couple of yammies and a Husserberg FE 570. Just something close to your heart. I do know you like a 570. I think that's the first Husserberg we've seen over the weekend. There was a, that was another one in era time. Ryan Branford ran a 570 there for a little while. The big bike. He was very fast. But again, a couple more bikes over the line now. Michael Jackson on the 869. Brendan Summerfield on the 867 is across the line on his 500. I didn't realise that. Michael Jackson is riding a KDM 890R rally. I missed that. Oh. Wowzers. Josh is telling terrible jokes up here in the commentary box, I can tell you that. But a KDM 890R rally. And he's done pretty well too. He's put himself in 66th position. 7.18 for a time, so all you enduro, or your, what do they call that? Uh, yeah, anyway, the rally guys, having a good ride out here, will go down on one tank, I imagine, no pit stops. Again, off the line, we've got Sean Frazier, Anthony Chapman, and Troy Daly, talking to Troy before, so there you go, there's Troy Daly off the line in the 837, doing the double this year, the Iron Man, as it's being coined. Billy Geddes has done the Ironman. Toby Price has done the Ironman. 
And now we have a good crack at it this year. There's a couple of people doing the Ironman. That's impressive. Yeah. Because that is not something easy logistically. No, it's not. And you've got to, you've got to have a, a good team behind you because you may miss that cutoff point as well. You've got to get down to Fink in a time and you've got to get back to Alice in a certain amount of time to get back on the bike. And what crazy person wants to race down to Fink in however long it takes them, around two hours, probably two and a half for a can-am, uh, depending, and then fly back, jump straight back on the bike and go and punish yourself without a cage. Yeah, that's exactly right. Over a 1,000 kilometres of competitive and, and 500 or 452 of them is on a motocross bike. That's pretty wild for sure. But again, so many people coming through now. We've just had the 857 of Chris Field through, the 866 of Matthew Masterton. We've had the 864 of Kit Ballon, the 858 of Miles McIntyre. So guys, if these are your riders, give them a big cheer because they're home from their prologue run. Another little two-banger coming across. Doing that pre-mix life right there. What do they say? Mixing gas, hauling ass? Something like that. Something like that. Miles McIntyre, anyway. Well, you can smell the width of it, actually. Yeah. Now, actually, out of interest, I see this as Kit Ballon, 868, who is through, and I missed it. He's on a 1989 Honda XR250. Hey? Air-cooled life. These guys have got it going on. And that is one of the great things about Fink is you look particularly with the motorbike guys, they get right into it. You know, there's guys riding old two-bangers and there's guys that, you know, they're here for the laugh. 8.53 is across the line now. Well, talking about doubles, you look at Billy Geddes. Yep. Bill's look, look what that man rode down to Fink. The crazy, <laughs> crazy man. <laughs> yeah, he's definitely a, a, a wild man. It, it was very cool that he was able to achieve what he had to achieve and get that done. So Dean McMillan through now on the 852 as well as Mark Sires on the 853. So if you think that all the numbers are quite close, they let them go back in the categories. They actually do just do reverse numbers. So it'll be from like, say you're a class five bike, it'll be 599, 598, whatever number you pick. So if you pick uh, 502 as your number, it is a bit of a long day, but 859 through now. That's Andrew Nicholson. And also Paul Murphy came through on the 855. Again, great shots being captured on our live screen. And I hope you're just, oh, leg out the side. He's leaning into us, staying away from that tire barrier. And then drag racing to the finish. Wow. Beautiful race there from Michael Thompson and Andy Costco. Those boys battled all the way to the checkered flag here at the Method Race Wheels Prologue. Oh, we're back on the bumper. Couple of Yamahas, couple of Hondas, wheels in the air. Troy Blythman off the line on his WR450. Corey O'Sullivan. Oh, Kawasaki KX250. Matty Holgate, if you're listening at home, mate, here's the green quacker for you. He's coming through. And a 250, no doubt. He's going to be on the bop with that one. Yeah, I can't wait to hear that one across the line. That one is going to be music to all you two-stroke enthusiast ears. Yeah. 13,000 RPM. A little bit of float. She'll love it. Hopefully. Brian Bryce is also off the line too, 826. Hopefully he's uh, tweaked the fuel jet for the uh, for the denser, colder air out here. Otherwise, she might run a little bit lean. That not that a crazy, de like, talking back about the ages now, a lot of these KTMs, these Husserbergs, everything like that, all modern fuel-injected bikes, so you don't have to worry about that anymore. He's even trying to kickstart that mongrel thing in the cold morning down at Apertula. I'm glad it's him, not me. Leo Welch across the line now on his Yamaha and Martin Simons on his um, bike as well and Rowan Adams on his KTM 500. So these 800 boys making their way through the prologue truck, the 8.8 Ks. And yeah, absolutely. And a tough 8.8. We've already heard Grabo talk about it. 
very slippery. Some big ruts from the cars. We actually saw, we were talking about Josh, weren't we? The fact that they've got to get a grader in on the start line to clean up the ruts that these trucks and, and turbo buggies make. So, you know, plenty of horsepower, plenty of motor, and they do change the way that the, the lay of the land, you might say, as the 838 is on screen now. Again, the boys out here, look at the big stag pegs hanging off it. So just if you are watching along at home or are relatively new to Fink, just to fill you in of when we talk about this Class 8 bike, what that actually means is that it is a, an age number. So these guys are, they can ride any capacity bike. So we could see 250s, we could see 500s, we could see 450s. They can ride any size capacity bike, uh, but it's just the age. These guys are the 45 pluses. So anyone over 45, uh, they can still contend for outright position, top 20 position, but they are just designated as a, uh, as a Class 8. As we see a sneaky little pass straight through the middle there. But yeah, so these are our 45 year on over. Otherwise known as veterans. No offence to anyone out there. Mate, I'd ride veteran if I was out here now. So it turns out it's, it sneaks up on all of us, mate. 8.39 is Sean Frazier. He came through on that Husqvarna FE. There's also a Rohammer on 8.42, Rohammer. And Troy Daly, our interview before the, the Ironman, 8.37, also finished. And, oh, Josh, a good time, ran a 6.34. He's sitting in 43rd position for his Ironman attempt. Actually, he might want to back that down. if he's gonna, He, he might have needed to qualify a bit slower for the helicopter home. He's like, oh, mate, I'll, I'll just start at 150 or so. He's on the phone already, just changing that uh, Robertson 44 to a Jet Ranger. Yeah, needs a Jet Ranger, needs a light prop plane. So, no, that's pretty cool because that's interesting too, just the logistics of all of it. You do have to think, like when Toby did it, now Bill was, was impressive, there's no question about that, but what the difference there was that Bill qualified mid-pack on the motorbike and that meant that he had that extra time to fly home. The difference was Toby was second or third down into Fink and then I think he was third into Fink, was he? And then had to get on the plane and then be first off the line for the motorbikes. Yes. So that makes it a game changer there. It's very difficult. Well, you think about the logistics of that, Dan. We know when we um, were having a chat to him that he, he mentioned that they actually even had a, like obviously being a bike rider first and foremost, they had a cutoff time as we see the boys getting a little bit the loose off, four on off, the back wheel. off the start line. That's a guy that's having a, a good time. But yeah, logistically, Toby had to set himself a deadline. And if he was not in Apertula by, uh, say, you know, 10, 15, that they literally had to park the car on the side of the road. Didn't matter if they were five k's from the finish line, they would have to park the car on the side of the road, get in the helicopter and head back to the finish line, uh, to the start line. Yeah, that's exactly right. So it's very interesting and very different because that does change the game a fair bit. 833 through the line now. And again, we've had some, so Shane Sullivan's through, Adrian Hermson is through. That's the 835 and the 833. Again, both guys running great times there. Paul Elborn is through, Darren Sheriff too, 836 and 834. So again, if you're cheering along at home, hopefully somewhere nice and warm, enjoying the live feed. Again, streaming around the world. Make sure you get on and share it on all your socials. Tell all your mates to jump on the live feed and have a chat, have a good time. Because we're out here at the Method Race Wheels Prologue. The boys have put a big couple of checks on the line. Saw before they're hanging wheels up and championing it. These guys just love the Fink Desert Race. 2022, what a year, what a crowd, what a race group. It's exciting times here as the 8.30 skids across the line. That's Nick Anderson. Again, Damon Bingham is across the line too on the 8.29. Yeah, Method putting up some awesome uh, set of wheels for the winner um, of the prologue plus a trophy. So big shout out to Method. And uh, I can tell you a lot of those boys are pretty happy with getting a set of Methods for their daily run around. Yeah, absolutely, mate. Great brand. And uh, the strongest, lightest. I should know all of that statement, shouldn't I? Josh from Curran, come on, pull it together, mate. Lighter, faster, stronger. Oh, there you go. The meth thing, it is great. And we run them on our own personal vehicles there. I, I do agree that they are great looking and great strong set of wheels that will put up to the abuse that you can put them through. 
Troy Blytham is through two on his WR450. That is the 825. And the 828 of Michael Ingerson is through as well on his KDM500. Ryan Bryce just shot through on the 826. Again, many of the guys dealing nicely with the whoops. Now, I think a few of our new class are coming through here, Joshua. So we've had a little, little dust gap to settle. And the lights are now flashing. The boys are up on the bopper as we are away. <laughs> He's looking back. Making sure he's checking the competition. Mate, you've checked out. You're good to go. 802 is the one you want to watch this one here. Rick Hall. That is pretty cool. Rick Hall, a very famous face at the Fink Desert Race, running in the 802. Philip Dunlop also off the line, and Peter Welsh on the 803. Corey Sullivan has just come through on his little Quacker KX250. And Henry Bolker. Again, some good times. Actually, Henry just ran through with a 34th position, 621. Again, we've got a lot of bikes to come, but that's a great position to be in. Would certainly guarantee you inside a top 100 starting place, I would think. Yeah, a lot of these guys in this uh, in this class eight, they uh, they still come to play. That's for sure. Even though they're a little bit older, that is actually quite a competitive class. You see that uh, our class winner usually ends up well within that top 50. So a lot of the Class 8 riders, obviously probably a little bit older, a little bit wiser, a little bit more experienced, know how to get themselves down to the finish line rather than maybe some of the younger bulls in the Class 2, the Class 4, the, the, the 500 and the 450 four the stroke. Bull, old bull, you Yeah, reckon. absolutely. How does that story go, Dan? Mate, if you're the smart one, you're the old bull. That's all I'm telling you. Ask your dad. <laughs> Moral of the story is that these guys are doing an exceptional job of making their way around this rough and slippery prologue track. Again, now that you, you know, we've heard all these stories, oh, prologue's gonna be easy. There's gonna be no trucks inside the top 10. Very interesting that now that it's all boiled out, Fink has once again proven that it tests everyone's mettle and we are back in the game. I think that everyone's in the position that they should be in, honestly. And same deal with the bikes. You know that it's going to be a top pack. Those top ten are going to be furious. And it's going to be great. I tell you what, the real winners are the spectators here today. Every time they put something in the water. Every time I come here, it gets harder to leave. But yeah, you, you're 100% right. And I think you are when you say that people are where they should be. People are placed where they should be. But, but no one's relaxed, anything like that. We've got four trucks. Five pro buggies and a pro light all inside the top ten. And then we look at our, our top placing at the moment. You know, Jacob Smith, Jack Simpson, David Walsh. These guys, we heard in the interview with Jacob Smith before where he said, like, you know, Walsh is the king of the desert for a reason. Like, I I'm not I'm not thinking now that I've, you know, that I've got the top spot in prologue, that I'm, I'm faster than him and I'm, I, I, you know, it's just, it's one and done for me now. I, I, you know, Jacob knows that he's still got a lot of work ahead of him. You know, still got to race the track, still got to race Walshy, still got to race Jack Simpson, you know, because the bikes start two at a time as well. So there is that that competition there as well. You're absolutely right. Well, Jacob Smith's known the absolute highs and lows of this race. So, yeah, exactly right. Jack Simpson, David Walsh, Brody Walters, Callum Norton. Again, so many great races there. And it's going to be one of those wild years where off the line, again, if you can get yourself down trackside anywhere in that first 60 kilometers or further, but anywhere in that first 60 kilometers, it's just going to be hell for leather. Now, just a little reminder, if you are out in the crowd and planning on being down trackside, 20 meters from the track, please. We need you guys to stay back 20 meters for the track. It's for the safety of yourself. It's for the safety of the riders and, uh, you know, it's a smart thing to do. It, you know, please position yourself smartly. Don't be on the outside of corners. Don't be over, like hitting over the top of berms and stuff like that. We really encourage you guys to, to use your head and have a think about where you're gonna set yourself up. You know, we're all about getting a great vantage point, watching the race and everything like that. But, but that yeah. one thing to remember, 20 meters back yeah. from the track, please. Josh, I think it's a big thing, mate. As an old ex-race car driver, do you like the I3 under the bus there? But as a race car driver, like one of the keys to note is that, yeah, sure, it's sort of professional, but it's loose and fast, isn't it, down there? There's a lot of there's a lot of error out there. So do not think that these guys are, are infallible. 
They, you know, parts break, things happen, drivers are wa throttled down, there's big humps out there that people aren't expecting. So, again, plan for the unexpected. That's yes. the real key. Make sure you put yourself in a safe position. And, again, enjoy the track. It is such a great event that we have here in, uh, in the desert, in the centre of Australia, the heartland. And the other thing is just please be respectful. Like, if an official comes and talks to you and asks you to move back or move to a different position, like, they're just doing it because we want this great race to continue for another 45 years into the, into the future. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, mate, the 815 of Jonathan Taylor is over the line. John Downey's home. Damien Berge is also home. Paul Ryan. Uh, Robinson, I apologize, 812. So, you know, there's plenty of bikes. Brad Perryman, Jonathan Ipple, and Glenn Chambers are all off the line. Again, our Class 7 bikes now. So that was the 784, the 778, and the 783 off the line. They have cracking on at Prologue. This is where it all starts. This is the start of the race weekend. We've had the fun bits, boys. We've had the Thursday night party. We've had the Friday night party. Now we're looking forward to the Monday night party. Yeah, That's but... where it's going to be. All these boys are already sipping champagne, but we've got 452 Ks to do. Actually, while I've got the microphone and a, and a bit of a crowd here, how do we get a petition going to get Bo Jangles back up and started? That's all <laughs> I want to know. Like, Bo Robinson, OBR, like, I know those guys are keen. Like, hit me up on socials. We'll, we'll get Bo Jangles back up and started. <laughs> Yeah, that was a uh, an era in time, Bojangles at Alice Springs for sure. I can tell you boys, I think a lot of Alice Springs locals would be very happy to sign that petition <laughs> and it would probably be open on Monday. There you go. There okay, you go. dead Do current official on Instagram, hit me up. <laughs> <laughs> Set up. Oh, very cool. Yeah, just looking through, yeah, again, Laurie Fry's finished, 806, Philip Dunlop, Rick Hall has made it through with a 6.0 by 22nd wow. position. Rick Hall. <laughs> but I tell you what, uh, Philip Dunlop's done a good run there too. 8.04, obviously having Rick right in front of him, not a disadvantage, 26th position. So that's actually sh shuffled our top 10. Us uh, top 10, top 30. I'm sorry, boys. I meant top 30 on the list that I've got here. So it has made a few moves. But how cool is that? The legend, Rick Hall. Just brushing up here, Rick Hall, a four-time winner, or five-time winner. Ooh, five -time, I don't think five -time. it's five. Because yeah. it, it was uh, Rick Hall that Grabo had to match, and and Toby, and Toby with yep. a six-time. Yep, that, that's right. So Rick Hall, an absolute legend of off-road racing, of, of big desert race. How great is it to see that he is still out here competing? Rick given, Hall, given hope to us. I believe he he dominated for a space of five years, and then uh, an American by the name of Dan Ashcraft, decided he wanted to make a trip out to the Red Centre and wanted to show all these boys that he could ride a motorbike and take out the win. So he took out the win and he took the trophy, but the trophy never came home. Really? So that's an interesting story that some of you may not know about uh, Dan when he ultimately won that King of the Desert back in the 90s and then it came up and then I believe in the, two, the late 90s, early 2000s, Stephen Greenfield then went on his run. Yes. Now I believe that uh, Stephen's young fella Bradley Greenfield is here racing this weekend as well. Actually, in an absolute small world, Dan and I are from Yapoon in central Queensland. Talking. Hi, I'll tell you another great thing, Josh, about this stuff is that what's going to happen is there's going to be awesome media all weekend. We've got some great photographers out there. You know, we've got all the all the mugs on faces over there and all sorts of, oh, sorry, mugs on faces, you know what I meant, faces all over and printed media and bits and pieces. Everyone gets their limelight here at Fink, don't they? And, you know, there's going to be photos and print and social media and Tats Fink Desert Facebook page. It's going to be some really, that's one of the exciting things after Fink, is actually the wrap-up stuff. You know, there's the videos, there's the action. It is uh, one of those all-encompassing events. I really, we lead up and there's probably a month or two where it's all about Fink and then probably a month or two after it's all about catching up and seeing the action and catching all those great things, which is pretty darn cool. Yeah, it's one of those things that I think you, you eat, sleep, dream and breathe Fink, don't you? So, again, that dust has been very favourable in my opinion. It's blowing nicely across the track. You can see the Fink 
uh, flags blowing there as the, the 758, he was hanging it out there. Absolutely having a red hot crack. And the 766, again, uh, JC was telling us about how with these groups, like these age groups, you don't necessarily have to ride a set bike. As we start getting into the fives, fours, threes, twos, and ones, they're going to be specific motorcycle categories, generally for the under 35s, but people can come from anywhere realistically. But at the moment, we've got a big spread of anything from the big 500s to the, you know, 252 strokes and all everywhere in between. The 300 two strokes are quite a popular option as well. The 757 through now and the 756. And again, while we're chatting away, a huge shout out to all our volunteers, officials, everyone that makes this event happen. We heard Yoffa talk last night about how important it is. Realistically, without all of these people that are volunteering, there would be no Fink Desert Race. And that would be a very sad day. So again, make sure you treat them with respect. Give them a pat on the back, a high five. It takes an absolute army to run an event like this. So from us commentators up in the box, we've got the easy job. But here's me saying thanks very much to everyone wearing a jacket this weekend. If you're an official or a volunteer and helping in any way, I'll give you a big shout out as the 155 and the 753 come across the line. Again, some more Class 7 bikes ready to crank off the line. The lights go amber. A little bit of a gap here at the second. Green light is go. We are out of here. And it looks like it's Greg Jackson on the 726 and Robert Poole on the 752 and John Bruce on the 725 off the line at the moment. Again, what a absolute bucket of seven class seven races. They're all having a red hot crack. Again, some great times in there too. James Ross has come across with a 619 in 45th. And Rodney Keogh has run a 6.21 with it to put them in 49th place. Corey Evans is across the line now on the 7.54. And Jason Griffin in the 7.27. Again, a 6.32 putting him in 69th position currently. But again, can't stress this enough. There will be a lot of shuffling here today as we've got a lot of bikes to get through. An all-purple bike. Something a little bit different from Philip Streeter. Sorry, lie, that's probably Peter Bedford on the 748 on that Kawasaki 450. Yeah, Robert Kennedy across the line as well on his 747, that Husqvarna FE 450, it looks like. Yes, and the 745 now. Also looking like they're going across the line, Andrew Summers. KDM, oh, sorry, yeah, KDM 450 EC-F. Then Michael Trasser, the 744 across the line on the beta, or beta. 746, and the 743, Andrew Dunlop through, and Devin Brown. Flashing lights now. Oh, we've had a couple jump the line. Ouch. And unfortunately, it gives them, so, gives them a penalty if you jump the line. As soon as those ambers flashed, they just went for it. The boys are ready to go. But that's Mark Hangman, uh, Hangen, Joshua Stevens, and Dean Mogridge. Yeah, these Class 7 uh, masters, as they, they call them this class, is, again, full, full of uh, <laughs> very experienced riders over, over the years. They've they all these guys have done multiple things or some haven't so they are you'll see a, a little bit of a, a speed discretion in, in some of these classes 
with the more experienced riders being nice and quick like these two blokes coming in through. 741, 742. Uh, Daniel Fergito on his KTM 450. And Chris Drew on his 742 Husqvarna. Yeah, plenty of bikes out on course at the moment. Just looking through the live timing up here. Matt Jones, 714, yeah. Lee Shuring, Darren Fruger, all out and racing. Just keeping some eyes out. John Jackson currently out on track as well. James Morris is through now in the 738. Got the KDM 450 SX, the motocrosser. The boys bring her up on the rev. The 739 through now as well. That's David Greaves. Sorry, I might have said the 709, I think it is. Yamaha. YZ, oh no, YZ450F is off the line. Matthew Wheatley, 739. 737 making it its finish here at the Tats Fink. Desiree Scott Rhodes on that Yamaha 450, placing himself within the top 50 provisionally so far. So a good ride there from him, but... We're still pretty early on in the afternoon. We're only at class seven. We still have six more classes to come. It's crazy to think there's that many people that are lined up to race the Fink Desert Race on a motorbike. I can tell you it is hell down there on a motorbike. But I, it's also one of those things that you cannot describe crossing the line on Monday on the way home, particularly on a bike. It's just one of those things. So I keep saying it, but this is a bike race that the guys are lucky or nice enough to let us ro uh, race at in cars. The 736 of Michael Thompson on his KDM 500 is now across the line as well. Adam Clark, Reggie Nardo, and Gareth Spruels are all off the line. So those guys are on their way. And the 734, the Husqvarna, just getting rev limiter bashed. Ivo Varmitz on the TC449. And yeah, Clinton where he's Letton. going, he don't need no RPM. No, <laughs> that's it. There was nothing left in the tank on that one, the 730. The 733 through as well now. That's Eli Kelly. As those ruts down on the uh, the start line to our prologue track are looking pretty rough at the moment as we have Guy Badger and Jason Mitchell off the line, yeah, across the line, Greg no, no, Jackson. Across, and Gre yeah, Greg Jackson, the 726 on his way back, a good North Queenslander with a 30. That's a pretty darn good spot for Greg Jackson. Yeah, that uh, below six minute mark is, is very high prestige, and that top 30 is split by absolutely nothing it is so so close between those those um those top 30 and i i can't imagine what the uh the intervals are all the way down the field yeah that's right mate it's going to be very tight again this is one of those things when you've got 650 motorbikes it's uh one of those things you can only battle away as much as you can as robert Poole on the 752 is across the line on his wr450f as well 646 for him. Again, anyone riding a sub seven minute out here, they're, they're having a good crack. So, you know, obviously it's easy to look at those 444s and think that that's, uh, that's pretty quick. Well, I can tell you if you're holding on for a six, that's pretty impressive too. So, John Bruce in the 725 now home as well. 722. Yeah. Philip Streeter with Phillip. that one. And a good run there, a 622. The 500 cranked up and cooking. Yeah, the 500s really, really like to rev out here. And 
they are looking like becoming one of the the unbeatable forces out here on the Fink track. Yes, very much an iconic, uh, like that era, that 2010 onwards now. And it's interesting to talk about those eras because, you know, we had the Toby Price, Ben Grabham era. Uh, you know, Davey Walsh is absolutely on a streak at the moment. And now we see Toby move into those truck eras. Like it's going to be one of those things that I think for a good few years now, Toby's going to be uh, at pace for sure in the truck class. But there'll be plenty of people trying to stop. Have a look at that. The 717. Joshua Stevens across the line now. Again, running with 619. Absolutely flying. And the first of our Class 6 bikes now making their way out onto the line. David Murphy, Seamus Reed, Ryan Brown, and John Jackson all out on track. I tell you what, it's good as we've got the live stream going with now with the uh, the yellow bike, the Suzuki. There's something that you don't see enough love for, the old RMZ. So good to see a bit of colour in the field as well. We like all types. Chad Duncan, Adam Ferguson. All off the line now. Matt Jones on the quacker has made it home with a great time. Two of 5.54. Lee Shuring, the Suzuki RMZ 450 we're talking about, is now home with a 6.10. So that's the 7.12. And Darren Faruga in the 7.15 is also home. KDM 350 EXC. Again, have a look at these images. The guys going through the whoops. There's bikes on bikes on bikes out there on the track right now, and they're all having a real good crack at this. No doubt they've got mates they're racing with. There's plenty of competition. And again, it's a good feeling when you get around that corner. The 718, he's made it on the gas gas. Off the line, have a look, the quacker. The 691 on the bopper. He's got the hole shot. The 690 out there as well. And the 692. Oh! The 709 across the line of David Greaves. The YZ450F squeezing every little last bit of horsepower of it. I don't think he could twist that throttle any harder. Yeah, the stadium section looking a little bit worse for wear now as we continue to go through these classes and these bikes the 706 making its way around the track at the moment it's quite a few you'll see them spread out um, through the prologue track as we continue to get into some of our faster categories as we make our way through class 6 at the moment yeah, exactly. We've been talking about it, that we've still got the likes of Trigg, Nathan Trigg, you know, top 20 every day, all day, every day. And then, you know, Ivan Long, his battle for the outright positions here, those guys. But the disadvantage now is the track is rougher. You know, that it's had these 600 motorbikes on it and, you know, how that affects it and also that they've got to go through the traffic. It's going to be very hard now to run a, a, a sub five minute, like a 448 or somewhere in there when you've got to go through traffic. So it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out and we'll keep you up to date with all of that. We heard Jacob Smith say that he was keeping an eye on that situation or not. I don't know if it's classed as a situation, but you know, there is still fast guys coming and plenty of these guys are cracker lacking. As the 705 comes over the line, the 617's home as well, the 708. 707. So Simon Dunbar, Dave Herodine, Adam Clark, Reggie Nadu, and Guy Badger are all home now. As Drew Fisher, Daniel Bryars, they are off the line. Have a look at the speedway leg out. The 701. He's absolutely banging it there. Jason Mitchell with a 615. That puts him in 44th. That looks like the 702. A little bit of race tape on the side. She's good to go. Text her on the number. We're going to think. We're going to have a fat time. Yeah, 
good old speed tape on the side of that one. Definitely going to be making that bike faster. But we'll see how this continues to go as we file through our competitors. And these guys really doing a fantastic job. As the next row of bikes start. I tell you what, Ty Ransom, the 676, had a red hot crack off the line there. Ben Forbes in the 677 and Miles Nichols in the 841 also off the line there. But yeah, what a cracker for Ty Ransom. Had the little look back. He was giving it everything he had. Gareth Spruels is also through with the 704. He was running himself about an eight minute time. And there's nothing wrong with that. Down the track he'll head tomorrow. And no doubt he'll work his way up, down, around. Doesn't really matter. You're setting yourself up. Oh, backing into the corner there. Again, I love the footage that we get on the live feed. The boys, they're having a good time out here. They're riding their little hearts out. Again, have a look at this. It's a drag race to the first corner. Jason Parker, Scott Huggins and Nick Warren are all off the line. David Murphy is through now on the 697. He's got across the finish line. Again, you can just see that little bit of lingering dust, but it will not be enough to affect their positions and their time. Plenty of opportunity to pass out here this weekend. Again, it's just how the boys deal with those big ruts that the cars have started to really chew up. And no doubt now with another 650 tyres over it. Again, a late pass right at the end there. The action never stops, does it? As the 692 is on screen now. But again, David Murphy, Chad Duncan, and Ryland Brown. Adam Ferguson home as well on the 693. And off the line, Justin Merrick, Jake Oliver, and Ty Kirkwood. Again, the boys getting into those berms, nice and high. Foot out, got all the motocross style going on. Interesting to see the different rider styles too. Some of the guys down nice and low, some of them up on the pegs. The 699 is coming across the line, the big KDM. Yeah, interesting to see how, how so many different people do have different riding styles for certain conditions and, and certain ways of, of riding. And it is a, a spectacle to watch these guys work these bikes and the suspension and as you see that uh, 657 getting real loose nearly uh having a run in with the uh, method Look at race this. wheels they are they've just raced it to the first corner leg out flapping off the side josh they are great images that we have here again on the big screen it's funny isn't it everyone loves that first corner i must admit i'm a bit of a first corner fanatic too Sometimes jumping the line is just part of the game. I can promise you though, you get penalized heavy for it. Ask me how I know. Oh, as the boys get a little loose coming into the berms. Joel Singleton across the line on his KX450. Yeah, these bikes are coming in thick and fast continually. There's nothing but action happening here as the 690 comes across the line. Yeah, that Nick Stetcher, 690 on the Sherco 5. Oh, wheel up for the 650. Oh, and again. Now, this guy's just showing off here. Yeah, who's the 650? We need to know. That is Daniel uh, Demaris uh, with Samuel Horn and Nathan Price out there with Thomas Doke crossing the line. Yeah, the 687 home now. That looked like the 690 flashing past us. Although, interestingly... Mitchell Patton just come up on our live numbers, 191. I don't think it is the 191. But again, 
Method Race Wheels Prologue cranking along nicely as we get these bikes through. And again, look at all the bikes lined up on that grid. We're only really just starting to get into it. We're class sixing at the moment. Yeah, still a heap of bike competitors to come. Still a, still a couple of big names touted throughout that throughout that uh, pack of people who are behind us forming up for their prologue lap. And as we've been we've been saying, having this many bikes on the track and the conditions changing uh, for those big names that unfortunately didn't make it home or had issues last year at Fink, it is going to be extremely hard to um, get that bike under a, a five minute um, time. And if you are going to get it um, under that, I will take my hat off to you because. Now, Josh, have a look at this on our live stream. Again, they're catching all the him. This old mate here, I can't quite see his number, 486 or 186, but he has a ton of pace. He's picked up a couple of people through those big whoops. Again, he is on one of the class six bikes, so that will not be his number, but we are cheering him home at the moment because he's just having a red hot crack here. And we've got a few more boys off the line. Gavin Wulno, Ben Cardenas, Lucas Puckle. And again, back to the action in the stadium because I tell you what, there is some stellar riding happening here. And again, you can't get any more beautiful backdrop than the beautiful red center. There's something about that dirt, isn't there, Josh? It just, well, it, you are home, but it calls us home constantly. You know, we always look forward to these fink trips. There's always a story to tell. And I tell you what, that is a great ride there. Again, we've got Drew Frischer home. Miles and said Scott Huggins, it was, the 665 on that KDM 450. He's just run up. 5.36 through the pack. And I tell you what, Jason Parker on the 6.80 was coming with him. He ran a 5.49, so two sub six minutes through the pack. That's super impressive. Yeah, definitely is very, very impressive. So as, we, as we've said, it is really anyone's game still. There is still top 20, top 30 positions up for grabs. It's ever changing is this, uh, this field. So... You never know where you might slot in to that top 30. And then again, it's it's about trying to get a, a dust-free run, but it's going to be hard once you get um, out of that top 30. Yeah, that's right. Scott Huggins in the 665 put himself in 20th at the moment. That's a super impressive effort. Uh, you know, absolute credit to him for coming through the pack and putting himself in a strong position. He should be proud of that, especially for a class six. I, I know we don't want to admit to getting older, but damn, that's a, that's a great ride against a, a very young and fast crowd. So again, looking through, still plenty of bikes off the line now. Is Nick Warren, uh, sorry, uh, Darren Scott Dorbar, Charles Hunt and Bradley Murphitt, and Justin Melnerick is back on the 659, so he's had a nice, clean qualifying run. Again, you can see just how rough it started getting. Look at that. It's a typical thing. Now the berm essentially has rolling whoops. That's something that you just cannot fathom until you're here and out in the red center, is when you're going over those big jumps and stuff, what they call the, the Fink 40k dune jump and that. It has, you know, knee-deep whoop rollers coming up to it. How those men and uh, just jump off the end of those 40s and that sort of thing, it is simply insanity. You ever get the chance to come and have a walk or have a look around the Fink track? I tell you what, it is a dead set eye-opener. You think you understand looking at the uh, TV and looking at, the, uh, you know, you've seen the videos, you've seen the YouTube clips, and then you come out here and you're like, whew, this is a different game. You don't understand the sheer um, ext extremities of, of the track. So in spots, you can have dips that are knee deep in some spots. It's 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 an ever-changing track. It's, it's always, and I think we forget, it's also technically a public road for some people as well. So um, it's, it's, it's a big event and this, this track um, is it writes its own story every year it 
it continues to put up something new every year as well. So we'll see what happens this year. Yeah, absolutely, mate. And I think the key there is that, you know, again, it's got, you're talking about the holes, and I, I totally agree. It's got some big holes in it. But the crazy bit is that it's for 70 kilometers. Like, you get down into the Bond Doom and Whoops, and, and, you know, it's up the hills, down the hills, over the hills, around the corners. There's, there's whoops on the corners. There's whoops on the step-ups. It's just a, it's a, a totally different experience uh, from anything that I'd ever ridden or driven before, that's for sure. So it's, it's definitely exciting times out here. Hey, the 657 of Sam Watson came through while well talking with Robert Shaw, Thomas Jacobson. Big wheel stand over the line there for Daniel Damaris. He definitely wants to get maximum life out of that front tyre. Basically wheeling the whole prologue track, but the 650 ran a good time. 2.620 was his time. That puts him in 68th position at the time, at the moment, I apologise. And plenty of bikes lined up. Again, it's so cool to see all these little battles happening, you know, over unders, guys chasing through. And look at those ruts, Josh, that have formed on the start line. Yeah, yes, they're monsters. And you've got to pick sort of the right line out of there as well. You've got to set your bike up correctly, otherwise it is, as you can see, we're going to go, ooh, nearly three wide, uh, two wide into that first corner. And yeah, these guys are not uh, letting off. They are whiskey throttle the whole way around this track, I do oh, believe. Oh, whiskey throttle like that. Yes, yeah, Scott Risk is off the line. Alan Graham and Matthew Shanks. And Samuel Horn has made his way home. Rhett Gibson on the 646 is also back over the line. And the Honda CRF 450 of Nathan Price, the 648, also back safe and sound from a stellar prologue run. Again, nice, ooh, bit of over under there as well. The boys almost tagging the back tire and he's got the position. No, he didn't get the position back. I thought he was gonna have another crack at it. But again, now off the line, the 606 and it looked like the 601 there. Robert Newton and Luke Symes. Gavin Woolnorth uh, on the 643. Makes his way across the line with a six minute and six second lap. As another one of our KTM riders, 6.42, makes their way across the line. Ben Card uh, Cardenas on his KTM at 500. Yeah, Nick Oakley also across the line on the 6.44. KDM 450. Nice clean run for him. Again, still plenty of action inside our stadium. The 645, reefing on that throttle cable. Lucas Puckle, the 641 is across the line as well. Leo Barrett on his KDM 350. Whoa, that was a stonking run through there. Yeah, Tony Knott on the uh, 633 puts himself uh, 56th provisional with 615. <laughs> Did you notice that, boys? He was doing the jockey ride, doing the bull dance, yeah, feeling just... the flow. Yeah, he definitely was. Puts, him so, uh, puts himself inside the top 20, does Scott um, Dorber. He'll be definitely happy with that run. Yeah, absolutely. The 288, that's super impressive out of the two, class two bike. Thirty-nine of Troy Dunn also over the line on his KDM 500. 6.57 was his time. And 
again, we're just keeping our eye to the line because we are about to get into the 450s, Josh. Now, this is going to be the Hellman class. Starts with an X on a lot of them. The 450s, very popular. Bradley Murphy, here the bopper. These guys are going to get under it. X99, X97. So it's Jesse Moore on the X97, Jaden O'Connor on the X99, and Lachlan Wishart. Yeah, the 450s are a popular field out here at the Tats Fink Desert Race. Those X numbers being chosen by quite a few of the locals this year. Yeah, very popular class and with good reason. Very competitive for one and what a great choice for doing some desert racing. I mean, you've got so many fantastic options within the 450 motorbike category. And as we talked about with those boutique brands, you know, all the Euros, but we've also got all the Japanese manufacturers now. You know, I think we'll see more Quackers and Yamahas and all the other things, you know, the Suzukis. And yeah, it's been a, a great, there's a lot of history out here with the 450 class, isn't there? Yeah, there definitely is. Past winners definitely uh, being on some of those bikes as well. So, yeah, uh, heap Jacob, of heap. Liam Hildebrand, Benjamin Piggott, and Jacob Horn off the line now as Jock Blakeney comes across on the 624 and Brenton Simpson on the 625. Yeah, stadium's section is definitely packed right now with action. Four or five riders making their way as it looks like we're going to get a pass down in to this section. Now watch the characteristics of this bike coming in through the boot, um, through those rolling horseshoes. Is that as you can see, it's getting rough as gut. So you really having to pick the right line through there, otherwise you could end up over the top of it. Now I tell you what, Scott Riss just put in a crack. He's coming across with a 539, but that was the bike that we just saw on our live feed. All three of those bikes were very fast. Alan Correa, great run there, 550, just come 30th. And Daniel Cummings has gone through on a KX 450 with a, one four, with a 646. So both of those boys putting themselves inside the top 30. So that was Scott Risk on the 613 and Alan Graham on the 616, both within our top 30 at the moment. That is a cracking effort from those two boys to come through the pack and achieve that top 30 position. Yeah, Jed Gould out on track now with Samuel Gibbons and Edward uh, Hampton as well. You have Matthew Shanks across the line in the top 50. So it is really getting down to that business section now. It's all about setting up this top 30 bikes. Yeah, we talked about it a little bit before where, you know, once we got later into the classes of the, of the four-wheel vehicles, we had Pro Bugger, we had Pro Light. I think now that we're into the 450s and also the uh, the bigger bikes coming up later on the class two, that's a, that's other competitors there over the uh, over the um, 500cc or 451cc. Sorry, my bad. I think we're going to see some some numbers start to get laid down that are going to, you know, we've we've sat pretty solid with our top 20, our top 30. I think we're going to start to see a little bit of shuffling there in our top 20 and our top 30. We're looking forward to a couple of no names to look out for coming up in our prologue. We've, uh, we've got Ivan Long, we heard the boys talking about them before, the X05, so that's one we'll be looking out for here in the 450s. He's not far away from a start time, so, mate, if you're still here hanging around, absolute mad credit to you guys, watching all these bikes support them, you're still in for a treat. One year I remember watching Longy when he was part of the KTM Desert Team. He, uh, he come into the section that we have on the screen right now, he actually washed out the front end, and his response to that rather than falling down was to pull the clutch in absolutely limited bounce his KDM 500 and then popped the clutch and it stood him back up. Now he did run off the track a little bit but he managed to pull it out of the fire and not fall off. So that's that's kind of hell there that we still have coming up. Hey Josh, he didn't just do that, he qualified second yes. that year. So yes. I mean to have that bigger moment off the track and then to still be able to be second uh, you know, again, Longy is an absolute hell man and going to be one to watch. But again, we talked about Nathan Trigg as well, Josh. He's a guy that's consistently been up inside of that top positions and uh, unfortunately with an issue last year, has had to qualify from the normal starting position. And that's never, an, uh, another, never a help to his race, but let's see how he goes as well. Uh, Luke Symes is through, the 606 on his Yamaha WR450. 
And again on screen, another couple of lads having a good crack on their dirt bikes here this weekend. That stadium area really suiting the motocross boys. You can see they've got the style. Look at that suspension working so nicely under those lads. As another lot of 450 competitors are off the line, the X78, oh, he's hanging off the back there. But it's gonna be a good time here have a look at this wow. hanging off the back the x97 my goodness that looked fast so Jaden o'connor on the x99 does a five minute 12 puts him in 14th provisionally and then as we just had jesse moore over the line on the x 97 522 so puts himself provisionally in the top 20 as well in 17th currently so these boys in this class aren't here to muck around they're here to play Mate, they're not here to touch tennis rackets. That's 100% correct. They are here to hook in and get it done. We're looking forward to it. These 450 boys here, like you said, especially the exits. So uh, you might, have, you might question why some of these guys have X number plates. What happens is if you're not inside that top 20, uh, prologue is based on your on a reverse of your number. So if it's all the class eight bikes in your 899, you'll be one of the first bikes off the line. If you're 801, you'll be one of the last bikes off the line for that class. So that's why these guys, you'll see X99, X97, X90, X73. These are popular numbers with some of the faster guys because what they're looking for is a dust-free run, that little bit of a gap in between the classes. So with these X bikes, you're gonna see a, a couple of stonking times laid down. And I think it'll be the same once we switch over to class two, as with some of the 299 bikes will be quite fast. So just a little bit of info for you guys out there. Yeah, the prologue is in a reverse order. As we said, the X94 of Liam Hildebrandt, a 514. So that puts him in position 26. So like we said, we are seeing that shuffle inside the top 30. Yeah, we are as Harrison Hunt and Will uh, McGinnon get off the line, as well as Brock Fry on the X68 and Ben Shannon as well. So. Thick and fast are these competitors coming through. Jacob Horn uh, on the X93 makes his way across the line as well as Benjamin Pickett on the X95. Yeah, plenty of bikes flying through at the moment. Actually, we just had another guy, Samuel Gibbons, run a 521, so that's P17 for him. So again, as Josh predicted, shuffling through that top 30 now, we've actually uh, dropped a few people out of there. No major changes to the top 10, though. Yeah. Realistically, the top 15 has stayed. Jake O'Connor slipped in there on the X99. Lucky McClellan on the 299. Nicholas Turner on the 287. Colin Callum Heberman has been pushed down a little bit. He'll have a little bit of work to do on the weekend. Although very similar, 16th and ran 14th last year. Jake Tolley, Toby Fraser and Matthew Drysdale all out on the prologue track now as they start their assault on this 8.8 kilometre prologue track here in the red centre. But as we've said, this isn't this is only just a tiny bit of it. We've still got race day one. We've still got race day two. First, you must finish. Yeah, absolutely. Excellent point there. This is only just shuffling the order. This time doesn't even really matter towards their think time. I suppose that's a big call. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> but it doesn't add on to I get what you say. Yes, time. that's right. That's right. So yes. you could come potentially from 20th uh, or 50th and have a stellar run. It makes it harder on yourself to have that stellar run, but it is not beyond the realms of grasp. Well, you're 100% right, Dan. You hear, uh, even we talked about it with the cars, but even Walshy, when he had the interview there, he was, we were talking about the importance of being on that front. Oh, as the boys get a little bit loose there, just had to cut off what I was talking about there. Missed the corner and jumped it straight out over the paddock there. The boys, that's some commitment. Bloody bit of a trick of a corner, that. The X78, he is having a dead set crack here. 
That's Kurt Spence on his KDM 450. I tell you what, the cameras followed because he they they know that's a show star, like a showman right there. He did do a big jump off that burb, but he gathered it back up, sort of uh, knocked a few trees out of the way and got the job done. So I think he's gonna be one to watch his finger right down. He's very hard on the M78. Oh, a couple of moments there through the um, horseshoe. It's going to be interesting. Come on, mate. Keep it nice and flat. Oh, wow. This has been a run. This is on knife's edge. Let's see what the X78 can do across the line. Yeah, that, what an absolute champion holding onto it after those couple of moments and getting straight back. Oh, I'll tell you what. Wow. 515 put himself in 16th position, Quick. even with a couple of little moments there. But again, Jake Pilgrim. Tate Prime and David Peters all off the line. And we also snuck through Dallas Grish on the X85. Logan Frost is through on the X80. Again, those boys running great times too. 623, 633. But again, Kurt Spence with that amazing 515. All captured on the live feed. The X79 of William Bella and the X52 now of Shelby Turner. Jesse Bannister on X75 has just crossed the finish line. Uh, Samuel Carell, Shelby Turner and Blade Hussaman all out on the prologue track now. Yeah, absolutely. Everyone having a great ride there. Not really sure what happened there. Shelby Turner seemed like she had a little bit of a start there. I wonder if she could uh, get the lights a little bit wrong and have a jump, or either that she was just blisteringly fast on the drop. Like the X70. Yeah, hanging down low there on the X70. One hand off, making sure that he minimized every little bit of wind resistance. And the X73 through as well. So the X73 is really Now, what's that X70 has an updated on the transponder? That's a little bit of a hard rate because it looked from where we were sitting very quick. Yeah, it did. Um, next up out on track is Jackson McGrath on the X49, Dayan Turner on the X51, and young gun Talon Andrews on the X50. Watch this young fella come through the pack. He's quick on a 450 and he knows this track. So Talon Andrews will be one to watch. The X76 through now. The Suzuki Brady Bannister on the RMZ. X46 and X47 lined up on the line now. And Harrison Hunt on the X72. The YZ450F, a 6.42, great ride there. Oh, both boys up on the back wheel, maximizing their effort out of those giant ruts that have formed. Tyrone Marcus and Jason Martin there as Brock Fry comes across the line with a six minute 07 prologue time, which slots him in 61st provisionally so far. Yeah, again, a great spot to be working out of. No doubt everyone wants to be higher, but I tell you what, anywhere inside that top 100 is going to be a blistering fast pace. A lot of those guys running under three hours down to Apatula. And I tell you what, that's Superman territory so as far as I'm concerned. I know the top dudes that do it in two or just a touch under two, well, I don't even know what that category is. That's uh, that's a giant and things going on. And I tell you what, uh, Brock Fry on the X68 is over the line, as well as the X66 of Toby Fraser. Andrew uh, Bespolov on the 844 is also over. Three wide going into that corner. But it looks like Corey Turner the X42 got the jump there. X65 across the line now. Back to Drysdale. Jake Tooley also across. A good run for him, 621. 
Matthew Drysdale with a 6.15. Yeah, putting themselves inside that top 100. Great position to be in. Yeah, definitely is that top 100, especially in that first 60K. You, you've got to play it careful. They'll, they'll be watching the top of the tree lines, as you, as you said, Dan, to, um, to try and know when to let on and, most importantly, keep on. Yeah, I think absolutely. is the most important thing this weekend as the next lot of riders start. The X41 of Mitchell Van Vliet, Samuel Hunt on the X36, and Zoe uh, Bakari on the X39, all out on the prologue track as the X60 of Ned Clem makes his way across the line. Yeah, X67 of Ben Shannon also stuck in there, and Jade Pilgrim on the X58 is also home. Alex Swan on the X59 has safely negotiated the prologue track. Tell you what, mate, Jaden Pilgrim in the X58 ran a 5.14. That is very quick. That puts him in 16th. So Jaden Pilgrim on his 4.50 ran a dead set cracker. Now, I'll tell you what, we're going to throw over to the other side of the box. We have none other than the legend himself, Rick Hall. Incredible job up there in commentary, but we do need to have a chat to this guy. He's a local legend and a legend in all forms of two-wheel sport. Rick Hall, awesome to have a chat with you. Just talk us through your prologue. How did it go? I just went out there, wanted to have fun and uh, said good luck to the boys that were on the line with me and uh, away we went and got a bit sketchy out there. But yeah, the main aim is just to get around and get home and uh, focus on tomorrow now. Now, you're a two-time king of the desert here at Fink, and you just told me this is your 21st race here at Fink. What keeps bringing you back year on year? I have a family that's very passionate about this race, so they, they're happy for me to compete and sacrifice, you know, so, some of their own lives for me, which is a real honour. So, uh, yeah, that's a big part of it, a big part of it, yeah. Now tell me, does it get harder or easier as you tick the years over? <laughs> you have to work, on, work harder on being fitter, if that makes sense. So... Uh, I'm not putting any too higher expectations on tomorrow, so uh, so we'll just yeah, slap it on the butt and see how we go. And what would you say to debutants this week and first time guys and girls that are heading out for the very first thing? What's your advice? Just um, forget that it's a fast race. Just concentrate on yourself and ride within your abilities and uh, get down and get back because we want to see everyone here at the end of the weekend. Yeah, great advice. Thank you so much for chatting with us. It's awesome to have Rick Hall here on the stage having a chat. And you boys in commentary are doing such a cool job. Really love listening to it all. Uh, thank you very much for the wrap there. Uh, we appreciate that coming from someone like yourself. Now, while you were interviewing Rick Hall there, Jackson McGrath on the X49 on that Gas Gas. Now, aren't they making a name for themselves, the Gas Gas crew there? A 459 in ninth place. So Jackson McGrath, the X49, has jumped up into that top 10. I'm just listening to that interview with Rick Hall. Can you imagine sitting on the start line, you get ready to pick prologue, you roll up, you look over to your left, the bloke next to you says, hey, good luck on your big run. And it's Rick Hall. By the way, my name's Rick Hall. Yeah, yeah, never heard of him, no. I tell you what, what a complete legend. You're absolutely right, Josh. That is amazing part. No, I think it is one of the, the, the amazing bits about it. Like, you know, you do run into these local legends at, at Grand, uh, Greenfield and all those things. You know, there's so much history in Alice Springs and this Fink Desert race. I suppose that's one of the things, Josh, 40 plus years of off-road racing in the Alice, you know, it's just one of those things that, and and for, you know, I speak for us, when you just see these local legends, it's just such an inspiration. We talk to Bo and he doesn't see himself as an inspiration, which is crazy, because now we've got kids coming through that want to be like Bo, want to be like Toby, want to be like these guys, Ivan Long, you know, yeah, it's such a, such a great atmosphere here. Whoa, right out on the Method Banner there. But again, it is great. Up in ninth for Jackson McGrath. That's a great position for him. Yeah, the X50 of Talon Andrews, as I was talking to you about that young fella from Alice Springs, put himself in 19th position provisionally. So a great run from him, the young 19-year-old, uh, putting himself up in that top 30 spot. Yeah, that's complete commitment to the cause. Like inside that 20, top 20, what a position to start for them. 
And again, that dust, well, I wouldn't say dust free run, but it definitely gives yourself a position. You're maximizing your opportunity to do well here at Peak 2020. Again, lots of guys still on the bopper. We've got some great vision coming from the cameras. Again, if you're enjoying the big screen down there in front of the shed, we hope you're enjoying your day. I tell you what, we are having a great time up here in the commentary box. As now the X42 comes flying through. Daniel Banks, Jay Simster and Harrison Baker are off the line now. Have a look at this. There's a bit of a battle here. Looks like a CRF, a little Honda there, having a good crack. Looks like it might be the X41 from where I'm sitting from. It's looking like it. It's, this rider definitely is on song. Getting around a couple of competitors there in the stadium section. And this is where some motocross background can help a lot. Absolutely, mate. I think this is one of the things that does really set up for a good position is if you've got some motorbike, uh, motorbike, yes, obviously you've got to be able to ride a motorbike, that helps. Uh, I motocross training is definitely an advantage. And again, as generations progress, you know, it's not guys getting on the bikes at 30. We've now got young motocrossers that are starting at two, three, four, racing at club days, like racing at a, a, you know, a real level. Now the X07 is off the line. That's Jordan Rayner, Daniel Kessner, and Mark McGannon all off the line on their bikes. Class five, what a packed number. Again, this is all the 450s. Essentially, it's it's 251 to 450ccs. So if the X07 is off the line, that means not long now until we see the X05 of Ivan Long. So this is gonna be one to look out for as well. I think he's going to shake a few things up. He's on the starting grid. That's what we're saying. So young Ivan Long started his own desert racing team. And he is on the line here. He's actually in the center. So it's the X04, X05, and X06 there. But Longy in the middle. He's had a couple of great runs here, but never stood, stood on the top step. But he is going to have a red hot crack as Ivan Long. But I tell you what. The boys aren't going to give it to him easily. They are running there, and old X04 on the outside there. I think he's got... No, maybe Longy got that on the outside. Yeah, Longy's just in front, but X04 off the line. That's Jesse O'Shea on his YZ450. Now, that's not a bad idea there from Jesse. What a rider to hook onto the back of. Follow the lines through there the, for this Method Race Wheels prologue track. You know, what a good way to, to, to learn how to get up to pace is follow someone like Ivan Long. Yeah, I don't know. I'm starting to think that that might not be a good idea. <laughs> I've seen Longy ride. I wouldn't be getting under the back of that at all. He is an absolute weapon and what a showman. It's going to be exciting to see what he does coming through the stadium, particularly because we know that he's going to have to deal with traffic. So this man is going to be on the bopper. And again, Jesse O'Shea running with him. Lars Kalt, the X06 in that mix as well. So we'll keep a good eye on them. Again, that looks like the X41. We we're talking about them. No, it's a bit shorter than that. The X15 might be. So the guy's having a great run there. And again, a little battle here to the finish line. Wheels up, the boys on the bopper. Yeah, nothing it's but serious games here. It's going to be close. It looks like the Yamaha is going to get the best of it. Sorry, the Husky, Simon Sweeney. Yeah, never seen a Yamaha go that fast. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> I think that's a bit rough and ready, ladies. Well, it looks like our 500 class making its way to the start line now. The fire. Yeah, absolutely. So this being a continuation of our, our 450cc or up to 450cc, so 251 to 450cc four stroke. Hey, now listen, I think we might have all been on the wrong track there. That was X25. Nathan Elliott actually came through, and it's saying that his bike is an RMZ450. Nah. I probably wouldn't have picked that, but that's what it's listed as. But he did run, and I'll, this is what I want to touch on. He ran a sub six minute, yes. 557, ran a 56 position. So that's pretty darn impressive out of the X25. So Nathan Elliott, a great ride there. 
particularly on the old Ramon Z, oh. I don't think they've, oh. uh, they've had much of an update. Josh and Will Ashby in the X23, just on a Honda CRF, just ran a 5.26, put himself in 24th. This has not stopped yet. Our top 30 is getting a shuffle up. Yeah, it is Simon Gala in now. He slots himself into that 30th position there on that Gas Gas MC 450. So it's just going to keep chopping and changing over these bikes, continue to cross that start finish line. It's anyone's game still. It's all about that ticket to tomorrow morning. And we talk oh, about it again. Boys. The X16 Daniel Banks on a YZ450. I've the commentator's curse. I've just had to eat my words about saying that Yamaha can go that fast. A 5.05 in 13th. And then we see the X17 J Sipster and KDM 450 come across in 5.09 for 15th. So definitely, like you said, a massive shuffle happening. And the one we're going to keep an eye out for as well, the X05 of Ivan Long. So that's going to be one to be keeping an eye out for as well. He's a, uh, a former podium getter here at Vink as well. So it's going to be very interesting. Yeah, X27 is also through a uh, Quade Habit and Hayden Burford as well on the X22. The X15 for lying past the front of the commentary box here and the X26. So that was Harrison Baker and Gary Burns through now. Good run there for Harrison Baker. He's actually put himself in 51st position. Great run. Yeah, John Rayner on the X07 now on your big screen at the moment. Making his way through the stadium section. And the next battle pack looks to be the Ivan Long one. Yeah, can't wait, mate. It's going to be very exciting as he will no doubt have that on the bopper. Yeah, we've got another great shot of the Method Race Wheels banner. It's an exciting time to be involved in desert racing, no question about that. A lot of great people racing at the moment as the X07 powers over the line of Jordan Rayner. That's a great run, 48. There's the X05 right there. Wow, a great run from Longy, a wow. 4.57. Yeah, through the pack, puts himself in ninth position, Josh. So that's a great run there. Ivan Long, again, through the dust has run a 4.57, a sub five minute run. That Husqvarna FE 4.50 had absolutely nothing less. And now here's this X06. So that's a good run for him as well. As we said, great option to get on the back of Longy. And uh, the boys know that you're coming. Lyles Carlton on his YZ450F. And that's 27th for him with a 5.24. The X03 does the off the track excursion, the X04. Gee, those boys were very close. So that's Jesse O'Shea. Now it'd be interesting to know what happened there because it was Jesse that was pushing Ivan along to start off with. He did drop back a little bit. Wonder if he had a little off track excursion that often affects uh, your confidence. But a 540 shouldn't be ashamed of that above the top 50. So he's sitting in 40th position at the moment. What a run from Jesse O'Shea. Off the line now, Graham King. Mackenzie Camp and Kai Twigden. As the X11 comes across the line of Daniel uh, Kesner. I'll just wait for that to update. Double check that is the correct one. The 709. As the X09 bike comes across the line, Mark McGannon. Wow, the X03 came across hard too. 5.33 there for Jake Salims. KDM 350, that's why it sounded hard too, boys. She got the 350cc screamer. 36 position overall. Again, we've got to keep saying it at the moment because this is shuffling crazy. Our top 50 is consistently moving. That's the only thing that is consistent. Daniel Challen, Cameron Taylor, all off the line now. Another pack of bikes across. That was the X01 and the X02 came across, which is Thomas Donnelly and Jake Char. Another one of the FE350s, little Husvana. Little Reva. Good run from Thomas Donnelly. 
running a sub six minute, 5.59. And again, Jake just outside of 6.01. The 5.89, the Kawasaki. Have a look at him floating off the back. This looks like a motocross guy from way back. Bradley Evans with the 5.97 just ran a 5.41, put himself in 44th. Again, have a look at this, hanging off the back of the quacker. He was using every little bit of track, Jeremy Hart. Off the line, 5.72. Yeah, Ross Gard, I do believe that one was the rider who came flying across the line there on that Kawasaki 450. Yep. As it looks like there's another quacker coming our way down on the line. And these things, I love the noise. Absolutely. The old green bikes, there's, a, there's an army of green riders. It puts himself in the top 30 as well. Matthew Pratt on the 589 with a five minute 28. Yeah, again, I can't say this enough. Anyone running that sub six minute, what an absolute weapon to hold on to around this 8.8 kilometer Method Race Wheels Prologue track. Off the line now, Max and David Meyer, Husqvarna's, oh, and a KDM. Yeah, Dan, I, uh, no, I don't blame you for, for I did for brush that last brush night. Brushing over Max's I apologize. <laughs> Petrolage, <laughs> Petrolage. Mate, if Rush I'll, out of play, that's if all I'll, you need to if know. If I bombed it, I apologize, mate. Doesn't matter, mate. All I can tell you is you're doing a great job. 569, <laughs> and I'm here cheering you. I'm telling you that. 584, I tell you what, I think I can hear a bit of the crowd cheering as well. They all know what's up. Wow, he's right up on top of the berm, the 587. Or 584, I think that might be. But having a crack. Enduro bikes weren't built for that, Joshua. So 584, that's Joshua Pirelli. We'll have a bit of a look at what time he gets over the finish line here. He is a uh, putting in a, looks like a fair level of commitment there. Great to see that even this far down, we've got, not this far down, but this late into the day of Prologue, you know, he's been sitting there waiting for a fair while, a fair bit of nervous energy, probably getting ex expanded as he puts the pass on. So he is on a good lap there. And that's Josh a good comes crack. through. We'll wait for our timing screen to update, but that is a t five, 519 for 23rd position. So Damn. a great lap there. Yeah, he had a dead set crack there. He's had, been over at the Red Bull tent, made sure he downed a couple of short cans, Ooh, couple and he's zingers. on the go. That Husqvarna was wicked up, and he was on it. As Zach Sawyer comes through as well on the 593 on his 350EXC. Great ride from him. Oh, the rev limit to bop off the line. Oh, oh she's rough off oh, the line now. 562 having a real fun effort with that one. Yeah, he got very crooked out of that groove. Front wheel up. But he's on the way now. No big dramas there. As the 578 making his way through the stadium. Big lead over to get away from those tire walls. The Yamaha. Or as my mates from the 80s used to call it, the Yamaha. Yamaha. Yaha. <laughs> Billy Barlow. Billy Barho on his Ma Yamaha. WR450F. He's had a good crack as well. Running a 621. Jordan Greenshields on his 500 has run a 635. That's the... And again, it's been a good day here. The breeze is definitely blowing that dust off the track as the 557 runs away at the start line. Although, oh, he's caught him back up. That's the 555. Jacob Russell and Graham King just come across the line on the 578. Put himself in 85th position with a 604. Yeah, still some very competitive times continually coming through here. 
anything under that six second mark as we're saying is is on for young and old it's it is a hard ride to get that and you are holding on as kai twigden makes his finish across the line as does mackenzie camp yeah great ride there mackenzie camp yz450 Again, these 450s just on the oh. bumper. Wowzers. That looks like the 557. Oh, the boys get loose. We love okay. it. As you can see, that start line we're talking about, we've had 130, 140 uh, four-wheel vehicles. Now we're getting deep into the pack as well. You can see that start line getting uh, chopped up. But I don't know if you can hear it at home or on the live feed, but those boys were sitting on the rev limiter for a few minutes there. And look how serious they're taking it as we see these two race across the finish line. We're looking at the 577 and the 574 as well. And she look at that, Dan, we're talking about it. Six minutes 23 and six minutes 25. And, and there's roughly about 10 places. We're only talking yep. about two seconds. So let's put them 10 places back. Yeah, 10 places apart. Exactly. That's, that's how close it is here racing today. And yeah, dead right, Josh. Yeah, everyone is having a dead set crack out here. Like you said, in the background, we've got 450s just banging. They got the bow float going, and it is game on as the four, uh, 549. Oh, you throw it through the look over the head. Through the look over the head. Through the, the look back over the shoulder is what I meant. Hey, uh, to the Fink bar over there, mate. If Danny Curran appears, just you've got the, got the word. Cut him off. Cut, Cut him, him off, off, mate. He's had enough. A few little black rats. A couple, uh, the of, good, of, the story couple is. of good Queenslanders. Give us a Goldie. <laughs> Tour to Sally if you're listening over in LA, mate. Goldies and Black Rats, they're, they're flowing plenty at Fink, much like when you were here in 2017. Yeah, we got some good American mates that really do love uh, the way the Australians get down, would be a way to say it. They, they think they were a bit of a bit mad out in the bush. But anyway, the moral of the story is William Gibson is off the line, Warwick Nutt and Jason McMillan all off the line. Whereas Dylan Allison, Allison, Jeremy Hart, and Brody Connell all back now. So again, if you guys are listening at home and we're cheering out your teams, we've got plenty of bikes rolling over now. Max, hey Dan, who just finished 65th? Yeah, thanks, mate. By the bike 569. I'm sure there's some people at home that are chasing some info. Can you, <laughs> Me, mate, Maxie, Petroloja, Petrolot, Petrolot. We're running with Petrolog. it. I like it, but the moral of the story is that he made it home, mate. And Absolutely. I'll tell you what, 5.54, he's a bit faster than you are, mate, so that's all that matters, hey. <laughs> Damon Meyer also <laughs> home. Warehouses, there's plenty of shade going on here. Fraser Lewis, Mark Humble, and Jamie Luff are all off the line now. Again, plenty of Class 5 bikes. And again, man, I just can't get over that even now. I know we keep saying it because it's not like we don't still have fast guys on track, but that top 100 is just shuffling, Josh. You know, it's a constant number change. We've got 87s, 65, 67, you know, like yeah. sub six minute runs, even this late in the day. And think such a competitive field that we talk about that, that top 100, like that is, you are no joke if you're in the top 100 here at, at, uh, at Fink. Oh, you know. Josh, I, they're superhuman, in my opinion. If you can run top 100, you are beyond a motorbike rider. You're basically a king. So, you know, and then once you get into that top 20, that's a different game altogether. Those guys, they just, uh, I don't know, you've got to have a brain switch, I think. You've got to be able to turn it off. Yeah. It's such a mental game, I think, desert racing. And as I've spoken to Toby over the years, I think he said that it is in the car especially compared to the bike because you are that focused on so many different things you're worrying about engine temps and oil temps and whereas on the bike you are holding that thing flat and just let off when you think you you can or or hold it flat or, the whole way down i was gonna say or don't let off oh yeah, two, yeah or don't let off exactly yeah, but, so but then the, the flip side of that is particularly on the bike if you get it wrong it is your body bouncing into the ground like yeah the, these bike guys they're a special level of it doesn't matter 
where you finish as we see uh, one of the bikes there come across on the finish line. I think that was Joel Doohan on the 562 putting a bit of a wheelie on it for the crowd. But yes, getting back to that point, it, it, with the bikes, it's particularly, it's high risk, but it's high reward, that's for sure. Josh 559 also came across the line just before uh, Doohan, uh, Sam Wagner, and he ran a 610 for a dead set 100th position. So, you know, that's showing that number. Oh, shirt flapping the breeze. Jason Anderson Jason would be Anderson? proud. Yes. Looks like Jared Smith coming across the line there on his 450. Again, it's interesting too seeing some of these bikes here clearly set up. This is a big tank Yamaha going through the stadium area. So these guys setting it up and obviously running a little bit more fuel for feet. So there's a lot of options if you're listening along at home and you're thinking about having a crack and having a ride. You know, you could do club, you could do club uh, pit stops or you could do all sorts of things. You could run your own pit stops. Again, one stop and some of the guys do no stops. So. Well, Rihanna's down on the start line with one of our female competitors. I cannot wait to hear how she went on the X-52. Guys, we've spoken so much about all the families that are involved this weekend and the Turner family are very much involved at Fink this weekend. Shelby Turner, you're racing on the bikes as well as your brothers, your dad and everybody else. How was your prologue? Yeah, it wasn't too bad. I was super nervous and I jumped the start massively, but it is what it is. I got no dust, so I'm happy. <laughs> now, your very first time racing here at Fink, what made you want to take part? Oh, just, it's so exciting. And I think if, if I can make it there and back, like it'd be such an awesome thing to tick off my bucket list. So I thought, why not? And you have previously been a Fink ambassador, is that correct? So was that sort of your first introduction into what this event was? Yeah, the last two years I was an ambassador and just being out here and soaking in the dust, it was awesome. I thought, I'm going to have a go on my bike next year, so here we are. Jump on the other side of the fence. Now talk to me about your family. I know we've got a few of them behind us. Uh, who else is racing and who's here? So i got my brother Corey, my brother DJ, my dad, who I just beat in prologue, so I'm super yeah. stoked. <laughs> my cousin Blade and we got John from Beta, so the whole team. The whole team, the whole family. And what are you going to do tonight to get yourself prepared for tomorrow? Probably just go to bed early. <laughs> Pretty nervous, but yeah. yeah. Well, fantastic. You've done an awesome job so far. Good luck. Enjoy. And awesome. You beat your dad. How good's that? <laughs> Thank you so much. Cheers. Thanks, Shelby. Uh, back up to you, boys. Thank you, Rihanna. Definitely a great story and another one of those family stories and definitely bragging rights at home tonight. Oh, absolutely, mate. That's one of the biggest things, isn't it? You want to be able to go home and have a beer around the fire. Well, even Monday night. I tell you what, yeah. when we all get together and spray some champagne at Lassiter's, I tell you what, that's when the real feeling of the weight comes off and now you can start smack talking with your family, start saying, oh, that's right, I remember, oh, that's right, that, I did beat Josh overall at Fink in the Times, you know, that's an important part. He was nice enough to lend me his car and I beat him, so, you know, just a point I'd like to show out there, so, but anyway, the moral of the story is that, yes, family and racing is always a good time. Uh, as we've come to, had that little conversation, I mean, a ton of bikes have come through. Again, we talked about Jared Smith coming through. We've also got Harrison Craig, Jacob Russell, Jerry Insler, and William Gibson are also home now. Again, William Gibson was inside that six minute mark, a 53 place, just so damn fast. Jason McMillan home now on his Honda CRF 450. And it's interesting, I use the term home, home from Prologue. The race has just begun. 452 grueling kilometres. And that all starts tomorrow. That 8.8 Ks is nothing compared to what they've got to face tomorrow. This is really a, um, a fairy tale to them, if, if we're going to be honest, compared to what does uh, face them down those uh, down that track down along the old south road so it's going to be very very interesting both for the cars and the bikes are we going to see a record breaking year again or is it going to be slower it's all up in the air at the moment we'll find out tomorrow morning but we still have a heap of time with prologue this afternoon and we still have some big names coming through and i've said it multiple times um, but with the way that the seating works at this event and if you don't get back to Alice or down to Fink uh, the year before you do get put in those normal grid positions so it's still anyone's game and we take your time down to Fink and that's what your starting position 
is on day two. So you can be starting back at the grid and have a good day and put yourself up. So Yeah, absolutely, mate. We've seen it many times where people have worked themselves well out of you know position. We've seen guys come from 80th and up into the top 20 and then had a cracking run home. So that's something. But, you know, even talking about what awaits them down the track, maybe it's a great opportunity for us to, to talk to, you know, if you've never been to Apatula, it's, it's a remote community down there. When those guys get down there, they've got a, a, a basically a pit area, let's call it, and a big camping zone. And essentially there's no power. There's no, you know, it's, you've got to take, it is true roughing it, desert camping. It's not, again, there's no motel down there. There's no, nothing like that. So these guys are literally swagging it after a grueling 226 Ks on a motorbike. They're going to feel every ache of pain because just to add to swagging it, it also happens to be, you know, negative one degree. So you get to sleep in that swag. So, and then you wake up at pre-dawn, make sure that your car or your bike's ready to go and throw a leg over that motorbike after you've rolled a swag up and then head on off into the unknown again. And basically race, you never hit, because that's another thing that's interesting about the thing, a lot of loop races, even if it's 80 kilometers, you are hitting the same corner, you know, time and time and time again. Might change in the desert scene, but in this situation, goes across, you know, they're running it one way, and then the way home, it's a completely different racetrack, isn't it? You know, I know this sounds so damn logical, but I'm saying it, what used to be left is now right, and what used to be right is now left. Sometimes you come off a dune and it was flat on one side. Well, it's not flat on the other side. And we're making sense, guys. DC, they? with gold like that, I can understand I why know. They, they shipped you in here for this event. Yeah. Um, they didn't pay me. I can tell you that. I wouldn't either. <laughs> the moral of the story is that there is some great racing, and it's one of those things that until you've experienced the Fink racetrack, it's one of those things that you can hear a lot about it, you can know a lot about it, but I tell you what, when you hit those, and Josh, I was talking to about the the feeling of elation when you come across this finish line on Monday. That is hard to put into any words. It's something you just can't describe, and even if you've done it five, six times, it makes no difference. It's just that feeling. Now, I'll tell you what, we've had some crackers again. Brenda, Brad Luff, I was almost going to say Brendan, but Brad Luff on the 524 has just put himself into 26. Ben Miller on the 519 has put himself into 34th and the Kawasaki of Jack Larka, Lata 522 has just put himself into 42. So what a little pack. Yeah. They all got together and ran fast. Yeah, that's right, DC. They've, uh, they've done a good job there. Like you said, we, we're going to see that, that top shuffle up. And I can hear a few bikes down on the start line bopping off the limiter. That means only one thing, Daddy Curran. We've got our Class 4s lining up which is our up to 251cc four stroke. So what we're going to hear in the next what we're going to hear in the next little section is a lot of RPM. But we're going to cross it down now to our start line. It was one guy that we were talking about and saying to keep your eye out and it's worth sticking around for is the X05 Ivan Long. Thanks guys. Yeah, we've heard so much about this guy uh, sort of across the last today and last night as well. I ran into one kid. He was a massive fan. <laughs> Apparently gave him a free jumper, so he's really excited about that. But good run out there, ninth overall at the moment. How did you feel about your prologue? Yeah, pretty good. We're um, we're riding a FE 450 this year, so we've um, gone out and, uh, and done our own thing, as um, set up our own team. So we've we've bought two bikes, and um, we've got a heap of sponsors on there. Complete grip of jump on board. Uh, we've had Tune Tech suspension, which is amazing. He's done an awesome job um, in sh such a short period. Um, also, Paul Vincent Caravan Park, they've they've jumped on board as well. And um, Limestone, Limestone Coast Motorcycles, they've um, they've helped out with a huge amount of product as well. So it's been really, really cool to uh, to come back after three years and um, make the most of it. And talk us through that experience. You were just saying, you know, you had all the knowledge and everything else to, to do your own team. But what's it been like? Yeah, pretty pretty different. Uh, we've uh, like obviously been on a KDM team years ago in 14 and 15 with Pricey and, and Ben Grabham. Um, you learn a lot of things off of those guys. We do a lot of kilometres on the track. Um, I did finish second to Damien Stokey, so it was a bit unfortunate the year after that where we lost him. But um, yeah, that was uh, quite cool to uh, to come back after the after so many years off. And um, yeah, the bodies have recovered, and and now we're yeah having another go. And you mentioned body recovered, but what really sparked you to get back out here and, and give it another go? 
I sort of, um, when I get number two, you sort of think that you've left a few things out on the line. Um, so it'd be nice to actually get a number one. Uh, this year it may not happen, but we'll, if the opportunity's there, we'll definitely go for it. But um, yeah, if, uh, if it doesn't happen this year, at least we're in a, a better position to start next year. And you're mentioning the track, the track's pretty chopped up out there. What are you expecting sort of over the weekend after the buggies have already gone through and you go out there on the bikes? Yeah, so the, this is probably the fastest prologue I've seen in a while over over the last 10 years that I've ridden here. Um, that rain last week certainly was sunk down in the ground, so that's made it um, a lot loamier, a lot tackier. It's going to make it a really fast race again this year. Um, I had an experience riding last week in the rain, so right, especially right down near Squires and that, they got a fair bit of water there. So it's going to make the track quite rough. Um, hopefully the track will come to us and, um, yeah, we'll have that upper hand. Well, brilliant job. Great. Excited for you to start in ninth, and I hope it all goes well tomorrow. Guys, back to you. Get all the rest of the action as it comes in. Yeah, so cool to see Ivan Long back and racing. If there's a man that puts fast, dangerous, and take chances, you know, on the sleeve, that is the man. Complete legend, and uh, excited to see him have a run again. We'll be keeping a good eye on the X05. Now, Josh, again, interesting conversation because everyone you talk to, you know, he's saying low me, the water's held together. You know, other guys are saying it's slippery. It's interesting that everyone has a little bit of a different opinion on, or I don't know if it's a difference of opinion, but, you know, guys that um, Ivan Long has obviously seen it in some of the roughest time. Because, I mean, a couple of years ago, this Fink Rift race, racetrack, you know, we talk about the Bonduma whoops. There was nearly 120 k's of whoops down there, and that was pretty wild back in those days. Particularly, there's some amazing footage of Longy running through those whoops, basically tripping them, tripling them like it was a motocross track. So, very interesting there. And Josh, just another interesting point. Uh, we had uh, Todd Spilsbury come through on the 513, and he's put himself with a 543 into 51st position. So, a great run there. And again, guys, great runs up and down the order. There is live timing on the Fink website, and I'd strongly suggest you jump on there and have a look. And again, a big shout out to all the guys that are racing at the moment. Again, Braden O'Cass is actually out there too on our 250F. So there's one to keep a bit of an eye out on. Yeah, Lachlan Spilsbury, Thomas Winter, Aaron Erbst, Alexander Ben Clow Cow is through as well, 512. He ran a 730. Brett Timms on the 868. Beta 250. So again, listen to those 250s just absolutely singing. Yeah, these are little bikes that we're just going to hear on the bopper the whole time. So one of the bikes, I actually believe she will be out and running and she may have even uh, crossed a, while we were talking to Longy. Alexandra Long is in there as well. She's uh, doing the double as well and, and looking to be pretty competitive there on a 250 as well, hoping to be the fastest female back home from talking to her earlier today. But yeah, these little 250s, they've got their work cut out for them, particularly if, if like Longy said, we're going to see that thick, loamy, heavy sand in the whoop sections. You know, these are these are bikes that are going to be needing... Uh, well, I remember a few years ago, a man by the name of Steve, Steve Hengerfeld came over from uh, America. Many consider him the greatest night racer in the world over there when they race off-road. They actually... A thousand mile race they will race at night he rode a little crf 250 and um, mate that thing just lived on the limiter the whole time i think he finished seventh or eighth outright and uh they had to rebuild that thing overnight they were there running it in in the morning down at apertura up and down the start right so i tell you what if there's one thing i am glad i am not in life it's a little 254 stroke that is here at the Fink Desert Race. Well, 444 of Sam Hayes, 436 of John Belkin off the line as well. Adam McDonald as well. The 444 Sam Hayes KTM 250, that's one to watch this weekend. I've uh, actually seen that one in the shed at work. And uh, look at that, the 499 Billy Hargy. Uh, with a time of 5 minutes 16 seconds, puts himself up into 22nd position. So it's still on for young and old here at the start-finish line. It's going to be very, very interesting. Yeah, it blows me away that we're still shuffling the top 30, and as we should be, but again, it just shows you this, this race, the level that the Tats Pink Desert race has got to as the 497 comes over the line as well. Oh That's Brave No Cass again running a 547. He's put himself in the 59, ninth position. And again, Braden O'Cass, 
Sanderson's old trophy truck navigator. So he's done a bit of time down on this Fink track, both on a motorbike and in a truck. Those guys running a Jimco back in the day. But again, Jackson Hudson, Harley Turner, and Catherine Scoble. Little CRF 250R. But off the line now. Again, we got a lot of 250s, as you would expect with this class. I know I'm saying logical things, but a lot of these Revy 250s out on track, having a good crack. And interesting, it probably does lend itself, the 250, nice and nimble to throw around. You know, this being a, I, I've used this term very loosely, but a big motocross track, if that makes sense. So these guys up and on the bopper as the 495 of Lachlan Spilsbury comes through, putting himself with a 553 in the 71st position. Again, a couple of Spilsbury's now up in those top positions. And off the line, have a look again. You can see those those chattery acceleration marks and the real the dirt is turning over here. Looks like Sam Hayes is coming in on that 444 quick. Look at him flapping off the back fender. He's having a good crack here today at Prologue at the Method Race Wheels. 22. Sorry, that was Thomas Winter and Casey Crisp across the line there. Same statement though. He was giving it a good crack here. Yeah, these 250 boys really are enjoying it and giving it to one another. It's the 474 crosses the line. Thomas Foster on a FC 250, a Husqvarna. Again, getting a bit squirrely off the line there. Great, big shout out to all the people listening at home on the YouTube live feed. I hope you're enjoying the coverage of the Tats Fink Desert Race. Here comes someone coming in very, very quick. Yeah, the 470 through now. I tell you what, right behind 494. So Brendan Rose on the 470, a 617. And Aaron Opst on the six, uh, not sure about that numbering at the moment, but Aaron Ops on the Husqvarna. 457 is now on the stream, running nice and high. Oh, getting a little loose over. I don't even know if you can call that a tabletop, but let's call it a tabletop. It's just enough to upset the bike dynamics, isn't it? Yeah, it is. They are just getting a little bit loose in there and are having to sort of check themselves up. So. This track is, again, ever-changing, as I've said multiple times today. It is, um, it is be it's becoming harder and harder as the bikes go through. So you've got to be careful um, as you go throughout the day. You don't want to push, push, push too hard because otherwise you could uh, end up in a heap of dust tomorrow as this competitor makes his way through the 455 and 452 there on yeah. the big screen. Yeah, have a look up on the pegs. Good riding style, leg hanging out. And I hope I'm not being offensive, but hair flapping in the breeze. Oh, who doesn't love a good mullet flapping in well, the wind? I was wind. hoping that it's not a girl, because <laughs> we won't call it a mullet yes. at all. But <laughs> so Rory Hill on the 457, you see him across the line in a 524 for 30th position outright as well. The 444 of Sam Hayes, sponsored by JSR Motorsports and the ASAP Korea Alice Springs Auto Parts. Shout out to them this weekend. But yeah. Sam's looking quick on that bike. I can tell you that I have uh, I was in there that weekend. Uh, he's, he's looking exceptional, so we'll see how he goes. Big shout out to him and the Hayes family this weekend as well. As the 460 comes across the line. Yeah, I tell you what, Rory Hill on that 457 put himself in 30th as well with a 524, so that is a great run there. Alex Dre, Chevalis Shields through as well. There is absolutely wow, action everywhere we look. Shani Muller is through as well. Daniel Campbell, Sam Hayes is through with that 546. That is a stellar run from the 444. Adam McDonald. 
Oh, rev limiter over the finish line just constantly. She is singing as Declan Rose on the 440 comes through. Oh, up over the berm on the live feed. Again, that's just part of the game out here in the desert. Probably we see this stuff and get excited and they go, mate, if you knew what happened 226 k's down the track, you wouldn't even be worried about this. This is just another day in the office. I've been flapping off this thing now for eight kilometers. I'm ready to go at 452 k's to go. Great ride there. Jackson Hudson on the 435 across the line. Good run too, five. 34 is his time for position 43. Again, this is all provisional at the moment. Remember that as bikes keep coming, although we're getting towards the end of the bike crew at the moment. I tell you what, it's the two banger time, class three. They are off the line now, the 252 strokes. Cooper Van Vlelt, Daniel Foot, Danielle Foot, Alexander Pearson. All off the line on the 252 bangers. This is our class three. John Blelkman. The 399 of Danielle Foot is a bike to watch. Taking out class honors here last year. Very, very quick on the bike as well, she is. 425 across the line. Again, yeah, I love the sound of these premix two strokes. They're bangers. John Curran would not like me saying that. He is a four banger man through and through, but Lee Kingston on the 218 across the line. Yeah, it brings such a different element and a sound and a smell and everything like that with the uh, with the 252 strokes. They are a uh, an awesome class and it's great to see them back. Absolutely. Sean Walters, Luke Nixon and Jack Brumby all off the line. Again, the 252s. And look, it's not a dead class anymore. You know, we talk about back in the day, there wasn't a lot of research and development going into two strokes anymore, but I see that Yamaha have now released a completely updated 2022 version of their YZ 250s, YZ 125s, and by all accounts, a fantastic bike. It's not like you're buying a uh, a CR250 from 98 or CR500 from 98, 2000s and having to come out here and race it. These are now modern bikes with all the technology, all the upgrades, everything that Yamaha or Honda, etc., have learned in the last, you know, 10 years. And, and they're realising that this is not a dead class anymore. Absolutely, Josh. Hey, Catherine Scoble came across the line there in the 434, as well as Chloe Barton just came across in the 428. Kyle Anthony was off the line on the 304. James Waldhutter, 419, came across the line. Again, so much action everywhere we look as we spin around in the commentary tower. We're looking at the live feed, the 402 on screen right now, coming into the stadium area. Again, all these fantastic competitors. I can't say this enough. If you're now ticking this off your fig bucket list or your life bucket list, this Fig Desert Race, such a great event. So many great people out here. We uh, hope you're enjoying the live coverage. Again, down to the 250 classes at the moment, the class fours. Making their way across the track revving up as it looks like uh well, i was gonna say josh they're the big boppers are coming out now we've got the 451 and over cc's the uh class two bikes and this is going to be a bit of a show because there's some very fast bikes in that mix so it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out again a lot of the guys as you can see from our numbers you know, the majority really of the top 20 are all riding class twos or class fives so the rest of the class two is about to come through. And again, no doubt that'll be dominated by the KDM 500s out there. But Husqvarna also have their 501. That's a great bike for desert racing. As we see the little Yami, the 250 poking its way around the prologue track. Righto, so as we're just enjoying our time over here, we've got Billy Hagi, the 499 on stage at the moment. 
Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Yeah, Billy has ridden straight over here, straight off the track. Did an incredible effort, incredible time in a little 250. Um, what do you think of the run? Yeah, it was good. The track was super rough now and uh, heaps of square edges. Got pretty sketchy a few times, but um, stayed on and got a good time, so I'm pumped with that and um, we'll move on to tomorrow. You're just 16 years old. It's your first Fink. How are you feeling about all of this? Are you feeling nervous? You're going to be 20 seconds, sort of up with some of the bigger boys? Yeah, I was nervous as in the start line and I'm sure I'll be nervous tomorrow, but um, yeah, once we get going, it should be all right. Just um, ride my own race, get down and then race back. So it, Hopefully just the finish will be a good goal, but um, yeah, should be good. Excited to get stuck in, clearly. Yeah, Dean has. <laughs> so what made you get into this? What made you think, you know, I want to race Fink and, you know, at such a young age? I uh, race Hatter Desert Race a few times. I um, run it outright last year, so to do this would be good too. It's just the next thing up from Hatter and uh, yeah, everyone talks about it. We've always talked about coming out and watching it, but um, yeah, just to, thought we'd come out and try it and give it a go. And talk us through your bike, because it is it is a smaller bike. If we could zoom past, we've got it parked actually just behind us. Um, talk us through your bike, why you chose to ride it, etc. Uh, just first year, I just thought I'd go ride the 250 to get used to the track and get used to the speed and stuff before I jump straight onto a big bike. But um, yeah, 250 goes great. Um, yeah, just put a small sprock on it, go fast, and um, yeah, it should be good. Well, you can clearly ride it well, and it's just so exciting to see you giving it a go, giving it your first year. I hope I get to see you in Fink tomorrow. I hope I get to see you back here on Monday. Guys, continue the great coverage. We're absolutely loving it. Billy, young fella, don't be nervous, mate. 22nd on a 250U, 100% deserve to be there. I think I heard him say outright had our winner as well, so it is no accident that that man is up there as one of our fastest competitors on a 250 four stroke there. So you don't say he knows how to give mate, it the onions. Mate, he knows how to give it the Greg Gartner potato farm, that's for sure. So don't be nervous, young fella. Throttle down tomorrow and uh, you 100% deserve to be there. So we're looking forward to that. Uh, keeping an eye on Billy tomorrow as he uh, makes his way down to Apertula. Hey, now, Josh, just running through that list. Uh, Chloe Barton's in now. James Waldhutter, Jake Vernon. Hayden Dybel. Now, what I wanted to point out was Danielle Foot on the 399, the little 250, has run a 543 and put herself in 54th position. That is solid as a rock. And Cooper Van Velt has obviously run with her on the YZ 250, 557 for 89. So our top 100 still shuffling here today. Alexander Pearson is through, through as well on the 345. So again, what a time to be alive, team. Hey, we're out here in the dirt. We got a little bit of two stroke in the nostrils and we are on the bopper here today. Absolutely loving it here. It is such a fever pitch as well. We're still going through bikes. The top 100's changing every two seconds. It is just, it's, it's on for young and old. And, and this event um, has just grown so, 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 so much um, over the years. You know, I'm, I'm 19 from the 19 years that I've been coming to this event. Uh, you can tell that the, the people continually just continue to come back. They keep raising the bar and it's just great to see. Yeah, absolutely, mate. Luke Nixon's also over the line on the 313. Sean Walters on the 333. And as you said, that next generation now coming through, riding these bikes, all these young fellas. It's going to be interesting to see what the future holds for the Fink Desert Race. Again, we talked about it last night. I just can't wait to be sitting here in 20 years. I'll be, I, I don't need to commentate anymore. I'm happy to sit in the grandstands as an old man and sit over there and go, oh, I remember back in the day. You know, I remember when the KDM 500s were the thing to have. I remember when the team had, uh, Toby Price was racing that Tisco truck. Oh, they were the good old days. But I tell you what, it's going to be amazing to watch the progression the riders, the people. Again, it just continually steps up faster and faster. And again, if you showed me these times a couple of years ago for our top 20, well, I would have gone, nah, don't think so, mate. But it's reality now, we're here. So again, off the line, we've had some more of our, our two bikes. Jared Watson, Matthew Shaw, Samuel Nelson have been off the line. Richard Crowley, Cody Stevens, Matthew Gray. And all these guys crack a lack and off the line as the 304 comes through now. 
That's Kyle Anthony on his YZ250. Again, the two banger. But here we go. This will be the first, I reckon, of our twos. I do believe so, so Dan. Keep a good eye on these guys because it's another one where it's, I believe it's going to shuffle up our top 50 or so. Possibly even top 20. So let's have a look. Yeah, you never know with a couple of these young blokes that aren't aren't too not too well known in in the sport, and you you don't know they they could be the next Toby Price in training at the moment, um, some on some farmyard. So that's the thing you you've got to you've got to adapt, and you really don't know how quick these young fellas or young females as well are coming through as this one is on song. Let's see the time there for the first of our class twos. Wow. 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 There you go, Richard Green. Just punched out a 4.53 to put himself in fifth position outright. Wowzers. And Dean Ross just punched out a 5.08 to put himself in 17th. So there you go. Just shuffled the top 20 just like that. Richard Green. 4.53 for fifth place. Hot dang. Insane how close it is. And as we said, these guys out of position due to a, a bad run last year, either not making it down to Fink or not making it home. And now they're really trying to put on a show and get it up there in the pointy end. We'll see what this time is. Jackson Anderson with a five minute and 45 second lap around the parallel track puts him in 59th provisionally in that top 100. Bradley Greenfield out there now. He's one to watch. Stephen Greenfield's son and yeah. Brad Leith as well out on track. Yeah, absolutely is. I mean, Greenfield's been around a long time. He had a great crack last year as well. So, you know, it's gonna be one of those guys to keep an eye out and particularly in the future, he's got the right people around him. Got the right suspension, I bet. So, you know, there's there's plenty going on there. But again, what a cracking run that we've had out of these first couple of class twos. And even our class threes, again, I, you know, to push themselves up into the top 50 and whatnot, that is an amazing effort here. Again, another one, the 293, I think that was, as it flashed past us. Nathan Norris puts himself with a 540. Again, a sub six minute run there. Absolutely smoking around this track. as they continue to come across the line in rip-roaring fashion. Cody Stevens on the 290 Gas Gas 500 puts her, um, sorry, yeah, itself into 17th. So a great spot there with Dalton Bryan and Ben Stevens as well crossing the line on their KTM 500s, putting themselves within the top 200 bikes. So they'll be happy with that run as well. Yeah, absolutely made a great run there from Cody Stevens on the 290. Again, a 5.06, that's hard to fathom how fast that is. So a good run from those guys. And again, Darcy Anell and Jack Frazier, Paul Kleinberg, all off the line now. As they bang bars all the way through that first. Again, I don't, the wording, we've got to come up with a better name than the start straight because it's far from straight. But the moral of the story is, is they've taken off, they've made it safely through that section. It's a very fast section. Has bit people in the past. But I tell you what, this year, I've got to admit, I reckon there's been less accidents than I've seen for a little while. Everyone's riding extremely well. The stadium uh, area normally catches a few people out. I think riders are riding to conditions this year really well. Mm. They understand that the track has had um, quite a bit of uh, changes and, and things like that. So. A lot of these riders really have their, their brain switched on this weekend. They're really looking forward to um, trying to get there and back. That survivor spike for a lot of these people is what they've come in here for. Absolutely. 
the word for the weekend is respect. Yep. They're really respecting the course, and I can appreciate that. 5.25 out on track. Ah, oh, that won't be his real number. He's running a two. Obviously runs the fives at home. But the 2.91 across the line now. Richard Crowley. 2.92, Matthew Gray. Taylor Adams on the 2.85 with a 5.06, putting in themselves into 18th. So again, just yep. shuffling, up. Yep. shuffling up that top 20, which is crazy impressive. Yeah, the 292. I think that's the 286 of Samuel Nelson through there. The 288. So Matthew Shaw and Brett Bell through now. Jordan Stewart through as well. I think that's the 276 that was on screen for a second there. And the 282 by the looks of that, scooting, and I mean scooting, past our commentary tower. That was Seaton Battle. I should have picked that. Seaton's a top 20 guy, very fast. The 282 of Seaton Battle has just run through for 37th position, Josh. Yeah, Rihanna's down on the start finish line with another one of our female competitors. I can't wait to hear what she has to say about her class four run. Yeah, thanks very much, guys. And this is a very six degrees of separation because I went to school with the Scovels and this Catherine Scoville, it's your seventh thing. So awesome to see you back here again. How was your prologue? Um, just took it easy. We got out there. There's some big whoops out there. So just tried to make it home so then we can have a good run tomorrow. What keeps bringing you back to Fink year on year now that this is your seventh one running? Uh, I think it's just the atmosphere, the people, um, everyone you meet out pre-running, racing. It's just, um, it's a family event for me now and I have a lot of mates doing it. So it's just the environment, I think. People come from far and wide. You're based in WA, so you've come from a fairly far away place as well. What's your preparation been like and how much pre-running you've been able to do? Um, so my husband and I actually drove over, took three, three and a half days to get here and then I probably did about 900 days of riding in the last week, um, just getting ready for today. And what's the preparation tonight look like? Uh, we're going to go to Casa Nostra and have some pasta, which I do every, every year and um, just a couple of quiet drinks for my parents so they can get their nerves a bit settled and uh, yeah, chill. Awesome to see you here. Thanks for chatting with us. We wish you all the best and have a great run and enjoy it. Thank you. Have a great week. Thanks. Thanks, Rihanna. Another great story as we look up on the timing screens. Bradley Greenfield uh, comes through with a 5.23, 35th position, but Connor Adams on the 2.75 slots himself into the top 15 with a five minute and two second lap around this iconic track. And look at this old bike. Heck yeah, a XR classic. for life, air cool. I tell you what, Johnny Campbell would be proud of this sort of action out here. Got the old XR, and I tell you what, I'm just thinking it must be a 600. Because if it's in this class, in class two, early. That's a pretty cool thing, because it's not one of the new water-cooled 650s. 277 across the line now. And again, so many good stories coming through. We're just keeping an eye on that seat battle I was talking about. That's Kent Battle's brother. So Kent Battle racing in a pro buggy seat, racing in a uh, in a, on a motorbike, in a class two bike. Yeah, so great to see at least one of the battles lay down a heater of a lap in prologue today. Ouch. Good, good to see the little brother representing there as well. Seat sticking it to the big brother. Sing, sing. Matthew McFerrin, again on that XR600 has come through. I tell you what, Josh, a 619. He is not hanging around on the uh, the, the big farm bike. Who doesn't love a, a good old farm bike getting around the uh, prologue track here at the Tats Fink Desert Race? That's what we love about this event. It's not just brand new bikes. It's a little bit of everything. A lot of these older blokes as well are bringing these bikes out just to, to relive what they did a couple of years ago. 
Absolutely, mate. It's an absolute cracker. The only way that could be any better is if he had a blue Kelpie and a milk crate on the back. I don't know if the Fink uh, committee might let that one through, but moral of the story is that is a classic. Matty McFerrin having a good crack there on the XR600, and I'm looking forward to getting it, because this is the one thing I know. The XR600 will make it home. So I've got to ask, Matty McFerrin, that name rings a bit of a bell. Is he the freestyle motocross guy? Uh, has a sister as well that used to race motorbikes as well, I believe. I'm, I'm going out on a bit of a limb here, just plucking stuff from the top of my head. But Matty McFerrin, I believe... Actually, yes, I believe there's a mad photo floating around on the XR650 of him doing a, a double can, going full, uh, full old school represent. So great to see some great riders getting behind us and riding some good bikes. Yeah, absolutely, mate. I do believe that uh, you're on the right track. And I think we're going to find out because I noticed he's over there near our other comp days. Hopefully we get an interview there with Matty McFerrin. But anyway, we've also got Paul Kleinberg. I believe it's Blake Spreadborough is back as well. And that's a good run there at 540. 60th place there for old Spready. 605 for Andrew Arnold. Again, these class twos, still plenty, plenty of performance there. And again, interesting, just the shuffle ups in this class with the class two bikes. Again, very cool to see these guys making their way around. Again, our 500cc boppers. Still got a number of class two bikes to go on the starting grid. And then Josh, I think it'll be onto our class ones. So the exciting thing, we've got Betty Dre down on the line now. Four, six, zero. Skyers, yeah, I have Betty here. Great run out there. I mean, I'm just proud of you for giving it a go. 17 years old, first Fink. How'd your prologue go? Uh, I had a pretty rough prologue. It was a pretty bad start, but I didn't crash, so that's all that really matters. I'm starting tomorrow, so that's the main goal. And tell us about how you got here, because you've got your twin brother and also your dad racing here as well. Yeah, so me and my twin brother actually come up by ourselves. It was a 26-hour drive on our red P plates, so, you know, it took us a little bit, but we got here. Yeah, it's um, 3,000 kilometres, I think. Awesome. Yeah. Really cool journey. But tell us, how. why did you want to race Fink? Um, my dad's done it 10 years ago and I was here at about seven years old and ever since it's been a dream, like it's been on our bucket list, it's been our Wi-Fi password, it's everything. It's, we've been counting down the days for 10 years now. <laughs> I absolutely love that and I love, you know, we keep talking about the family atmosphere here at Fink, it's just incredible. But you've also been racing since you're four, yeah. is that right? So tell us about your racing history and, and what you've achieved. Yeah, I've done motocross my whole life, just um, started in Juro two years ago, so just doing all of the local rounds, the Australian off-roads, the New South Wales off-roads, so, you know, I pretty much race every weekend and just for the fun of it, not competitive or anything, just I love it, so I come back every weekend. And has your dad told you what to expect once you get into the race tomorrow? Yeah, look, he's tried to um, soften it up a little bit for me so I don't pull out, but um, yeah, I know I've done a bit of pre-running, so I think I'll be okay, I'll get there and back. <laughs> Well, I'm proud of you for getting out here, doing it, ticking off a bucket list item. I hope you go really well. Guys, just another incredible story here in the middle of Australia. It, yeah, it truly is a great story and it shows you the commitment it takes to get to the big desert place. 3,000 kilometres just making it happen. 6,000 kilometre round trip to come and race a dirt bike in the centre of Australia. And again, you know, the sort of kilometres that we're talking, I don't think, uh, you know, some of our international guys, they don't truly understand. That's a long way. We're talking, you know, two, two and a half thousand miles sort of thing to do a trip. And a lot of these guys just making the effort every year to come. And again, generational. Lots of us have three generations of family uh, racing in different categories and different things. And it's just such a good time out there at the Tats Fink Desert Race. I tell you what, it's still cranking at the Method Race Wheels Prologue. Still got a few bikes out on track. And again, the big dog, the Class 1 Two Bangers, is still yet to come. The 500cc Two Bangers, they were the days. Yeah, so Class 1 is anything about 200 cc in a two-stroke, so also lots of KTM 
300s will appear in this class as well, as well as, like you said, the, the big fours, the 500s. So looking forward to them as well. I reckon there'll be a few little sneaky peaks in there as well. Talking about guys like Corey Hammond who have stuck through in a 510 there on the 236 for 22nd. We talk about Ashley J Janssen on 539 there for 53rd as well. So like we said, this top 100, like if, if, if the top of the day, if you were in the top 50 and you thought you were going to end up there, the way it's been mixed up continuously all day is, uh, is something to behold. So yeah, these guys still laying down great laps times. It looks like the 226 is out on course at the moment as well. Yeah, absolutely, mate. And having a good crack around the top of those berms. Again, we keep talking about this racing line, but a real racing line up high in that berm to develop, but it does have some hooks, as we can see on the line feed, as another pack of motorbikes come over the line. Again, the thunder of those four strokes rolling out of the stadium area. Boys here on the live feed have come through the whoop section. They've done all the hard work, really. It's just the uh, champagne finish yet to do. And then, you know, just a sneaky 452 kilometers on one of the racing, roughest race tracks in the world. I like the way you say just. Yeah, a just sneaky, a cruise. Just a sneaky 452 kilometers. It's you a warm-in. So one of the things we probably haven't touched on today as well is there is actually a four-hour time limit for these guys as well. So to sort of put that into perspective, you've got to do 226 kilometers within four hours. So just sort of working off the bat, that's a, a 55 to 60 kilometer an hour average that you have to do. And, and when you say average 55 to 60 kilometers an hour, you know, it is a thing to do. But when it actually comes time to get out on that race track, you get down into Mont Duma, you get down into that rough section as well, you know, it's something that's going to be really hard to do. And something that's going to be hard to do is on that XR650 that Matty McFerrin is running. So we're going to cross down and uh, get a little bit of an insight as to where his headspace is at this point in time. Take it away, Kyle, team. Yeah, thanks very much, guys. I heard you uh, in the commentary call say, I'm pretty sure that's Matt McFerrin. It's Matt McFerrin. But you just said to me, Matt, you'd rather be in the air than on the, on the track this time around. What was the prologue like? I had no idea what I was doing. I don't even know what I'm doing here, to be honest. We, me and my mate Verky watched the docker on the Fink on the drive up here, and we're like, we probably shouldn't be here. I don't think we're ready. <laughs> we're not. <laughs> uh, talk to me about the drive here as well. You've come from the Gold Coast, but it wasn't smooth sailing for you either. Well, we thought we got all our problems out on the way. We car went into limp mode 700 k's from here, so we did 70 kilometres an hour <laughs> all the way to Alice. It was by getting passed by road trains, getting passed by caravans. It was mentally exhausting going that slow. So you've had a bit of a nightmare trip here. Prologue, you've sort of had your eyes are wide open. What's tomorrow and, and Monday going to look like for you? Oh, I'm pretty fingered, eh? I did 70Ks uh, pre-running and I was like, that's, I'm done. I don't need to see anymore. It's nothing that any seeing anymore is going to help me down the track. Now, your wife, April, she's uh, at home. She's been texting me. People would know her because she's often on the bike as well. Do you think that she should be here too? A hundred percent. I'll happily look after the kids. <laughs> we'll make that happen next year. Thanks, mate. Have a good run. See you later. How good is that? Such an enigma. The smile, though, I tell you what, even though he's, uh, you know, obviously having a crack there and having a laugh, but you can tell that he loves this. He loves riding dirt bikes, and he's a man that knows how to ride a dirt bike. Uh, that could be the uh, the quote of Fink, like, uh, but I'm thinking already. Like, you know, you probably ask around the pits, and there might be a few other people that are that are having that exact same sentiment. And I love the uh, the quote. I'd rather be in the air. There's no Bon Duma whoops in the air. So, uh, but well, like, actually, Josh, it's funny you say that. I really want to know what 80 k's that he's pre-run because <laughs> if he's done the first 80 k's, that's the easy 80 k's. I hope he's listed. Stop psyching him out, bro. No, it's good. He's not going to get psyched out. He's got an XR 650, the 600, and I tell you what, an air-cooled 600 knows its way home. I bet you she's been down the track before in a previous life, so it's good to go. Get that inner Johnny Campbell on, and he'll be right. So, yeah, it's going to be an exciting ride there, and it's very cool. 
And again, isn't it cool that Matty McFerrin and people like that just turn up and have a ride? You know, in previous years, we've had like Craig Lowndes out here and all sorts of people that just make the journey off their own back too. They're not, you know, no one's paying them to be here. They just go, hey, okay, I've got to go and have a look at this big desert race. I love the story that they watched the docker on the way up. Probably should have watched it a few weeks before. but Probably before you know, the entry went in. <laughs> you know, you've got to give it a go. And I tell you what, that's so exciting to see uh, that happen, and I'm sure it'll make for a great story around a fire sometime. Absolutely. Probably a great story. You know, a guy like Matty McFerrin here and his following is something that might bring a few more people in as well. You know, like we said, we we're pretty confident that's the Matty McFerrin that does freestyle motocross. So hopefully it opens Fink up to a whole other demographic of motorbike riders. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, now, mate, as we were chatting away there, We've actually had a few fast guys come through it. Brock Dean, 208, has come through and run 31st with a 519. And Bo Taylor has come through and do himself in 40th with a 524. I tell you what, Corey Hammond, I don't know if we mentioned him, he's put himself with a 510 in 22nd. And Ashley, oh yes, you mentioned this before, so we've got a few guys through. And actually, it's our banger time. The boys in class one, again, Josh said, anything over 251 cc two stroke so this will include our cr 500 it'll include anyone game enough to throw a leg over a kx 500 but it does include all our 300 kdms as well so a bit of a class to watch because it is a well back in the day it was the class wasn't it josh yeah. when the cr 500s in the 90s reign supreme have a look at this flap it off the back again I think that was the 205, yep. Yep, Tom Reddy. Tom Reddy. And a great run there, a 527, 43rd. Again, man, back in the day, if you could run a 527, you were basically winning this show. But nowadays, you know, and again, I'm not knocking it. That's amazing. It's a top 50 position. But uh, still got some work to do on the bike, and we'll definitely get some dust from anywhere outside that top 30. Well, uh, pretty much anything other yeah. than first. It's yeah. going to be dusty. Yep. Yeah, that's right. Other than those first two off the line, which are looking at this point in time, unless we have an absolute banger, probably going to be Jacob Smith and Jack Simpson. But crazy about the progression of this big race. Remember back in the early days, it used to go down to, well, not Bojangles. They, if Bojangles, if you're listening, get yourself open again. Just putting it out there, putting it out there. But not Bojangles. I actually used to do a uh, like a lottery for your start position. And it was actually a Le Mans start as well. You used to have to run across, kickstart your bike, and off you went. Like, what a crazy... Imagine it this you day imagine kickstarting your IT495 out there. I reckon there were probably a couple of DNFs because a few shins and ankles got Broken. snapped literally Broken. on the start line. Yeah, an IT490 is not something you, you want to be XL kickstarting. got Twin Shock 500. No decompressed. Just Oof. kicking it. Yep. Jeez. I hear you, brother. Yeah, no, they were the days. They, uh, Well, the, the flip side about that is they were probably having a couple of beers before they rode it back in those days. Some Be of that footage. Of a cigarette, you know. Some of that footage that they showed in some of the wrap-ups. And again, big shout-out to the guys that have done all the media here for Fink. They've really stepped it up year after year. We saw some of that live feed and some of those year wrap-ups. Again, they'll show it at the presentation dinner on Monday at Lasseter's. It's such a good show. And I tell you what, they've done a great job of capturing the essence of Fink here. Zeke Norford in the 202 is over the line as well. Blake Queen, Alex McCarthy safely home from Poland well, as well. Again, the Method Race Wheels 2022. Prologue. We've uh, seen a lot of bikes through now. We've had our cars through. It's been a big day. Still plenty more racing to go too. But again, we might run quickly through our top 10. At the moment, it is Jacob Smith sitting on top. Then Jack Simpson, David Walsh, Brody Waters, Richard Green. Not 100% sure about that one, but we'll, we'll make sure that we confirm that. Callum Norton, Nicholas Waters, Ben Grabham, Rick Ireland, Ivan Long is sitting in 10th outright at the moment. And stuff it will go through to the 20 because we've got Jackson McGrath Lachlan McClellan Corey McMahon Connor Adams Luke Hayes Daniel Banks Sam Handley got Cody Stevens and Taylor Adams and then Dean Ross rides out our top 20 at the moment in prologue boys 
I tell you what, when you start running through those names, there's some absolute killers there, isn't there? Yeah, it's a it's a jam-packed top 20, let alone top 30, let alone top 100. That's the thing. There's just so many, so many different names, so many different stories up, uh, up and down this field. So, again, as we've been saying all day, it's it's about trying to get into that sort of top 50, top 100 to to try and cement an an easier run down to think than it being any further back because that's when you really, really are going to be eating the dust of other competitors. You're going to have to re rely on treetops and you're going to have to rely on your senses. Um, you're going to have to rely on that the desert wants you to finish and get down to think. Yeah, absolutely, mate. It is definitely, you know, you're giving yourself you the best possible chance of a solid finish if you're up in that front pack. And, uh, you know, it gives you a good position to ride with too. I think it means that you can set a pace, stick with that pace, and you know where you're positionally at and you know what you're chasing. But then also, we again, we're a huge chat. We're talking about the top 100 in this situation, the guys really pushing along. There's also all the legends that have come here to tick the bucket list item to make sure they get those spikes. And for those guys, you know, it's going to be really... They, they don't even care about position. It's going to be them against the track. And that's a story in itself. There's so many people that come out here at multiple years. Well, here, Josh and I will tell a little story. We pushed our bike through. You know, young fellas, very, very confident. Well overconfident, as lots of first-timers are. Pushed our bike through, and the guy said, oh, first think, yep, yep. How about, you know, what's your plan? Oh, yeah, this is our plan. He goes, oh, good luck with that. I've been at five and I've never finished. And that gave us a real wake-up check, didn't it, Josh, with respect to how difficult and how... Because, you know, we just assumed we were going to come and ride it like every motocross event you ever do. You just ride it and, you know, it won't be a drama. Oh, yeah, it was a drama. We had plenty of stories ourselves. Yeah, needless to say, my uh, chest sunk back in a little bit at that point in time as well. But, yeah, that's we are talking about it with... Uh, Midwaters as well today, you know, they're 0-4 from the car as well, so looking to get their, their first think finish as well, and that's that's really what it is, it's such an achievement in itself to, to get across the finish line of this event, it's it's grueling until you get out here and, and do it yourself, you know, you, you don't understand, I think, just to go back to it, you know, Matty McFerrin talking about, that's someone that is very talented on a motorcycle, and has come here and got, he's just got more, got more talent on a motorcycle than most people yep. do in there. But, you know, he's got it just in spades. And then for him to say how tough it is. Yes. Yeah, very interesting point you make, Josh. And there's a lot of talent guys out here, a lot of really great trail riders that are going to really have to almost put that ego aside. Do you think Josh is a good way of looking at it? And they're just going to have to knuckle down and put in work. They are. It, it is a, it is a, it's a mental game out here in the desert as well. You've got to be able to play the right strategy. It's, I, I really think it is all about strategy tomorrow when it, when it comes down to the, the top 10, uh, whether it's fuel stops, how quick they're going to go in there, when they're going to fuel up the bike, what fuel stops they're going to use. It's, 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 we don't know that yet. So it's oh, those absolutely. details as well that will play into that storyline tomorrow. Yeah, absolutely, mate. It wouldn't be the first time that we've got some crazy stories where guys have run out of fuel and then they're looking for parts and fuel at, a, at some randoms camp to try to make sure that they can keep racing. Yeah, absolutely. That's all the stories of the Fink Desert race that keep people coming back. So the 191 through now. And the 154 as well. We were talking about some of those old school big bore CR500 that made its way through. So cool to see... Um, to see that, that's Dylan River on the CR500 as well. And the 185 just coming through as well. That's Tom Curriton. Curriton. Another CR500. It's almost like on uh, on demand they just come through. And I'm going to say the 163, that this is probably a KX500. So great to see a couple of the old school 500cc big bores out here. Mixing it up with the, the 300 two-strokes with that more modern fuel injection and uh, a few things like that you know that we see that the uh, a lot of the 300s have TPI beside it meaning they are an injected two stroke what I really want to know Josh is I have ridden one of these CR 500s I want to know how they feel their hands by I'd say the 10 kilometer I was going to say the 8.8 .8 kilometer prologue yeah, track those things they shake you to bits they are so yeah well we're making jokes about the uh, the Commodore V6 being a nang nang 
And if you've ever, you know, if you get the opportunity, make sure you get down to the pits and have a listen to some of those old school CR500 KX Idol. It's a, uh, it's a very unique sound that once you hear it, you'll uh, you'll never forget, and you'll always be able to pick that up. But we talk about uh, Dylan River on that CR500 coming through in a 529 for 51st overall on an old school bike. As we see this KX. 500 and the KDM 300 in a bit of a drag race down there. Is that, is that Larry Rossler down there? I tell you what, bro, it looked exactly like it. But it is Gareth Hamill. Hamill, what a great name. Danny Hamill. So there you go, the 163 doing it proud for the KX 500 boys. Again, if you ever get any man on the beers and talking about KX 500, you know, those 60 year old blokes all talking about the glory years, the KX. 500 was an absolute beast of a thing. But again, Harrison Vanvelt, Justin Wright, William Winshaw, Timothy Kempster, all through now. So we have all of our bikes off the start line. So just want to give a mad shout out and props to all the spectators that have stayed here and watched all the way to the end. That is true commitment as we see the 124 across the finish line as well. Proper That's think fiends, you're saying. Absolute you're think a fiend. fiend. I like it. Yeah, the 124 as well. Jake across the line. 552, uh, 555. Great run there. Just outside the top 100. 105th for there. Good if joke. you're looking for a gateway event to get into off-road, this is your event. Yeah, this is a gateway drug. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You'll spend a lot of money. A lot of you money. don't want to do drugs. You'll come to Fink instead. That's are, for you, sure. I was going to say, you won't exactly. be able to afford to do drugs. So parents, if you're out there listening, get your kids into the Fink Desert Race. doesn't matter if it's on a bike or a car. It is an addictive drug that once you're in there, they will have no more spare cash. They won't be out drinking. They won't be out partying. They'll be at work 24-7 or pre-running or riding their bike. So parents, get your kids into the Fink Desert Race. It's... It's a decision for the future of your kids, and you're doing the right thing. As we see the 121 machine rip across the finish line. So these boys, I tell you, a lot of nervous energy. These guys are the last to prologue today. And that's Jackson Murphy, a 108 uh, finish position there with a 5 minute 56 lap. So I tell you what, these boys here have waited a long time. So Absolutely, and Lachlan Massey through as well on the 131. But Josh, that's an excellent point that you did bring up there. You're absolutely right. Made a bit of a joke about it, but think is one of those things. I think a lot of guys, they get their first, first taste of trophy truck. They get their first taste of pro buggies. They get their first taste of desert racing. And then all of a sudden they're like, hey, I'm going to go and do Hatter. I'm going to go and do Gas Dash. I'm going to go and do some of these desert races around Australia. And they really get the bug. So yeah, the Fink Desert Race, I feel, has put a lot of eyes on the sport as a whole on this desert racing community. And uh, I think it gets people involved again. Well, I know, like Billy Geddes came out in 2010, came out for a ride. Again, I hope I'm not saying the wrong thing. Didn't really know a lot about the thing. Came out once and was hooked. Now look at where Bill's racing. Again, all these families racing out here. It's such a great sport, such a great activity. And the think you're absolutely right. It's the gateway into a bigger version of the desert racing community. Yeah, it really is, and, and the experience you've got to have to uh, to ride well at one of these events is is hard. It's 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 a high caliber. You've got a lot of people, but it's also a great feeder event for people on smaller bikes to come through and, and get that experience running some of some of those. As we say, we call it a sprint race because it is sort of there and back. But again, you, first you have to finish. So yeah, absolutely, mate. It's a it's a huge key that people need to make sure that they understand that the track is wild. It is very gnarly out there, but as you can see, these guys, and it's amazing too, because I think it tests your metal. You know, there's often times probably where guys think that they're gonna quit, and then when they cross that finish line again, it's that, that feeling, that, that immense, you know, even pride. I don't know if that's exactly the right word that I'm trying to get across, but you know, like it's that feeling that you've made it across and that you've done something that you didn't think you could do. You did something that, you know, you was an achievement for you. And I think, it, yeah, it's a really big thing for all these guys. And again, do not underestimate it. Even some of these pro guys, and I'm sure, you know, Davey Walsh feels it every year when he comes across the line. You know, Jack Simpson, all those guys. Jacob Smith's probably got a ton of finishes at Fink and a ton of, you know, very high podium positions and whatnot. 
And I bet you any time that he sees that finish line straight and he's on the bop up, that feeling of immense, uh, yeah, motion just floods over you at the Tats Fink Desert Race. Again, that start-finish line, it is a nice position to be in. Again, great footage of the 110 floating around now. That's Brad Ashman. He's having a nice ride around there on his Husqvarna. Got the TE 300, Josh. This is what you were talking about. The 300 two-strokes because they are over 250. They actually go up into this big ball class. The 110 looks like it is going to be our final bike for the afternoon here at Prologue. So make sure to give him a big round of applause as he comes down the start line. He's waited a long, long time today since 12 o'clock to get on out on the track with Johnny Az. Let's see how he goes. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, what an awesome event. The Method Race Wheels Prologue for the day. That is our final bike over the line. We'd like to, one, thank you very much for sticking around to see the full competition here today. Two, we'd like to thank Method. They've done an awesome job. Again, we've said it a couple of times, but putting their money where their mouth is in desert racing. They have actually decided to come on board and you know put out the big checks and have a good time. And I uh, tell you what, it just ups the feeling, doesn't it? Ups the ante. I mean, those guys are gonna wanna win whether there's a check or not. But Method coming on board has made it exciting. And again, we'd like to thank all of you for sticking out the cold breeze. But let's go and get organized because tomorrow is race day. It's going to kick off fast and hard with the cars. And we are going to be underway here tomorrow morning early. Now, listen, who are you most excited to see, boys? Oh, look, they're breathing in. There's a lot of thoughts oh, here. That, look, there is a lot, mate. I'm very excited to see... Are we talking cars or bikes or both? both? Very excited to see uh, how the slightly bigger trucks of Bo Robinson and uh, also the new G6 get it done. Like we said, they are uh, a, a slightly bigger truck than the, what we've seen with the 6100s that, that Billy Geddes races, stuff like that. So excited to see how they handle the whoops. Uh, Glenn Owen is in a good position. But I tell you what, after looking out through the finishing, line, uh, the finishing position for Prologue, AJ out of third. Definitely put himself in a good position there. That car loves the rough. That driver loves the rough. The rougher the race gets, the happier it is. So AJ definitely put himself in a really good position. Once again, doesn't have a dog in the fight with the championship. Like, he can come here, he can crank the boost up on that bad boy and send it down the track. And then probably the bikes, mate, it's throw a blanket over him. Like, we're talking about Jacob Smith, Jack Simpson, David Walsh. Like, we're looking for some... We're looking for some you know, interesting races that we're going to have there. I, th I think that's three guys that you could easily, easily say who's, you know, who's going to win it. And I don't think that it's a, a hard and fast decision, but probably I'm excited, looking forward to see how AJ runs out of third position there. I don't think that third is too bad of a position to get him. Hey, we've had guys win it out of 14th. We've had it guys win it out of 13th with, um, with Hayden Bentley. So excited for that. Um, Going to see where the, the battle plays out for the championship. We've got Jack Swindlehurst in 10th position, Ryan Taylor in 12th. So they still get a, a relatively good dust-free gap to start with, but they've got the championship in the back of their mind. How's it all going to play out? I mean, flip a coin, Dan. Flip a coin, Josh. Oh. Oh. I, I think that's what you, you're going to have to do, Like, especially as we look in at the at the bikes. It is, it's, it's so hard. Like I said Jack Simpson last night, and Jacob Smith, like, has just come out of nowhere and, and blown us away. Um, I don't, I'm not trying to be rude to, to Jacob here at all. Um, I don't think many people expected him to be right, right up in the pointy end. And he's knocked off two of the best desert races in the country. Yep. So he's looking really good. So is Jack. So is David. Um, so it's a hard one. The bikes, I, I can't, I can't pick the, the cars. I still think Josh is going to get it done. It's, yep. it's yep. a big call. But that pro buggy with the technology they have this year, I think it's going to play to their advantage. And I really do think as much as that, that Toby Price uh, trophy truck, sorry, and that Tisco machine is built for this, I still think yep. there, there, there could be issues. And again, it's, it's the desert. This track decides what it wants to do. So the drivers don't. 
the track does. So we'll leave it up to the track and we'll see tomorrow. We start here at 7.30, the first car awesome. kicks off. Well, I guess the real exciting bit will be maybe in the bikes, it's more locals or hide guns. I wonder if that's the real story of the 2022 Tats Fink Desert Race. But again, what a great day here at the Method Race Wheels Prologue. We've had an absolute hoot bringing you all the racing here today. And I tell you what, I hope you join us there nice and early tomorrow for another great day of racing. We're here to race. We're here to win. We're not here to watch you. We're traveling at speeds up to 180 kilometers per hour. That's 50 meters per second. If we hit you, we're both gone. The facts are simple. Another serious spectator injury could end the race for good. Don't stand on the outside of corners. Read and observe all safety signs. And stay at least 20 meters back from the track side at all times. Don't be the reason. Don't be the reason.
times have been tough. Here at Imparja, we want to help our customers get back to business and reconnect with their own customers. Television viewing levels are at an all-time high, so now is the time to reach out through TV. And to make it easy, we offer complete commercial production and airtime solutions tailored to your specific needs. Our advertisers have been advertising with us for years, and that says something. Whether you've used Imparja previously or are new to our station, give us a call. We'd love to help. Think your mates a good value? You should check out Venue Mode. When the green light is activated, you're on Tab Turf. So you'll get access to exclusive markets and offers just for heading to your local. Venue Mode, only on your Tab app. Tab, long may we play. I've always kind of been drawn to bugs. I've always wanted a bug. And the first bug I ever got was actually a shell. That sparked the OG bug. And since then, uh, I guess I've never really strayed away from the, the bug platform, the look, the, uh, the vibe, the feel. It's just something I guess from being from San Diego has always kind of uh, hooked me since day one. And uh, I don't think there's no turning back. <laughs> What a fantastic day of racing here at the Tatsvink Desert 2022 for the Method Race Wheels Prologue. And we have our overall winner in the bikes, Jacob Smith. Congratulations, there's $1,000 from Method Race Wheels. And you've got a beautiful little wheel behind us as well. Uh, talk us through your prologue. I mean, we spoke to you a little bit earlier, but just remind us of how it was out there. Yeah, it was a really clean lap from me. Um, you know, I probably left a few seconds out there, to be honest. So, um, but no, super stoked to, to put it on pole and, um, you know, to put 3.8 seconds or whatever it was on second was pretty nice. So, um, you know, it's just part A, I guess, of what we've got to do this weekend and um, now focus on the race. That's pretty onomous to your competitors to say you've got more up your sleeve and you already had 3.8 seconds on them. Uh, tomorrow, talk to us about the first day here at Fink and what are you expecting? Um, to be honest, I want to get out 
in the lead. We start two at a time, so um, it's going to be a tight battle to get out of the stadium section in front. And then I can just ride my own race. Um, you know, I don't have to worry about dust or anything if I can get that done and just worry about my own ride and, um, you know, hit all the markers that I know I need to hit from pre-running and just, just do my own thing, really. I know that we've got a good package and take some confidence from today and, um, yeah, we'll just see how we go. You've had a rough couple of years here at Fink and you haven't been able to get on that top step yet. Do you think about anything at all or are we just focused on kilometre by kilometre at the moment? It's far too early to, to think about standing on that top step but, you know, this is a piece of the puzzle we needed to start and, um, you know, we, we put ourselves in the best chance to, to get the win. So no thinking about that yet until we come across that line on, on Monday but, um, you know, we're, we're in a good place and we'll try and build off of that. Congratulations. We look forward to seeing how it all unfolds across the weekend. Good luck out there. Stay safe. Thanks very much. Thanks to Method Race Wheels for sponsoring this. So um, appreciate it all.